Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi, and welcome. Hello, everyone. Enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable Sunway Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in this spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Isipenko, Adiban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses, World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Siege's website, visit chessable.com slash Sunway. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to day four already. The prestigious Mr. Dodge Invitational 3.0. Yeah, how are you today? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm looking forward to the action. Otherwise, I won't bore you with details of my of my day in rainy Hamburg. I'm not really on a Caribbean beach. I'm sitting in German winter. Nah, tell us about your day. Never mind the chess. Let's get to the good All stuff. All right. Um, did I do stuff? I woke up. My son had to go to the doctor. He has some some eye nose thing. We we got him some medicine. I was still very sleepy this early in the morning. Then the son hung out with grandma and grandpa. I went to the gym because I want to be ripped for this stream. I'm taking this very seriously. Mm -hmm. and then I had some food. Then I did some some influencing. I'm I'm becoming a gaming influencer. I'll play some some game tonight okay. and get get crushed. What game are you playing? Um, it's a Fortnite. No, it's called Tactics Ogre. Are you an no. expert? No. Uh, I'll I'll need some some information. Not I, had to do, I had to do an Instagram story, and I don't know how to do Instagram stories because I'm not a social media pro like you. So that that's pretty much uh, my day. Oh, I worked a bit on this Chessable 100 Endgames course, so yeah. Nice. That's a busy doing, day. Doing exciting stuff. It's just getting started. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now we're doing this. Then I'll do my Bundesliga recap on, on Twitch. Then I'll do the Tactics Ogre. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long day. Wow. So but, we have two, two matches to start with. We have the important match, Shevchenko against Supi, and Savian against some guy. I don't know who Savian's playing. Your boy? Oh, no. Kona Vets, that's what he's called. That's don't hide a... behind Kona Vets, Sam Savian. We want the real name. But he's playing against Vincent Keimer. The Big German hope, just turned 18 years old, broke 2700, shortly before his 18th birthday, I'm sure. The haters like you will point out, but he's only 2695 now. He'll be back, he'll be back. And here, he's playing beautiful chess in this first game against Sam Savian, the also very strong, also very young US American. Also used to be 2700. Is that... A requirement for the Mr. Dodge Invitational? No, I don't think Supi or Shevchenko were 27. Quite a few people have been. I haven't. And it's it's making me feel bad on my, my own podcast because both Peter Heine, believe it or not, and Laurent used to be 2700. There's still time. Nah. You can still get there. There's no time. So Keimer... Playing very clinical chess here so far has equalized. And it looks like Sam Savian. There we see him on the screen with the glasses. Um has to be slightly careful to keep the balance here because his queen side is a little shaky. Like if Keimer goes queen e7, you would like to go rook d1, but he can't do it because this pawn would be hanging. And if not, black might capture the d file. Maybe Vincent has a little something to work with here. Yeah, maybe. Doesn't look like White's got anything, I guess. No, White is slightly worse. Are these the types of positions that get you excited? Like symmetrical, tiny, tiny edge, and queen is seven plate. He's so precise. He wants to take and go rook d8. Yeah, it's not the most exciting position in the world, but there's time. Dis disagree. Savian under pressure. We should mention these ratings we see on the screen. I guess they're the chesscom ratings. So I'm not sure if they represent the strength of this. I think this it matchup. might be it might be cameras actual blitz rating. That could be. But yeah, I sounds, don't I don't sounds think it's unfair to have two nine five fifty five against twenty six hundred. It's a bit of a mismatch. Your camera is twenty six hundred blitz. That doesn't seem right. No, I probably didn't play a lot of blitz tournaments, so you get stuck with whatever rating you. He might have been even filters. lower than that. Maybe he got adjusted as well. 
mm-hmm. when they adjusted the ratings last month. How do you get adjusted? Did I get adjusted down? He got adjusted by 14 points. So mm-hmm. it's not that okay. much. That's not going to help me no. either way. C6 is still trying to capture the open file here. And he, he might very well succeed. Mm-hmm. We have another match, which, of course, we won't ignore. Shevchenko against Supi. But we got to get started with our boy Vinny. I saw him this weekend. How did he do in Bundesliga? He made two draws. was fine, but nothing special for, for his standards. We were in a hotel with no internet from where he had to play the prestigious Mr. Dodgy Invitational on Friday. Like literally, how, did he, how did he play with no internet? How did you find the hotel with no internet? That in, was impressive. In this that day and age. Impressive. I agree. That can't have been easy. He took a pawn. No, he he had to get a Wi-Fi stick just to participate in this tournament. Wow, that is dedication. Absolutely. Almost as dedicated as Magnus. Sabotaging David Howell's Wi-Fi stick. Yeah. Which is unconfirmed. Sounds likely. Also this whole story that... He's trying to make it sound like he didn't want to play that much, saying, yeah, Peter Heine asked him, but he said no. But then when he was asked again, he had no choice. It doesn't add up. He was desperate. He just didn't want to seem too needy. I think hmm, I think part of that story was true. I doubt it. I don't, I don't want to say which part, but I believe part of it was true. Right. Yeah, I must still pawn up. <laughs> Not easy to convert, because Savian, he refused to give up the D file. Decide to give up a pawn instead. But of course, black is the side pushing here. Rook a8, hinting at rook a2. Mm-hmm. Who are you rooting for? Are you allowed to root for anybody or are you strictly neutral? I haven't been neutral in any of these tournaments and I don't intend to start now. Fair enough. So I felt like you might be you might be slightly biased towards Vincent. So I'm going to support Sam. I'm always the team Sam guy. So I should continue with that. But isn't that too easy? Especially if it's Sam Shanklin. It seems like everybody's always team Sam. It's a bit unfair. Yeah, it's just very easy to root for. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, Savion is the second best Sam at the moment. But maybe one day he could be the best Sam. I feel like a lot of these matches, you know... We could have had Sam. We could have had either Sam. We could have had either Maxime. You know, I feel like this tag team chess thing has got a future. Are there other good Sams out there? Reshevsky, but he's probably not not active. He's not super active nowadays, no. Mm-hmm. Right, in chess or physically? No, in, in chess. Who's the second best Vincent in the world? I don't know. Are there other Vincents out there? It's got to be one. Vincent Vega? No, he doesn't play chess. Rook c8 looks like a draw. But queen f5, he doesn't go rook c8. The queen looks misplaced, and Keimer instantly capitalized. Queen d4 is a nice move, covers the e5 pawn, and also supports the march of the b pawn. Mm-hmm. This looks tough now. Rook c7 doesn't really threaten anything. So he pushes. Rook b7, I guess. We did have a result in the other match. Shevchenko won the first game against Supi. Congrats to Kirill Shevchenko. What's going on here? Computer now all of a sudden says Black is completely winning. I don't pawn. trust him. The pawn runs, maybe? Or was it pawn before? Why is it pl- plus 100 now? Uh, rook b8 and takes. You can't stop it. And there's no checks. That helps. Rook a7, b3 is not great news. Once the pawn gets here, should be all over. Can you go queen d3 and then he wants queen takes e5? So probably you need to take a moment. This looks completely lost. 
plans to bring. And the king around, but at what price? Yeah, this is over. Black will collect the queen, the king side. While oh, he's even trying to triangulate very subtle. He's waiting for the king to go there so he can play king e six. But we oh. need to keep the clock mm -hmm. in in mind. Three seconds versus ten. But Keimer, all these kids, they're also good at bullet. They play so much online, like they're not scared by having ten seconds left on the clock. Yeah. Doesn't make too much difference. So, 1 0 to Kaimo. Good game by, by Vincent. Now he has the white pieces. King's Indian. This is one of these lines where white is better, but it's very, very hard not to mess up. Like if you check it with the computer, it's always 0, 070 or whatever. But over the board, usually at some point, something something tricky will happen. Like they will play queen c8, h5, and black has some tricks, but objectively, it's a very nice line for white. Mm -hmm. How F3. do you feel about the King's Indian? It's a love-hate relationship. I would never play it. I used to play it when I was 12, but there's lack of space. Really bothered me. I'm not good in positions where I'm positionally worse and I need to make make things happen. But I also got checkmated a bunch of times mm -hmm. as white. So can't say I'm thrilled when they do it against me. But I have a feeling one day when either aliens or computers have solved chess, King's Indian might be one of the few openings that might be losing. Is that too strong? It's probably still true. Are you giving up all the space? Yeah, the computer is not a fan. No. In this TCEC, these computer games championships, now they start games with like King's Indian or Benoni positions because all the other openings are too good. So you will just get draws if you start putting, start the games there. So you have to use those. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite exciting games usually. Do you do you follow these engine games? Not like methodically. But I see, I see tweets, and then I click on stuff. <laughs> you follow Matthew Sadler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety-five. Keimer is in control once again. Grab some more space, and Black didn't really manage to arrange any counterplay or trickery. Now the C seven pawn is weak. Can be targeted with the rook and the queen. H four G four. Receiving so, receiving information from the chat that said Vincent's rating is twenty nine forty six. So it's very evenly matched. Oh. One point between them. And if he wins this game, he will be higher rated. Mm -hmm. That's that's a lot of pressure. It could be too much pressure. He might collapse. I'll see. H four would be a nice move to go. Bishop H three. It's going to do it. See? German school of chess. Build the bathtub. Make space for your bishops. Don't risk anything. Is Vincent still in the German school of chess? Because he's kind of... He's very high rated now. He's escaped a little bit from the usual German school of chess. He might no longer yeah, be able to claim the German school of chess. He's also, he's not chicken enough. Like the German school of chess is usually be extremely well prepared to be chicken and be like 2640. And he's not 2640 or chicken enough to, to fit anymore. I don't know. How good do you think he can be? Do you think he can be world champion? I think it's a somewhat silly debate. All these kids are very good, but only, only one can be world champion at a time. So it's always this question, does Pratt yeah, it changes does, does Kukesh, years. does uh, Abdusatorov, whoever, that, do they have the potential to be world champion? 
there are there are, I don't know 17 18 year old 2700 players odds are they'll improve and we'll see some of them in the top 10 but this world champion potential I don't know I don't know what it means like uh-huh. Magnus pretty good uh-huh. mm-hmm. that's true 95 King G2 also I'm not sure if it helps anybody if you say yeah he has the potential to be a world chess champion uh-huh. We're not trying to help people either. I'm trying. Mm. <laughs> Queen F6. Just King G2. But he's very strong, this guy Keimer. I was impressed um, because I was the German coach at the at the Olympiad, as you know. And I got a got a front row seat, so I would sit next to his board because the captain's chair was usually next to board one. For hours on end, watch his games. He's very good. Like, you will see so much more stuff. He didn't need your help during the games, then? No, I think even if I was allowed to tell him, like, two, three moves per game, it wouldn't wouldn't help, have helped one bit. Might have hurt, but he probably would have ignored me. As for the position, Savian's fighting. I'm not sure how much White still has, because after HG, or I don't know if you take first, but this E4 pawn now is a little vulnerable, so it won't be so easy to use all the pieces to target C7. The thing is, if he draws, he probably gets to keep his one point rating advantage. For now. Maybe. Maybe not. It's an interesting question. It'd be very exciting. In the meantime, Shevchenko's won a second game. Come on, Shevchenko. You can't win all the games. Magnus did. That's true. Maybe you can win all the games. So Brown for White is he doesn't have this F3 square for his king. So there's no not too comfortable a way to cover E4 while also attacking C7. Not sure how to make progress. Like we'll just sit. He goes B6. Uh-huh. C5. Obviously, you couldn't capture because the rook was hanging. Mm-hmm. C5 might be a good solution. There is this move, which is legal, en passant. That seems like black's all right. After BC, this pawn alone is not going to do anything. Kama does take. BC played. Now he should be a little careful, I would say. This could swing in black's favor. So this guy becomes weak. This passer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not easy. Time's getting low. Time's running out. Rook B1, he's giving the E4 pawn. But then he wants to go B7, Rook moves and take here. So Savian goes C5, Rook C4, hits A4, then covers E4. He's keeping the e4 pawn. It's good thinking. I guess you go here. And give it away again. No, it's a covered. After he takes on a3. Nah, he's never gonna take. It's just no. It's just tease. Thinking about something. That's probably a good chess strategy. To bring the king. Do you know anything about Sivian other than your full support and that he's called Sam? Um, I know he once broke a king during a game of chess. That's probably what he's most known for at this point. Mm-hmm. Which I also think is unfair. You work your whole life, you become a super strong 2700 Grandmaster. And all people know you for is breaking Hans Niemann's king. While Hans Niemann was thinking. That was weird. I just think it was funny because it was it was Hans as well. Like, you know, Hans has been involved in some mild controversies, just very small ones recently. And I don't think this one was his fault. But he still somehow 
got into it. Trouble has a way of finding him. Or maybe he has a way of finding trouble. I'm not sure which one it is. I don't think we can blame him for this one. Or maybe any of them. Mm. Maybe he's just an innocent victim of everything. I like it. Don't sue us, Hans. This looks strong. Mm -hmm. And they drew. So let's have a look at the other match. Keimer up one and a half, half. We should mention the format. They play blitz games. Whoever reaches six and a half points first wins the match. In case of a 6-6 six, six tie, there's an Armageddon game. The time control is five minutes, zero seconds. So you need you need some speed, especially at the end of games. There we see Kirill Shevchenko against Luis Paulo Supi. I, re I realized yesterday that this is probably the only Grandmaster tournament that's played with 5 plus 0 nowadays. Could very well be. This is be all of them. It's the strongest 5 plus 0 tournament in the world. <laughs> it's probably the strongest non-increment tournament. Although maybe like... I'm not sure that's Norway. True. They have a bunch of... Norway? If we count online events, there must be a bunch of strong 5-0 tournaments, no? Like, like what? Name one. I don't know. Like... Weekly 5-0 Blitz Arena. <clears throat> no. I'm not sure that's the name of a tournament. But no, it's true. I like it that you're fighting against uh, Increment. Uh, the Chess.com Rapid Championship was no Increment, but I think for the that was only for the Swiss part of it. I think after that they added an Increment for the knockout, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. She do. Because that's the one cram that got flagged in. Mm. Soupy's coming how, back. How did he feel about it? I think he took it well. All right. I think he was okay. I think he only dis dislikes it if he gets flagged by someone half his age or less. Otherwise, it's okay to flag him. If I understood his... Or was it his blog post correctly? Is open letter. Was an open letter? Yeah, I don't know. Do you remember there used to be more open letters? I do remember that. Like, you know, mid 2000s, every other week someone would send an open letter, usually to Chessbase, I think. But we didn't have Twitter, so you would send your letters to Chessbase, they would publish it, and you take it from there. We don't see it so much anymore. No, because people have social media. Well, there was an open letter yesterday. Okay. From the Bundesliga. Did you see this? No. There's some kind of cheating checks done on Narayanan, I think. SL? Or yes. Srinat? SL. Mm -hmm. He wasn't happy. They told us before the weekend started that they might do cheating checks on us. Even during games. I think they checked him before the game. I don't want to read the whole thing because it's very long. But I think mm -hmm. they checked him before the game and they scanned his fruit and it beeped. Okay. And after some further checks, they just came to the conclusion that there was something metal in the floor, which maybe this could have worked out without, you know. But did they suspect him of burying that metal thing in the floor? Possibly. But I would just make him play in a different part of the room. I'd be surprised if they did it directly over the board, did the cheating checks. I think they would do it somewhere else. I don't know. We were told that it could happen during games or we'd be informed and there would be checks afterwards. I wasn't checked. Although, I don't like to brag, but I think I played perfectly on, over the weekend. I think I made all first computer moves in both games. But probably because of my incredible natural strength, they they didn't didn't think they were suspect. <laughs> As for this game, such positions are not so easy to hold. You would think opposite color bishops, and um, it shouldn't peacefully. But if 
e three I don't like e three should give give away some of the advantage here. <clears throat> we're gonna say black has time to build up more and then go queen f three check then it should be should be close to winning but after e three this pawn will always be blocked I don't think you can win this nah yeah. no probably. even king f one if king f three you attack the f five pawn he doesn't even want the f five pawn wow very classical he's saying I don't need that pawn you can be two pawns I can be two pawns down still at that draw which it is. If the king comes here, the bishop covers it. If the king comes here, the bishop covers the g three, the f three square. That's all it has to do. Mm -hmm. But he's moved the pawns too quickly. If he's going to try and flag, it won't be easy to flag. But it's not so easy for white to pre move. Maybe that's this much. Now he can pre move bishop f seven, bishop g eight. Um, yeah, and he does. Nah, you so can't. You know, that's solid pre moving right there. F3, you have to take. Now you pre move. Probably you pre move bishop c4. You could have gambled with e2. That bishop c4 gets pre moved. But now it's. No, F F3 was too soon. You need to do F3 in like three seconds. Yeah, and if, you, if you're going to do it, I think you really need to follow it up with e2. Because the, the natural pre move is bishop c4. Mm -hmm. Anyway, these are the fun debates you get. With five zero tournaments. <laughs> Let's have a look at Keimer. Did we miss a game? No. Shevchenko up two and a half. Keimer is debating the Karakan. Oh, I know this line. Blue Bomb had this at the Olympiad against Ragger. Um, very sharp, but equal. So Sylvia is just giving him three pawns. I think rook d1 is supposed to be the move here. So rook b1, queen d4. It's three pawns. It's a lot of pawns. Queen c7 is very brazen. It's saying, I don't need to develop pieces. I'll just cover my b7 pawn as well. And all of a sudden, it's too much. The white initiative. Got too strong. Queen c7 was really pushing his luck. Like knight c6 looks like pretty good endgame. Two pawns up. Well, let's see what's happening now. Castle bishop e7. Check. Now the king is slightly unhappy. The position is very open. Mm -hmm. It's only two pawns down. Yeah, this doesn't look great. Covering the e8 square, knight c4, d4. Whoa, tactics! What's going on? Oops. Queen takes? What's the trick? I want knight d6 and then queen e7 and checkmate here. But there's knight f6, solution two. Oh. Let's see, Savian. <clears throat> I think he blundered. Where's the Sam Cam? We need the Sam Cam. Queen e7, King g8, Queen g5. I heard this some time ago that other US kids at the time were calling Sivian 7. I guess because it sounds a little similar to Sivian. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a good nickname? Someone's called Sivian to call him seven. Mm, nah, you need there. a better reason. Unless there's a reason for it. If he's like, I don't know, seven-time Russian champion, then I mean that would be impressive for an American. But yeah. then it would make sense. If if he had committed all the seven deadly sins, but it's, it's unlikely both. How many deadly sins have you committed? Probably most envy oh. for sure. <laughs> Gluttony. The thing is, I don't know if I can name them all. Pride is isn't that a sin? Mm -hmm. What else is there? Let me Google it. Gamer. Lust, yeah. gluttony, greed, sloth, 
wrath, envy, pride. All of them. Well done. Hasn't everybody though? Like honestly? Probably. Hmm. Should gluttony and greed be separate? Hmm. Isn't gluttony just eating a lot? Yes. My my whole knowledge is from the movie Seven. <laughs> You've been kind of greedy. Maybe. Keimer is very greedy. He's up a rook and a piece here. And this is a tough one for Savian after... I don't know if this was preparation or if he makes up a move or whatever. He got a winning position. Mm -hmm. And then rook takes b7. I'm not sure what he missed. Either was this, that here there's queen takes d5, which is a problem. Covering or that after the direct knight d6. Probably this one. This is a tricky move. Knight f6 saves the day for black. Because knight d6 is a big threat. It's threatening queen e7 and queen e8. So I guess that's what he had in mind. Like... Yeah, this was a tough one to lose, I guess. Yeah. Maybe there was something without rook e1. Maybe knight takes d5, queen e4, and then I don't know. Here, <clears throat> maybe knight takes d5 now, and then yeah, it looks... doesn't really make any difference. I was trying to find a way to force the same trick with queen e4 and rook takes b7, but we don't need it. The black position it should be fairly terrible, yeah. yeah but I, I thought maybe that's why he's misremembered. Like, he, there might be the same trick in a different position, that's why he's just played it because he played it quite quickly. I think could be, yeah. who knows? We'll never know. He probably knows. Because we want to ask. Fair enough. What's going on? Next game? Sophie's winning. Kaima's back to his usual shenanigans playing now at 3. E3. B3. He likes these slowish setups, then just play the resulting structures. That's the thing with these kids. They're, they aren't just tech wizards. They're just good at all aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. It's not fair, it's is cold. it? It feels very unfair. I'm not sure tech wizards works as short for tactics wizards. It's They're just all around wizards. Yeah. They both look a bit like Harry Potter, now that you mentioned. They might literally be wizards. They do. Also, both of these guys and Shevchenko look kind of similar. Huh. If they were in a police lineup, there could be problems. We should we should find out. Have them all say the same line. Mm -hmm. Give me the keys, sir. I think that's what they say in the usual suspects. They probably have different accents, I think. I doubt it. Shevchenko, Kaimer, and Sivian. I think they, they all sound exactly the same. Kaimer should, should have glasses, too. Yeah, of course. LDC is asking, isn't Sam hella tall? But Kaimer's quite tall as well, isn't he? Kaimer's very tall. He might be taller than me, and I'm not sure if he's done growing. Like, I'm 193, and he's, yeah, he's more or less my, my height and might keep growing. They might all be super tall. Shevchenko, I'm not, not sure. I don't think he's that tall. I don't know. And f4. Wants to go d4. Saving could go g5. Trying to chase the knight away so he can take this pawn. But d4, I guess, is there. It's a counter. 
I don't like Black's position. It's very vulnerable to this break, and White has the bishops. So maybe he has to think about crazy stuff. D5 is always good. Who said that? Kramnik. No, he said G6, King G7 was always good. Or nope. G3, King G2. He said G5. Oh, really? I think so. Uh, that's 2018 Kramnik. Possibly, yeah. It could be. Also, it might have been sarcastic Kramnik. Mm, it's so hard to tell. Was the one on Twitter, was that sarcastic Kramnik? No, that was the best Kramnik. I think you should come back to Twitter. I agree. I think also, Maybe it would fit with the, with, the new, with the new policy, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you for think, do you think Twitter is better now or, or worse? I don't know. I don't like the vibe much, but I still use it the same way, never tweeting anything and refreshing my timeline eight hours a day. So it's still a great, great benefit to my life, I think. Mm-hmm. That does seem very healthy. Yep. <clears throat> GF Queen H5. Not sure. The computer hates White's position. Doesn't look too bad to me, frankly. But the computer is probably right. I mean, of yeah. course, the king is a little exposed. And after bishop b2, d4, White is just not in time to. To do anything, you know, ED, there's rook to E2. And if there's no time, maybe black gets time for king h8, rook g8. Oh, the computer says it's just winning for black. It's, it's surprising to me. Yeah, it's a strange position. Timer doesn't look thrilled either. Sivion. Does he have a dartboard there in the background? Mm. Is it called like dartboard? It. Does look like it, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Do you think he had a picture of Kaimer just to train like uh, on bullseye before the match? Nah. I don't think he's someone who needs to hit his opponent. He might be. You never know. Hard to say. Do you prefer to be friends with your opponent or to play people that you really don't like? Prefer not knowing them. That's because I'm very mentally weak. So if I have nothing to occupy my mind, that's that's best. Friends is okay. If I don't like them, it has advantages as well. Like you prepare more, but it's also a distraction. No, so for me, not knowing them is probably best. So you're not a Karch now? No. <clears throat> I like the chess skills. I'm equally rude, but uh, I can't back it up. <laughs> What's going on here? Kaima's back? Rook to e1. The computer just said rook c8, and the pressure would keep mounting. But after knight e4, queen d1, why did Savion exchange the queens? Could have, could have kept them. Well, the end game is nothing, nothing special. I was banking on this d3, d2 push. But it doesn't seem decisive. Oh! Just as I said it. There's a pin. That's there a big is a pin. pin. And you can't unpin. Rook d7. There's no unpinning. Oh, and he doesn't do it. He goes rook e2. Now you can take in rook e1. And what is fine. That's a strange blunder. I think I would find rook d7. I think you would. Humble brag. That's not a humble brag. That's just a brag. <laughs> Rookie three. Okay, Vince is down on the clock by quite a lot, though. 
Yeah. He has to speed up. Rook b4, such moves are tough when you don't have time. No, he's just going to lose. He's very fast, though. He is incredibly fast. And very furious. But he's losing. Good game by, by Sivian. Sivian back in the match. Yeah. Still two, two and a half, one and a half to Vincent. Very much so. What do you want to do? Do you want to switch to Shevchenko Supi? Because, of course, I want to watch. Our boy. Mm, let's let's stick with this one. Let's see if Sam comes back in this one because he Sam has white in the next game. I think that's correct. I think they take turns with the colors. I think so. You never know with Sam. <laughs> you think he's he's just gonna start playing black? This is a theoretical debate. Interesting that Kaima goes bishop d6 hasn't been. Um, mainstream. But he probably has some, some thoughts there. What channel are we on on Twitch? Are we on Chess24? We are. Twitch.tv slash Chess24. Also on Chess24.com. Wow. And the chess twenty four YouTube. Oof. So bishop d six played. Not that common recently. Takes takes e five d five. I think the general thinking was the bishop was better here than d six, but Kaimer seems to question that. I moves back, but uh, the situation had changed a bit because of the pin. Hmm. So this kind of looks good for white because white has more space, but it always looked better for white to me, but it's not so obvious what goes where. Like you don't have mm -hmm. the typical plans, you can't get c5. Getting in b4 is not gonna be easy. So I would usually also try to get some bishop e3, knight d2 type of setup, but black can bother him, like knight g4, bishop c5. So it's a, it's a weird position. I never really understood it. I guess, as usual, it depends on the details. Yeah. I'm very bad at playing these positions. I always lose them with white. Mm. How do you get these well. mm. Just this kind of structure. Hmm. I would I lose confidently. Sorry, right. I keep interrupting you. No, please. Or you I keep got... interrupting me. I don't know. It's... I think it's that way. Yeah. Hmm. I took a break to eat some... I don't know what this is. <coughs> Lebkuchen? Do they have these things in Sweden? Sweden, you value your tea time with like uh, stuff on the side, so you probably do. Yeah, we, we, we value fika time. Hmm. Every hour, I guess. You should have a fika break. It's in, in Swedish employment law. Yeah. You know, it sounds very funny to German ears. <laughs> but Fika is just coffee time, or? It's never been totally clear to me, but I think you get coffee and some kind of cake or biscuit. Sounds good. I think it's only coffee, though. I don't think you should have tea. Yeah, that's fair. Queen three. Americans are asking, what's employment law? <laughs> it's if you're no longer employed by Twitter, you can't stay in the country. Uh, that was it, right? <laughs> yeah, that seems one of them. <laughs> Allegedly. Savian has stabilized here. Queen on e3 does a good job, covers the pawn. But he wants to castle and then launch an attack. Uh, 
I'd probably still lose this position, but less often. Very confidently. Less often, but more confidently. Yeah, I'm not sure how bad it is for black. Like knight here and bishop here, but it looks slow to generate counter play. It's also not that fast for white to make them. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. What's the clock? They're they're all very controlled. Like no one thinks for three minutes about a move. Nah. These guys, they're just digital chess natives. Although we we shouldn't act like that's a new thing. I played online all the time when when I was young. <laughs> it's it's been around for a bit. Yeah, the internet is not that recent, I guess. And internet chess was one of the earlier things on it was around i like the first thing all we had was aol and the internet chess club mm -hmm. and the free internet chess club F when F did you first join the internet chess club 94 <laughs> when... no 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 when did i get online 97 maybe <laughs> fair enough So you never played on Yahoo Chess? No. Is that still the biggest chess site in the world? Probably not anymore, but it used to be. For I think it time. closed down about 10 years ago. But I can't tell Up until that. then, yeah, it was up there. Okay, I'm a sort of stabilized here. But of course, G5 is still looming. I B5. I should keep an eye on Chess24 chat because Twitch chat are talking about God and Demons. So Twitch should... chat, please stick to chess. You can't just talk about whatever you want. This is a serious chess tournament with two young stars. You can't just talk about God and Demons. It's not how it works. Chess only. What Demons? I'm... Elon Musk. No. <laughs> uh, okay. No, it's actual demons as well. It's very confusing that both positions look the same. And Supi, Shevchenko, at a glance, looks pretty much the same as mm -hmm. Konovets Kramer. King A2. H6? Whoa, H6. Saying... Please, if you have a go G5, make it make it count. That's a surprising move. Yeah, what's the point of H6? He's trying to stop G5 for now, but it's going to have so much more impact once it arrives. So I don't really understand it. Because in the German school of chess, we're taught, don't move the balls in front of your king. Unless you have to. He's already played F6. Exactly. But now he's going for, for tactical sorcery. Knight b3, knight takes, and knight takes c4. If bishop takes, he could recapture with a pin. Savian's not impressed, though. Goes back with the queen. With this king out here, all of a sudden, anything could happen. Yeah. B5 seemed weird, though. Yeah, you block your own bishop, but it's nice to have B4. I don't know. It's, it's always so hard to say what's easy and what's weird with the, with the computer running. Looks like, once again, Savion stabilized. Now D6 is looming. G5 was there. You should go G5 before. Mm. It's too late. Is it ever too late? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Might be too late now. Knight takes <laughs> e4. He blundered that e4 is saying, yeah, this is... Oof. Turning the tables. Vince Come has on, been down on the chill. clock a lot, but he's very fast. He's very fast, but he just blundered rook f5. 
Yep. Wow. Twenty mm. six. That's a tough one. That's a tied match. Yeah, two and a half both. This one, yeah, I guess it's sort of typical because Savian was better most of the time, but then you're ahead on the clock, and even if things go wrong, sometimes that advantage you acquired on the clock earlier still mm -hmm. still gets you home. It's what I like about 5-0. In 3-2, if you had a, an advantage on the clock and then you mess up later, you still messed up. In 5-0, you can sometimes, it can help you. Not sure if that's good or bad. It's a thing, though. And that's it's a thing. What matters. Mm -hmm. How's Shevchenko, Supi? What's the score? The score is two and a half, one and a half. No. Yes. Two and a half, one and a half. It says two and a half, two and a half. Supi. Nice. Supi's in the lead? I, tr I don't know. Could be. Mm. The results here, uh, right? Also... I don't think Shevchenko looks that much like Sevilla or Kaya. Nah, a bit, a little bit. In a police yeah. lineup, if he like, you know, you were mugged in the dark. I, uh, I'm confident I would recognize all three of them in a police lineup. But which one tried to kill you? If someone, one of them tried to kill you in a dark room, and you had to pick between the three. Probably Kaima. <laughs> the other two don't know me. Well, what reason would they have? <laughs> no reason at yes, all. Yes, it was Vincent. Okay, yeah, it's two and a half, two and a half. Each. Right. It could be Here. Sam that tried to kill you. He's unpredict unpredictable. That is true. But most unpredictable people don't try to kill people they don't know, from what I heard. Do you watch a lot of true crime on Netflix? Do you watch all these Dahmer documentaries and stuff like that? I watched this Dahmer series. And it was a tough hang. Somehow, spending time with maybe the most vile Human being you can imagine for like 10 hours is not as fun as uh, as advertised. Yeah, I don't watch it. Yeah, no, it's always this tricky balance of they're trying to be respectful to the victims and so on, but also there is a lot of uh, um, yeah, very graphic violence and you do spend a lot of time with, with that sick guy. So I don't know. It worked on me. I watched it, but it didn't make me feel good. But to answer your question, yeah, I watch. I watch stuff. I liked making a murderer. The first one, the second season season was yeah. The first one was pretty good. I think he did it. Yeah, that's how I feel about all these things. Serial, I think he did it. Making murderer, did it. Tiger King. He did everything one can think of. <laughs> Tiger King, he definitely did a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> Only staircase. Staircase, I believe, in the owl theory. The owl flew in through the window and pushed her downstairs? Yeah. What's going on here? This is way too complicated. But it looks like Soupy... Is checkmating him. Hmm. It's no time. It's checkmate. Wow. It's pretty checkmate. This guy's soupy is good. It's very nice. So Soupy's won three in a row now. He goes to three and a half points. No one has repeated Magnus's seven zero. That's surprising. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're fat. <laughs> a whole hour already. And they couldn't go without losing a game. Nah, they couldn't go two games. It's true. Oh, sorry. Shevchenko went three games. His third game was a draw. So Shevchenko's come the closest. He won the first two. Fair. 
Daimar is up playing. Savion here takes Bishop H3, the usual. Oh, and there's a visitor. Two visitors. Hello, Nelly. Hello, Jonas. Queen F3. Hmm? Okay. Ich weiß nicht, was das iPad ist. Ich glaube, irgendwo oben Jonas hat schon gesagt. Finalists of Co Commentators. Yeah, but they just want the iPad. They don't want. They don't want my company. They just want to watch Fireman Sam on the iPad. <laughs> it's very hard to compete with Fireman Sam. Very hard to compete with Vincent Kramer as well. It's just it keeps building the pressure here. Now Knight G6 for Baruch C7. This is looming. Well, it's positionally, it's just rough position. Yeah, this is good for Vincent. Yeah. All the time in the world. Bishop A8. Not the move dreams are, are made of. But he was trying to get off the seventh rank. Now you're nice. Oh, my son is very close to the big button on the computer. Oh, button. Oh, make the computer out, shut your ass. <laughs> yeah, you maybe need a, a computer with a less attractive power button. Yeah. <laughs> there are two very attractive buttons in this room. The computer button and the big, whatever it's called, the major power button that switches off everything. <laughs> Nice. It's, it's a great setup for having very little kids around us. <laughs> okay, two. People are asking, how old is he now? I don't know. 15? 15? Uh, I'm not sure. We're not Time counting. <laughs> you want to see how to suit? Huh? Bist du sieben? Five? No. He's two. Nice. That's a good age. But he doesn't know. He doesn't know. It's best not to know. Yeah. I don't know anymore. I used to know my age now. Yeah. You're probably happier now. No. But, uh... Whoa, Whoa, Nazi three threatening a fork. Now it's your lose. Oh, Queen F7 cashing in. King F7, Bishop E8, and the Bishop on E8. We've been asked why the other started yet. The other matches will start later so that we can watch them. So they're sense. blitz matches, and it's hard to follow more than one blitz match at a time. But we're coping with two. It's even hard to follow one blitz match at a time because we get distracted very easily. Mm -hmm. But Kaima's winning this one. The, the game, at least. But in general, yeah, I think blitz matches, honestly, it's... One can cover one. One at a time. Rapid matches, I think, two. Two is all right. Mm -hmm. And classical games, of course. Four might even be the sweet spot, and you have enough to talk about. Like, more than four, it gets a bit confusing. But I think blitz matches, one. Rapid matches, two. Classical, four. How it should be. It's fair enough. Rook B7. We, we also have to balance that we don't want to be here all night as well. No, no, for important. sure. It's not meant as criticism. <laughs> just why we... No, no, I just want to make it clear to the viewers that the main reason is we don't want to sit here and commentate for nine hours. So That's why there's two matches on now. No, so I think for the viewers, not everyone has to listen to our... Blabbering is fun if you can see some games simultaneously if you're following where in the Chess24 app or where wherever you watch your games. But in, in my experience, if you switch too much between between blitz games and blitz matches, it gets more confusing than it, it helps to helps the action. Mm -hmm. I agree. All of these are excuses to stick with our boy Vinny, of course. 
Is he still winning? Nope. But he's up on the clock this time. Just hung a rook. Oh. I had to pre-move. Oh, but it's a time scramble. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, he's going to lose this one. Mm. Sam Usually is so the fast. queen is too strong. The queen is too strong if you can pre-move with the queen. Mm -hmm. These guys are relentless. So Sam takes the lead. Sam so takes the lead. First time. Three and a half. Yep, three looked wins like, in a row. Looked like Kano was in control. But you lose three games in a row, and boom, you're behind. More. So you, you don't. You don't think this is the game that breaks, Kaimo? I think it's hard to break. Because you called it correctly with Elianov yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but this one wasn't like okay. It was much better. Now it's going to be annoying. But I don't think the match is over yet. Uh. Here, queen is six check. He's also, he's much better in the opening usually, so that that can help a little against tilt if you start with good positions. Still, mm -hmm. I might be wrong. I'd be biased. Not tilting does seem like a a German skill of chess thing. Oh, I'm horrible at not tilting. Uh -huh. Queen f three. Isn't this a double attack? Why, why doesn't this win a piece? Am I going mad? Ah! Oh, wow. That's that's cute. You think he saw that? Probably. It's very nice if he spotted that. I guess they both saw it. Might be seven... White is still more or less lost. This pawn, this G4 pawn is so key. You, you don't have any pawn breaks or anything without it. Well, black. We'll just get the pieces out to, to better squares. It should convert. Having said that, he also had a good position last game. Yeah. This is no increment blitz. Stakes are always high. Five, just queen f5. I'd blitz our queen f5 so fast. Yeah, there you go. It's so now white has to either go back or allow the exchange of queens. Neither seem very tempting. He should win this one. Pawn up, much better, better structure. Ahead on the clock. It's going to be a close one. Three and a half, three and a half. Could be. We'll see. How did you recruit Sam for your prestigious event? Did he qualify? Did he apply? How did it work? Nah, I invited him. Uh -huh. I said, hi, Sam. Would you like to play? Do you have a chat group with all the Sams or is it just one on one talk? Uh, yeah, there's a big chat group. There's a big WhatsApp group with all the Sams in in chess. So I managed to get into it. They kicked me out immediately after. Why? Because I'm not a Sam. I thought your just... real name was Sam Duke. Nope. Mm. I'm just a fan of the Sams, but not one myself. Just a fan of the genre. Got it. Got it. Nah, Sam was pretty easy to recruit. Vincent was easy to recruit as well. That's surprising. Uh, you better probably you, you told him the wrong dates, uh, like you told me, and he said, "Yeah, that works." And then you said, "Oh no, <clears throat> it's earlier." Yeah, yeah, I told, but no, I didn't tell you the wrong dates. The dates changed. Yeah, fair enough. And then I didn't tell you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Rook eight. 
That may have happened more than once. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, he does still look winning. So many targets here. Yeah, it's going to win this one. Was passed now? Yeah, lot of good. Hey, I had two minutes to get started. And now we're going to The other match is tied as well. Yeah, I'm having a debate. Uh, how long one should charge the iPad with my daughter? Until it's charged, I guess, but that doesn't usually work with kids. Whoa. Breaking news. Are you still there, Jan? You seem to have frozen. But we might have a special guest. I don't know if we're still live. Jan seems to have completely frozen. I don't know if I'm still here. Okay, that's good. You're live. Jan might have disconnected. Yep. But we have a... Yep. Okay, Jan has gone. He will be back. But in the meantime, he switches his camera on. We have a very special guest joining us. Hello, you hear me? Hi, we can hear you. Hello, Annie. Fantastic. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. How's it going? Great. How are you? I'm good. I don't think they can see you yet, but... Wow, you managed to scare Jan away. Okay, good. Wow, you have a producer, Mr. Doji. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Are you implying that my my <laughs> tournament might be somewhat unprofessional? How dare you? <laughs> well, you so, know. So Jan was here until you joined, and then like you just scared him off. I don't know it's what happened. It's very strange, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very strange. I mean, I, I can guess what happened, and it's that his son discovered the big power button on his computer, which <laughs> apparently he is a big fan of. He has a big red button. Yeah, I so that's imagine. my guess. That's what's happened. So how are you today? You're busy? Very busy? Very. I just was able to pop in and I'm heading off, you know. Okay. Like I'm one of these businessmen, you know, who constantly stare at their phone this time. Mm-hmm. Lots of appointments to get to? Yeah, yeah. Got a flight. A flight? Out and then back in the next day, wow. you know, the usual. Wow, you brought in the big guns. My son switches <laughs> off my computer for two minutes <laughs> and instantly I'm replaced. Yeah, just a reminder, you can be replaced at any point, Jan. That's that's actually reassuring and less of a threat than, <laughs> than you think. Hi, Anish. How are things? Hi, how are you? I'm hanging in there. My kids keep storming the, the studio, which makes it a very rough show. But here we are. Shall I say? Shall I share my my screen? I guess so. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can see the game finally. Suddenly, yeah. uh, Sam took over the lead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although it looks like he's going back to maybe a tie, or maybe not. I don't. Is Kaimer messing up? Mm-hmm. Also, it's quite interesting how at some point towards the end the clock starts to play a really very serious role always. Why is that? Like, they all play so much online bullet, three-minute games, and they can't finish a five-minute game, like, get to checkmate or draw within the five minutes? I don't understand it. Yeah, I think that's the problem. You you give them the illusion that they have the time, and then it turns out that they don't. And it's, you know, a big, big surprise, moment of surprise. Yeah, we've seen it throughout these events, and... To tell some exciting tales from my youth, every tournament used to be 5-0. It would very rarely happen that you would just have a, this crazy time scramble with 10 seconds against 10 seconds. Uh, Maybe yeah. because in your youth, like you played people who were really not evenly matched, yeah? You were probably by far the, the smartest kid in the, you know, in the room. 
that was Everybody nice. Else. That was nice hit. But now also like German Blitz Championships have been 5-0 for forever. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe maybe you're right that they're all so good at bullet, they feel they have an eternity, and then all of a sudden it's 10 seconds against 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. I don't think this game is updating on the board. There, yeah, there we go. We'll get that. We'll get that. <sighs> ah, you just uh, yeah, you, you kind of oh black is playing for a win or who's playing for a win? Black has more time. Mm, yeah, I think at this time. point it, they both have enough time to draw their way. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, white has the one that is easier to play, yeah, at this point. Kramnik has already typed his open letter. Should black flag this? <laughs> yeah, I mean Mr. Dodgy, of course, as expected, chose the most disgraceful time control. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <my> God. <laughs> he, but you know, he was watching. Uh... That's how you do it. Yeah, you pre-move and you watch where the guy keeps his rook. And you can hold for that square. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's so greasy. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dodge enjoying himself. He's like, yes. No, this was <laughs> Jan's time control. Jan was very... That's true. Strong. That's true. Uh, it's very my fault. strong about this. In the first prestigious Mr. Dodge Invitational, he said, no, it has to be five plus zero. No increments. Yeah, but that was to benefit me. Now there's no reason anymore. You can get a normal time control. <laughs> okay, so everyone's asking, Anish. We, have to, we can't let you go without asking the tough questions. Why are you not playing this year? Okay, I chickened out. What can I say? Wow. <laughs> chicken of the week. Your uh, your chicken, Laurent, finally, finally has a reason. Finally, he's got, I've given him the <laughs> reason. Already... No, there's no other reason, Mr. Dodge. I just chickened out. That's, that's exactly what it is. I don't believe that. No, it's Because I, 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 and Magnus is playing this year, but he definitely didn't know that you didn't know he was going to play. So we can't accuse you of running from Magnus. So... Yeah, who I were mean, you running it's... from? Is it Sam? Yeah, I mean it's, it's very strange. I mean, I, I know like my last. I think I lost like the last seven games to Magnus or something like this. That's at least the feeling I have. So I can't really accuse him of fearing me very much lately. You and Salam <laughs> should start a therapy group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we should. Uh... <laughs> but the thing is, like, it is very suspicious. The two times I played, he didn't play. And now he is there, you know, all brave with his 7 0. So I don't know. It's a little bit sus. Yeah. But it, I don't think he knew who was playing either, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well. I don't, do I think, don't think his story added up. Like, <clears throat> I wasn't 100% was sure who was playing until about an hour before the tournament either. So. <laughs> it's, it's been fun. It's a serious event. Mm -hmm. Mr. Doji, why do you have two games at the same time? Can you explain me that? It's so that we don't have to commentate for nine hours. Uh huh. Okay. Isn't that the whole point that you commentate for nine hours? Uh, well, we're going to do six today, so like we you haven't done do a great. Like the old, the good old days of the chess.com uh, speed chess championship. You could have your wait. What? Oh, mouse, 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 mouse slip. Oof. Oh, he won ninety seven. Yeah, very, another disgraceful moral degradation. What's the score? Display. Three and a half, four and a half. But it's the other way around. No, it's. Savian is leading four and a half, three and a half, no? Mm, and they tied again now? Savian was up three and a half, two and a half, and then he flagged that other end game. So I think it's the other way around, but we can I figure out. One, so that's good for the for the intrigue. Yeah. Yes, four and a half, three and a half to Sam. That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> Maybe the producer, because they switched sites, but since they look similar... Maybe they they can confuse them. Yeah, guys, they really don't look similar. All of you are saying that everybody looks similar. Really, they nobody looks similar, <laughs> apart from Mr. Doji and Jan Gustafsson. Everybody else looks very different. So <laughs> Doji and I look look the same. We look alike. If we also the, the this, same for size. The of, on his head, you, you would look exactly identical. Is... Yeah, I'll send you one. Uh, no, like no, 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 it's fine. I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, Mr. Oh. Dodge, I think you should run your event for the duration of the entire year, you know? <laughs> like every like day. Every yeah? now and then a match. Every now and then a match. Like... <laughs> yeah, because I mean most of the most of the event is not really the matches, it's mostly about the tweets. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's... The entire exactly. Every now and then you drop a video, then another match, suddenly, like uh, you know, another grandmaster plays another grandmaster, and everybody's like, what's going on? Like, yeah. Part of the Mr. Dodge. And at some point, they'll forget what's going on. You can just introduce new players, have someone who is knocked out come back in. Nobody will know. Mm -hmm. 
I just pretend there's some big overarching narrative that no one can really follow, but everyone will just go along with it. If you're confident enough, people will believe. Anyway, nobody can really follow. Already. Just do it like the Champions Chess Tour. Then at some point, someone won. Like you can have a big finals. Like uh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Just in action. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, anyway, like at the end, you could just say that Magnus probably won. And everybody will be like, yeah, so, so everything is probably good. <laughs> As long as Magnus or Sam win in the end, no one will suspect anything. Yep, that sounds like a good plan. The only problem I can think of is wh what do you do with the three months of teaser videos and like cryptic tweets about your next tournament? If it's year, year round, like. Well, uh, I we just work three months in advance. So I'll do some. You can have like a three months off season, like like any other sports has. I like, like it, like the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or any other, uh, basically any other major entity in this world. But I think during the off season, you should leave Sweden. You should go to to Australia and and travel, live in a tent, find yourself, and then come back for MDI four. Yeah, I mean, I could just go to see Jess. That that's close enough. You nah, can buy my chessable nah. courses now that we are promoting random stuff for, <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> this is, by the way, theory, not this. Um, I've seen this position theory. after yeah, yeah. 90. It's a very old theory. Like, normal, I, was yeah. I was preparing this like many, 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 many years ago. It used to be trendy for for blue, for like black. And I remember as draw. This is when you were yeah. clicking. At some point, you got excited with white. So it was some number, but it disappears. Yeah. No, of course, it's yeah. It, it was back in the day when the engines were like excited about some activity, but yeah. it was a draw. Engines these days. This uh, player called uh, LP Supi. He's not very uh, well known, right? Uh, amongst uh, like he's he hasn't uh, been playing in many. Uh, tournaments people have followed but i think he he made uh, his name when uh, he won this famous online game right against carlson i thought he made his name when he beat me in the banter blitz cup like 20. okay that's when he made his name 19. for you but uh, for yeah. the brother <laughs> yeah so, so he had no, this, the famous this one you know this guy with famous ones i mean it's not like a random like he won this famous game where ah, there was some combination and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, yeah and then magnus is there like wow for three minutes in a row and that's somewhere on youtube and he's the guy i think Mm -hmm. I think Magnus, he maybe plays Magnus if he wins this one. Yeah, the winner of this match plays Magnus. Mm, nice. Who do you think is the superior player in that match? Uh -huh. Shevchenko or Supi? No, Supi or Magnus. I mean, that's the good thing about chess. It's not about who is a superior player. You know, it's about who who plays Queen C six at the right moment. Mm, that's true. By, nice uh, light square domination there by uh, Shevchenko. Okay, H, H4 is a nice one. Doesn't H5? Allow... Yeah, and, and now there is no more light square domination because it was about, like, he was about to trade all the right pieces and establish a knight on F5. But now the knight is too far away from King F8 and the knight is too far away from F5, which is kind of nice. So he's a sharp tactician, great strategist. Everything, he's got it all. He's going to play, I think, in uh, this year's. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it, but yeah. This you can leak it. It's What's fine. left this year? World Rapid and Blitz? No, no, what next year, next playing? year. He's, uh, I, I think he might play Vikanze next year. Oh, the A group? Much, yeah, the B group, I think, yeah. Mm. That sounds like a leak. Yeah, I'm but not yeah. sure that's announced. I just somehow... Somebody, I think they it. mentioned the Brazilian player was going to play, but I don't know if yeah, they announced yeah, yeah. the I name. Think, I think I, that's, that's true. I think they said, guess the Brazilian player. No, actually, mm -hmm. they announced him, kind of. Wow. Breaking news. Anyway, he's good at chess. What's his classical rating? It's Is he 2600? No, not quite yet, yeah? Yeah, I, I actually don't know much about him uh, other than up. that, uh, you know, and, and your match against him that I just found out about. Yeah. Sorry. The rook end game is not getting a little bit exciting, or is no surprises there? No surprises, right? Some miracles. Mm -hmm. King d4, king d5, kings. Some no miracles there. Ah, he's two six twelve in in classical. He's he's getting it. Uh -huh. Soupy, that is. No miracles, no. Just three versus no, three. No, I think I think uh, fifty uh, three versus two is going to be. But I think the one minute is probably just enough to draw. But it depends. 
might get flagged. How do you get three versus two? Ah, you call king h5? King I six. assume that I'll just take and give uh, rook b6 check and take on f5. Like rook b6, rook b3, and I will give mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But I think you maybe have some king mm -hmm. h5 that you try. But okay, if you look king h5, you can also get uh, mate, yeah, somewhere. I mean, not now, mm -hmm. but somewhere after check. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, like, like in the, actually, like in the game, sort of. Yeah, let's see the game. <clears throat> So b2, he took directly, checking h5, g3. Whoa! Oh, wow, what's that? That's Rook insane. t3, black wins. Absolutely, absolutely insane that it's actually... <laughs> that is funny. absolutely insane. That's amazing. It's a, it's the most amazing position I've ever seen, I think. This shouldn't happen. How can white be lost? Yeah, this is... A, this is, <laughs> this is it's incredible. beautiful. Just no stopping g5 and you win. Yeah, I think it's a unique position. I've never seen something like this. Wow. It's black king that looks like it's getting mated, but... It's the white king cut off, but he missed it. He went rook of seven, and now it looks yeah. No, the, the thing is the young the young uh, generation. You know they've got the skills to to hold such things in thirty seconds or whatever. It's a completely different game. What's the score? Five four. First to six and a half wins. Yep. Five four. Five close. for uh, for whom? For Syria. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's going back and forth. I'm very confused. Okay, okay. So he needs not so much, yeah? He needs just he needs two. one and a half points. I don't think he can get it in this game. No. What are the odds? He must be. I don't know. 80% with the 5 4 lead? Is that too high? I think Maybe it's, it's too, high. too high a little bit. Well, provided they are equal, uh, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, that probably is a way to calculate that. Should be. Mm -hmm. The same strength. If Kaima wins this one, it's 50-50. So so there is like a 50%. Yeah, like like that both of them score one and a half point in the next um is a 50%, right? Mm -hmm. But with one and a half for for one of them, it's not going to be the match victory. So that's that's why the chances are not even. And then you have to calculate the rest somehow. But yeah, the chances are better for, for Sam. That's clear. Yeah. <laughs> According to, this, to the mathematician. According to the math, so one point the math. We did figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Given equal strength. Yeah. Uh, Given equal the strength, the chances are. But they're, by the way, very evenly matched. I, I believe if you run this match 10 times, you will have 10 different winners. 10. Well, that's low. <laughs> but they will all look similar. <laughs> Please stop that. <laughs> it's like, I mean, like, I don't know. It's definitely wrong. No, it feels like Kaima is superior in the opening, but then Savion, he clearly played a lot of online blitz, so he's uh, he's filthy. Is Kaima really superior in the opening? Yeah. Just from this match so far, uh, it looked like a, uh, This one, I'm not sure, supports my case. But, but... That, that time where, uh, like, the, he got lost in Karakan with Black, uh, that was Vincent, right? Who was Black? Like he was kind of losing yeah. straight from the opening, kind of. Just didn't lose the game, also, but he won the game. He was also completely winning um, in, in that same game. I mean, in this h4, h5, bishop, g5. Uh, I mean, white was winning, right? No, black was winning. Like, he went queen c7 and then it's lost, but it was but like black minus won. three. Yeah, yeah, but he was completely lost along the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's hard all to say, but uh, Sam is a good player, that's for sure. No doubt about it. And what's the other uh, match, the score, by the way? Uh, five. No idea. The other match is four and a half each. Oh, wow. Oh, exciting. I thought after 2 0, it's somehow I assumed that uh, Shevchenko will, you know, take the lead, but not so simple. Who do you think is the best Sam in the world? Is it Savion or Shankland? Both from a chess perspective and who you like better? Okay, it's very hard to say who I like better because they're both adorable. But uh, when it comes Fair. to chess, yeah, I, don't, I, I I always have a, like a bias towards younger players, maybe. Because um, I so always Shankland. have a feeling that, <laughs> yeah, I always have a feeling that they, you know, they might improve still the areas of the games where they're not so good that, that, that it's more likely they improve. So I would, I have some bias, I think, towards Sam over uh, over Sam. So <laughs> yeah, I'll go with uh, yeah. Savion. G4 played here. Yeah, I think very desperate. Like he lost control of the central squares yeah, and he's trying to gain them trouble. through the side, like some G5 he'll try, but it's really not uh, it's really not it. I think he should try G5 and try to fight for the 
e5 square somehow. It's probably what he wants, but it's just gonna backfire very badly. Yes, king is to lose. Oof, this might be it for Vincent. If you lose this one, it's 6-4. Yeah, then it's not comfortable yeah. anymore. It's not fun to play. And also, like, you, you even can afford to make a mistake. Yeah. yeah, this could be almost over. The playing so nervously, this g4. All the games, like, after 15 moves, it's plus 3, minus 3. There's a lot of random stuff happening. Yeah, Vincent is uh, quite adventurous, yeah, despite all the efforts of uh, uh, of Peter and you and everybody who is around him. It's very strange because everybody around him is either the German or Hungarian school of chess, which yeah, teaches you I think it's play the, mainstream I, theory and then be a chicken. I think there are a lot of people around him as well, probably who were telling him that he's a genius from a very young age, and like got in, they, they got to him. <laughs> they uh, got maybe. to him. Maybe they, they made him so confident and yeah, then yeah. he still has a theory, so he's the best of both worlds. Exactly, exactly. That's why he's Actually. so adventurous. Because, yeah, typically, it's not the German or Hungarian or Lego school of chess. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but he seems confident. He still works a lot and is well prepared. But, yeah, he's not, doesn't mind mixing it up. He mix it up a little too much here, looks like. Yeah, but knight e6 is uh, not the most dangerous of the of the like trading a knight is not uh, the most uh, challenging uh, way of go going about it, right? I mean, black is better no matter what, but I guess keeping the knight on like maybe h5, knight f5, or something like this is a little more as much as Russia, more ambitious uh, sort of. I think that also Sam kind of realizing you know that uh, he's in a very good spot. He's trying to play it a little extra extra tight. With the, you know, doesn't mind some exchanges, thinks that knight on c5 is active, let's get rid of it. Makes I think it's not sense. so bad anymore. Some for stability white. for Vincent now with the knight yeah, on b3. Yeah, I think we do worse. There we have them again. Keimer without the glasses, the only way to tell them apart. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, interesting. Takes knight c5. What's gonna happen to the white king? Yeah, on d2 maybe. Yeah. D2. H3. Yeah. I thought he was gonna go for checkmate, but he's trying to stabilize. Yeah, king on d2 is also not not wow. Okay, this is trying. Oh, to he wants the squares. The dark squares. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, the. So he's still going to do bishop f4, but then f3, it's too high a price. Eh? King. Yeah, I mean, you get like a little illusion of, of some dark square control, but you're mated. <laughs> yeah, also e3 will, yeah, yeah. will no, it's, come it's on the dark total, squares. It's a total illusion. I mean, yeah. they, without the queens, like maybe, but even, you know, it's just, yeah, he missed f5. Uh, it just doesn't work as queen d2. And then queen d2 is also in the way of the king, probably. Like you want the king on d2. Just castle. Come on. Probably king d1. Here we go. Did, yeah. Well, yeah, why not king b2, rook a1? Actually, it's king looks kind of stable there. Yeah, king b2, rook a1, by the way. Just again, he's low, lower on the clock, so it might play a role. Uh oh. Yeah, I don't think he's going to hold this one. Mr. Doji, are you like enjoying or you are a bit nervous that it's your event, you know? What's to be nervous about? I just have yeah. to get the event started and then it's not my problem anymore. Like yeah, sure? other people sure? play chess, it's fine. Yeah, well, what if something goes wrong? What could go wrong? Anything? Why try and jinx me? I What's the know, worst right? that could happen at this point? Oh, E3. Is that smart? Wow. That's a good move. Bro. Wow, E3. You know, just... Wow. Positional nice. pawn sacrifice. Beautiful. Yeah. Oof. Very impressive. At some point, Queen A7 will come in. Oh, DC D4. <laughs> Nasty. Oh, yeah. Nasty. Oof. Yeah, no, nice. I'm not worried it's anything good. could go wrong. I don't like it's an online event, no one can get hurt. But if yeah. someone were to, I don't know, someone's unhappy with the tournament, and fantastic, to excellent sue it for a <laughs> let's say a excellent hundred, yeah, hundred million dollars. Yep, do they well, sue you personally or the play Magnus group? Like, we know both, <laughs> just both. Um, yeah, I think it would have to be uh, other people than me because I don't have a hundred million dollars, so. 
No, no, that's not. That's not. That's not. That's, that's I don't works. think that's. Uh, that's the, not nobody works. has hundred million dollars, and everybody got sued for hundred million dollars. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter what you have. <laughs> it's about what you have done. Oh, he's trying to flag him. Yeah, just okay. This bishop before was very, very ruthless. Oh, and we're still it's we're still in business here, yeah, more or less. It's crazy it's, it's, fast, by the way, uh, in these matches. So you you should have he should have tried to beat him on the board. They both are very fast, but yeah. But Finns is not going to be no. like very okay. But yeah, he needs to take decisions now and because you need to start pre-moving and then you hang stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you also hang stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no, he's not in time. No, he, it was not enough time. Bishop g3 just playing as a primo. Just go rook b2. It's <laughs> incredibly fast. He's making up a lot yeah, of Yeah, he's made a million moves with four seconds. And also, his position didn't get that much worse. But now yeah, it's well, it's just, uh, more like, just as you said, it's made from one. But <laughs> yeah, otherwise, it's not so bad. Otherwise, it looks nice. <laughs> Pretty decent position, just as made in one now on the board. Yeah. Okay, so last game, yeah, incoming. Oh, and also Could he's be. white. Could be. Yeah, this is this is it. Must win game. Oof. Two must win games in a row. Savia is going CD5. Very tight line. Queen C2. I think we should G5. It's more chicken. I can still do it. He goes for the end game. Yeah, E4. Oh, this is the e old school. Old yeah. school. Uh, yeah, but it's not really. It's not that equal. Like, it's how they uh, used to try to make draw before computers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah? It's, it's not <laughs> the way. They trade everything. Mm. But it's just slightly worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that Sam is aware of the old school, you know? I had some games like this, Queen 7 Bishop. Oh, four, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, with, bl with Black surprising me. <laughs> uh, no, I also had actually with Black, yeah. But Queen 7 yeah, was... Uh, but of course, he doesn't know this end game that it's better for black, so he, he's just playing it. And of course, you want yeah, to keep the queen zone. What he's doing also is fine, I think. But queen d7 was cleaner. <laughs> but there is very little, you know, like very little room for a mistake uh, with black. Like it's so close to get everything like traded somewhere with d1, d5, and everything gets traded that you feel very nervous as black in such positions. I think he will lose it simply. Yes, yeah, so start taking some chances. Yeah, I think there should be six is what you do, but then stuff drops yeah, off. You're so. afraid that some d5 will happen and it will be dead draw. So you try it. Like it's hard to keep the tension here. Savian with two match points. He doesn't have that much pressure. Yeah, exactly. This is always nice when you've got some cushion. Some cushion is there, and um, yeah, it's not. Where's Savian based? Is he in St. Louis like everybody? Uh, I don't think so. I think so, not no. everybody is in St. Louis at all, actually. I think Fabi is in St. Louis, Lanier and Levon. Hmm. I think Hikaru is not in St. Louis. No. Uh, who else is there in, in St. Louis? Louis? Or in the US in general? Well, Wesley is in Minnetonka. Wesley is in, that yes. We also in, yeah, Wesley and Hikaru are not there. I think Sam, I don't actually remember where he's from. I have a feeling he's not Sam. Famous. Which Sam? Our uh, Savian, yeah. No, the other Sam I know actually. The other Sam is in San Francisco. Uh, well, around there somewhere. Around there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. this is something I know as a matter of fact. Of course, that's common knowledge. I have a feeling Savian is also from that neighborhood, but I can probably find out by Googling. I don't think so. Like I was there just now. I don't think you didn't see him? I didn't see him. Okay. And I really walked around the place a lot. So I would have liked to see him if he was around. Did you check the Gold Gate Bridge? Yeah, I checked. Yeah, there are pictures of me. I checked the bridge and everything. No, I'm pretty sure he's not there. No, no, he's from Corning, New York. We were way off, or I was way off. You were right. Yeah, yeah. No, I felt like Corning, Corning New York, yeah. Corning, never heard Corning. of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's spending a lot of time now, yeah? He's calculating... Okay, so the good news for, uh, well, very good news for Vincent is that d5 break is not happening because the knight on c5 is not helping. Um, so he's got uh, the d5 square and some tension in the position. He's got what he wants with black. No, the, the isolated pawn and nothing direct happens, so he can keep... Well, running. I mean, you want maybe even more, yeah, <laughs> normally, but it's also not the worst. You don't get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> d5. 
32. So, Mr. Dodgy, do you have any surprises planned for the next couple of days? How do you get Anish to join the show? You just send him the Zoom link every day and hope he, he pops in. Or how does it work? Not even, yeah. Just send it once. A few times it didn't work. And then I sent him the Zoom link and said, if you click this link, you'll win a 50 euro Amazon gift card. And that one seemed to oh. work. So, Anish, you really need to be careful what links you click. Like, I don't think you need to be a little bit more security conscious. Like, no, I, I know already. I mean, also, you gave me like the PTSD yeah, when I saw my Twitter DMs. I didn't even publish. link your Twitter. D I only linked. I only leaked my message to you, but and that could have been to I anyone. Know. I understand. I, I send Zoom links to dozens of people every day. I understand, but still, I, I felt triggered there a little bit. This there was this tactic. Yeah, you guys have engine on it, amazing. At this in this five zero games, you still put the engine on, but there's Bishop takes d four. Yeah, it was very, very surprising tactic. How does it work? Yeah, it's really, really deep. Yeah, I think F3, F5, yeah, even just a yeah, very deep tactic. But of That's course, nobody sees it. Tough move to make, even in a classic. It's a super game. strange. <laughs> yeah. You're kind of happy with this. You've got this uh, knight on d5, isolated, all that, uh, everything. So, Doji, you used to have this, uh, this thing you were drinking, like a cocktail type of thing back in the day. Did I? Yeah, I think like you had that. You just you looked more like, uh, you know, more like the one, the Godfather of the tournament. I don't recall having a cocktail thing. I have this skull goblet. Maybe it's just my, you know, me that I, I can't just really see this very well. But yeah, I bought this goblet for Halloween, and then I didn't have Halloween at home, so now I just have a skull goblet. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Halloween at home. It reminds me of this meme. Yeah, like, can I get this uh, for? Can I get this for Halloween? We have Halloween at home. Yeah, that was the, the we had that match yesterday. It was Mamedov against Lagarde. It was you know, can we have Lagarde against Mamajarov? We have them at home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mr. Keimer is trying to make something happen here. Well, I don't like the time. One thirty against two. But Savion is fast and this is stable, no? Like especially now without the rooks. Yeah, so he will, three queen of seven. A queen before. Yeah. This is a. So is you better be sure, no? Quite stable, quite stable though for both. Okay, queen e five. He. This is also annoying. This pin. Yeah, very annoying pin. You're very worried about it. I, I see the computer goes for queen c three, queen a one, but it's. Uh, like very hard to judge because you are afraid that some g4 g5 at some point after queen takes a2 will happen and you are in this deadly pin yeah eternal pin or whatever it's called yeah so of course he tries to he plays h6 yeah? he's trying to somehow secure himself from that but now it's only comes stronger because now you actually got g4 queen c3 king g2 and then you have h4 actually exactly what what you want to avoid when h3 it makes no sense a4 plate Oh, knight h2. Wow, this is a nice resource. That's his plan. But I don't think that's his plan. It's a bit slow. It's very mine. difficult to see. I don't know why he played h3. But even just ba, yeah? Even ba, queen a4, queen e7, or something like that, it's also very, very drosh. Ah, there oh, was queen, queen a2. That's a good there sign. Was, there was queen a2, queen b7, knight e4, yeah? Also, some, some tricks. Queen c6, though. Yeah, looks good enough, yeah? Still drush. Yeah. Okay, now black is again slightly better. And the clock times are uh, getting close. Yeah, I think Vincent's a bit faster. He just always gets in time trouble way too early. It doesn't but I think help, if they get there, it's like... a bit faster, but like uh, you have less time. It means probably at some point you are a bit slower. <laughs> Yeah, but I think if he gets there like with only 10 seconds less rather than a minute less, he's quicker. Yeah, I think I if they so. get think if they both. get like five, 10 seconds each, I think Vincent's going to flag him. But mm -hmm. I don't think they usually end up in that situation. Oh, now this the pin got reversed, yeah, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> G5, H5. Queen E2, he gives up the pin. 93, Aye. he wants to stop Queen B7. He was afraid of Queen B7. Okay, but he allows 95. 
Now queen f3. Yeah, queen f3 is a resource. Oof. But probably uh, Sam will play knight f3. Nah, he's going to go queen f3. Yeah? Nice. Yeah. Ooh, a5. Knight d3, oh, knight c5? It might even be better. Uh -oh. King d6, knight d5 back. It's a draw, yeah? King d6, knight d5 back just This might be it. Yeah. Oh, even uh, king e4. Oh, actually, white is actually nice. Yeah, maybe. This black can have a win now. No, we push something. Oh, where is he going with the king? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, this is it, guys. This is it. Oof. That's rough. After a good start for Keimer, Sevian wins three in a row and never looks back to control the match. Seems like a very good blitz plan. Very good play in general, of course. Just as I'm giving my closing speech, is there stuff happening? Yeah, but I think it's essentially black is losing on time as well. So that's yeah, this doesn't help. And now it's all over. Yeah. Can be one pre move <laughs> there. One. See the the instincts. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. No, okay. congrats to Sam Savian. Do you think he will be most known for making the MDI three quarterfinals or for picking Hans King apart in when it was Hans move? Uh, no, but Sam, you know, is uh, he'll be known for many things. That's he'll be known for many, many things, I think. Tough beat for Keimer. By the way, Anish, we missed you this weekend. I, I wasn't sure about this, but we are teammates on the German Bundesliga. And I found out because I saw all the name tags of the guys not playing on our team. It was like Caruana, Aronia, yeah, Rashila Graf, like... Anand, Giri, Swidler. Pretty decent B team we have. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh I'm looking forward to, to play. But I, I think um yeah, this is some it's complicated, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's complicated this day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated, yeah. It's Let's just say I was happy to see you play in the Bundesliga and uh hmm. Yeah, and I I was aware at the time your teammate as well, but it was an interesting be... weekend. Yeah, Bundesliga always uh, interesting. Like so many games, and uh, in in there something some gems are hidden. Yeah, some beautiful games sometimes pop up. I I haven't studied. Did you see many, this many of the games? The Quincy two was I think from Bundesliga. Did you see this? Uh, oh yeah, that I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. So that I mean. was nice. Some <laughs> hidden gems. And we are being joined. In this uh, Sveshnikov looking line, yeah, it's quite funky. Don't care. We're being joined by the players Vincent Keimer and Samuel Seviani here. Sam, congratulations for the victory. How did it feel? Uh, thank you. I mean, <clears throat> it was a really back and forth match. Uh, a lot of flagging going on, <laughs> dirty tricks. So <laughs> it's interesting. Vincent, how do you feel about the time control? Because it feels like 5-0 with you guys being so good at 3-0 and bullet should be a lot of time. But in the end, seems to think to be getting out of hand in most of the games somehow. There were time scrambles. Yeah, it was very hard for me. I mean, I think I lost really a lot of winning positions there in the middle of the match, I would say. And of course, this is also why I then lost the match. But okay, it's part of the time control. Yeah, so it's... Okay, of course, can happen. But it's not... I think just the thing is that for 3-0, you know, you just have to play very fast. But for 5-0, you still need to play good and fast. And that's like... The, to find the balance is quite hard. Any key moments of the match other than the, than the mutual flagging? Sam, you took control with the three wins in a row there in the, in the middle. And then did you feel like... Things are going well, or you just keep making. Yeah, I mean, uh, the third game, I, I I took rook takes b seven. I don't know if you saw that game. I just blundered the two movers. Saw them all. Yeah, that was that was confusing. We weren't sure if it was prep because the computer kept jumping around a bit. Here, I was quite happy for black. Then after queen, I've seen seven. something similar, but no, it was not. It wasn't prep. Uh, yeah, rook takes b seven, queen b seven. I just blundered knight d six, knight f six. Yeah, yeah, because you're threatening queen e eight mate as well, but knight f six somehow. Yeah, there's six stops every time. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but yeah, this position should be completely winning. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I was lucky to win this, but then... Yeah, yeah. Uh, then the critical game was probably game six. Uh, I was completely lost, and somehow, yeah. even I was like 40 seconds behind two. Yeah, this game, yeah. Uh, when I escaped this game, I started feeling very good. Oh, yeah, this was such a nice position for White, yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> Bishop eight, yeah. Things escalated. Rook c6, best move. It's oh, so ridiculous nice. to watch a computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah, but yeah, what I got in the game also. But yeah, just you run away with the king, and then suddenly the like the pass pawn is running, and it's not so easy with being low on time. Yeah, because of course the position should still be winning. I mean, there's. No, oh, yeah, then things things got out of hand. Vincent, is this uh, is this very depressing for you to have to leave the prestigious Mr. Dodge Invitational so early? Or will you be okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll be okay. I mean, of course, it's always sad to lose a match, but okay, it can happen. Yeah, and that's also, I think, was at least a fighting match, so it's not like I went down without a fight, and then it's okay. Yeah, we enjoyed watching the match. It was very fun. It's one of the most closest matches we I enjoyed it. Anish enjoyed it. That's yeah, the I main mean, thing. But 5 plus 0 is generally a fun time control to play. Uh... It's Don't Jan's time more. control. Jan's favorite time control. Nothing to do with me. I, I can be blamed for the rest of the nonsense, but the time control is all Jan. That's true. Back in the days when I had stuff to say, I said, no, none of this increment. Let's play some 5 0. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vincent can very much blame me for, for all the. No, okay, why to blame you? I also won positions due to the time. So it's That's true. It was part of the game. And I think it's interesting. I mean, I also play a lot of 3 0s and bullets. So it's not like I believe it's bad. Yeah, I think it's an interesting format. All right, a lot more of this interesting format to come. Thank you so much to Vincent Keimer and Sam Savian. Sam, we'll see you in the quarterfinals. Who are you playing? Do you scout already? Uh, the court, the winner of the Corey Van Forest match. Oh, okay, that's uh, yeah. that's the softer side of the bracket. Jordan is not what he used to be. So will be will be fun fun quarterfinals. Best of luck and see you guys soon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Congrats, Sam. Yeah. Okay, we have still have a lot of chess today. Oof, I thought we were done. This was the no. only match I want to see, the camera match. Yeah, I was actually wanted to join for the Grishuk match. Oh, but then I was afraid yeah. it might clash with my food, and <laughs> I still prefer food over a Grishuk match. Maybe eating during the Grishuk match, like while watching the Grishuk match, is a sweet spot. I have to say that this finally he got access to that F5 square after many different. Is this attempts. still the same game we, we did yeah, a three-hour yeah, interview? Like, it's, it's frozen. That, that... <laughs> they kept playing many games that are from this opening, and this is ah, one of them. Okay. This is their debate. But here he got everything he's ever wanted. So they're tied at 5-5 five, five now? Whoa. No, it's actually the closest match. We could have an Armageddon. It's a must-win game for Tsupi. So, how over. did you invite the players this time? Because back in the day, it was very simple. You invited everybody you liked and me. And now, like, what was the <laughs> <laughs> what was the point? <laughs> um, there's a, a variety of different ways to pick people. You wanted to like you have some geographic like uh... because I know some organizers. You know, they have like big businesses in different countries. And mm -hmm. then they uh, invite people from these countries. Yeah, my my main uh, the main area I have a lot of business in is India, and I spectacularly failed to can recruit many Indian players this year. So I've disappointed the fans; they're very upset at me. Adiban played in the qualifier, but oh, yeah, Adiban was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this uh, Tata Steel India thing, and ah, yeah, yeah. the course. guys getting to the final of the World Team Championship it was they sabotaged me. Sounds like excuses. We've all seen your your cricket tweets. Like, don't be, don't play the victim. No. <laughs> yeah, I think I may have had to try and recruit some cricket players. No, I think nobody just wants to do anything with Mr. Dodge. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, uh, so like receiving email. Yeah, so dear, you know, Mr. Dumarajo, you know, we've kind regards to Mr. Dodge, and then they're like, is that the guy from this cricket tweets? Like, better, better not reply. <laughs> to the they know. Word, word is up. <laughs>
<laughs> better mm. not to engage with this suspicious. Yeah, you just true. resigned here. Yeah, so understand. I just went down the the rain list and like picked people out. We had some qualifiers. I thought I would, you know, embrace democracy. Mm. Let people qualify. Mm. So Andrew who was, Tang who was qualified from these qualifiers, by the way. Andrew Tang and Mohammed Muradli qualified, and also Paravian and Grachev, but they got knocked out in the preliminary. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, quite strong players. I would have invited Andrew Tang anyway, to be honest, but he they, then he qualified, so he yeah, he's uh, twice. Usually not playing such slow, slow chess, but I guess the fact that there is no increment kind of still lures him in. Mm -hmm. Do you think we should let him berserk? He gets an extra point in the match. <laughs> yes. And you should stop commentating when he plays and just switch on the Komarov bot. That's a good idea. Very unhappy. They're like, they're ah, like, where is our commentator? This is these guys are too boring. <laughs> <laughs> they don't provide enough insights. Good point. <laughs> because the bot is, you know, it keeps uh, it keeps the party going always. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad commentator at all, that bot. <laughs> Does he use it on his own channel as well? Like uh, that's the thing. On his own channel, yeah, yeah. Of course, <laughs> that's the only thing that he has. Yeah. Ah, yeah, oh, okay, excellent. <laughs> Yes, yes. No, his own channel is only him playing boot, and he also and he also has that thing where he replies to some chat that like nobody. I, I don't know. I think nobody reads that, and it's very strange. So he gives this like one to words reply, and at the same time he does his mouse thing, yeah, where he is uh, doing the hyper bullet. Then he's like, yeah, he certainly will. And then you don't know what like what who will <laughs> who certainly what will, and then. Uh, my cat, and some, some very random, you know, some stuff I don't know, like about things nobody understands, but it's a good, good stream. And he's oh, got Komarov commentary. And his mouse sent Komarov to the talking mill, that's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think the, the mouse speaks for itself, yes. Mouse speaks for itself. Rook C8. I saw some videos, I think they're old videos of. Andrew Tang teaming up with Neiman before everything happened. They were yeah, teaming they up were for like, content, yeah, like, they were like playing table group. tennis and having breakfast and like playing blindfold chess. Looked like they've built some content partnership with them. Yeah, I think they're like they partner. could could have been like similar. I don't know their age, but they could have known each other for a long time. I I, I think at some point they were like in the same room and stuff uh, on, on during streams. Uh, I, I remember even watching that. Yeah, it was good stuff. But in fact, many people know it's not like Hans, uh, you know, is appeared out of nowhere. Like many, people, like I was in San Francisco, and uh, I was at this mechanics club, uh, mechanics institute is called, which is a very big chess club. And you know, people there they they know him since he's a kid. And like, it's not like for many people he's just appeared, big Magnus, and disappeared. But actually, he has existed for many years as a kind of pretty known. No, player. of course. Also, if your people are saying is a late bloomer, but if you're a 17 year old 2700 player, you will probably have been around chess for for a couple of years. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's not. Uh, he's really not entirely uh, random. Yeah, he's, I mean, the people who know him since he's a kid, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, he's been pretty well known online. I think for a few years at least. But that's already quite recent. Uh, let's say. But I, of course, know him since uh, all this kind of streaming stuff. Yeah, like he was a social streamer. Mm -hmm. But even before that, so um, since he's small, like pe there are people in the US, just that he's American. So, of course, in the US, they have their own scene, yeah, like different different tournaments and so on. But uh, Americans, they know him. Like he is not, uh, Norwegians maybe don't, but Americans, they know that he existed. Sure. I think and Norwegians know him now. Maybe Dutch know him as well. No, didn't he live in the Netherlands? No, I think we need we need some I research. Know him. I think that <laughs> Dutch don't even know the Dutch. So, fair enough. But we need some research into his cycling. Career. Yeah, I read, I read, I read that it's okay. <laughs> you also read, yeah. It's, uh, it seems disputed if he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Top cyclist. There seems to be some uh, fishy stuff going with the cycling. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, but okay, let's. Yeah, Norwegian lawyers allegedly, like to... allegedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um... Norwegian lawyers will do that. You know that. You know the the offendant has, has dabbled in. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this? Uh, if Louis wins this, which he which he will, uh, Louis it's... PS, uh, what will what will be with the um, with the Armageddon? Sport? Armageddon, it is. Yeah. Oof. The first first one ever. Wow. 
What were the Armageddon rules? Just 5-4 or do you have a complicated bidding process? Just 5-4, I think. Sounds good. As long as there's no increment of the move 60 or whatever. Why should that be? It's not in the spirit. Yeah, this game is just uh, agony. Yeah. It went uh, south. Okay, at some point he lost an exchange, yeah? But then still it was not clear, I think. No, the computer was still showing zeros after this. Yeah, there was some compensation. Oh, yeah, yeah, business. this G5 was not... The exchange was not uh, very clear. He had very beautiful knights on C4 and potentially D5, and then this G5 was maybe desperate, yeah? Too desperate. Yeah, pushed too hard. This E5 move is pretty, yeah? Instead. Okay, this is kind of positional, but also the E5 is nice tactical idea. Yeah, like just in good shape. But he lost. So Armageddon. Wow, the tension must be unbearable for the players. So I think Carol gets white. Do you just decide or is there some? <laughs> <laughs> I think the higher rated player gets white. I don't know oh, if okay. that's fair, but it's all right. Gets Any white or gets to decide? Uh, they get white. That's. Wait, so higher rated player just gets white in Armageddon? Mm -hmm. Those are the rules. That sounds really strange. Where, where we get to the AGI3, you can... Okay. Okay. You can no, because in my, you know, in, <laughs> yeah, in uh, AGI3, yeah. No, I have what, to why is, why is there no Anishkiri Invitational? Because it's like someone must have asked you at some point. Um, well, for me, every tournament I'm invited to is an Anishkiri Invitational. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't, uh, you know... Who I'm would you have in your, your like your I'm dream giving. tournament? Who would you have in your dream tournament? You could play in it as well, but like who would you be mm. your perfect field? Uh wow. Yeah, I haven't thought about it. Like uh one day, of course, I'll probably organize a tournament. Nah, be... you just like come up with ideas and hand it over to other people. Smarter oh, people. Like that. Yeah, just you mean to use my big famous name. So yeah. Dodge is applying for running the Anish Giri invitation. No, no, I'm not the smarter people, like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I once had an idea to to do some kind of tournament where you don't see the opponent or something like that. It was long, many. Yeah, we call it the Mystery Blitz Halloween. Uh, sort of actually, but yeah, it was actually very similar to that. It was before that tournament, obviously. So it's... oh, of course. Yeah. No, but it would uh, be interesting just to have a regular super tournament, but no one knows whom they are playing, like because it could affect. Results, yeah, I wanted to do it a bit so more full fledged than the uh, the Halloween, and mm -hmm. I didn't know about the Halloween because it didn't exist yet. And of course, there was no need to have the masks and all this nonsense. Um, because now it's more like you know, the player who gets more oxygen gets to live, and uh, and the others are suffering. But yeah, I had like the entire I had something I was thinking about it, so I had like a whole thing worked out, you know, like even the way the fans would be able to engage with it. You would have like all this guessing stuff. Like at some point I had it all worked out. Hang on a minute. You said you hadn't thought about this and now you're like, no, no, I have the whole format. <laughs> no, at some point I had it like... There I have was the that... regulation. Yeah, at some point I took a walk. I was like walking and on that walk, I just thought out the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And I had lots of uh, thoughts, but now I've already forgot about them. <laughs> Fair enough. Sounds relatable. But then I heard this also some League of Legends or some other game, like some game, probably League of Legends, yes. They, they did something like that. There's also this TV show, said, The Masked Singer, where you have to guess which celebrity is on <laughs> the, the Masked Mask. Singer. Yes, yes, exactly. So such. I think they was... do it in like Age of Empires as well. Ah, maybe that was the one. Yeah. Anyway, for me, they're all the same, all these games. Um... Mm. I'm going to need a link to the Armageddon if there's a new. Link to it? No, it appeared. It appeared. All good. Okay. Never okay, mind. So white uh, is to win, yeah? Yep. Those are the rules. E4 by Shevchenko. And by had... the way, what was also interesting is I don't remember if they did it or... Oh, I think they didn't do it, but I heard this idea. It's not mine. Uh, to do like an Armageddon tournament. So you, you play only Armageddons. But you, you just you just play many rounds. But just that every round is an Armageddon. But that's Norway chess, no? You just have to get make the draw ah, before. Yeah, actually, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's actually true. I mean, yeah, by now everything's been you know invented. Mm -hmm. The wheels, the wheels have been invented. 
Yeah, but I like this. Also, it probably exists, but in chess, we're so bad at like keeping stats. We need some statistics on Armageddon's. Does white actually score better than black with 5-4, no increment, with increment? Has anybody ever done this? I still haven't seen it. And no, we don't have the stats. We also have a little bit of a sloppy, uh, color. like some other sports, they have clear, you know, like they have some uh, whatever, yeah, the organizations. Okay, we have like the tour, let's say, but we have like many things running parallel to each other, which is a little, very little unorganized in that. Like, we have everything worked out and suddenly like Mr. Doji comes with the tournament and everybody's like, okay, what the hell is that? Yeah, it's different websites, different organizers, different time, yeah, controls. time controls. It's hard yeah, to keep yeah, track. Exactly. Yeah? It's, it's like all to, it's as if we just started and at some point we're going to find the order, except that, oh, Bishop E3 is kind of really not how you treat. If, it'd be good time. if there was some kind of centralized organization that yeah. ran all this stuff. Like in he's, boxing. Uh-huh. He's mm. trying to play Queen of Three against Time Out, but the Knight is not on C6. That is crazy. <laughs> you cannot do that, can you? Or it's not so bad. B5 looks like. Oh, but Bishop E3, okay, but knight, we move Queen F3, no, especially. I mean, that this. is really sick. Like, he's like Time Manov, but it's not the Knight on C6. That cannot be good. This is insane. B5 will punish him. It's horrible, actually. Wow. Oof, this is really bad, yeah. That's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> wow. It's just losing a yeah, point. He's trying to justify sure. it, but it's really not, uh, not uh, working here. Unbelievable, actually. Knight h5, not such an easy move, but here it is. Yeah, but it was a easy move to win the pawn. And if queen g5, just g6. I think stuff can happen, yeah? You just go like queen h3 and long castle, or queen g4 and long castle, and then you just play, and you just, uh, something can happen in a blitz game sure. with so much tension. So much on the line, yeah, also. Mr. Doji Championship is on the line. The picture on, on the horse. Uh, Big prize fund. How many prizes are there, Mr. Dodger? One in the top 16 gets a prize. 16, yeah? Yeah. But mm-hmm. they don't all get a picture. I was thinking of printing off like smaller and smaller pictures for each prize, but <laughs> ah, I didn't have enough time. But with all these stars and these massive prize funds, can you still like pretend to be a fun, independent... Like um, tournament, or is this? Do you have to admit this is just corporate to pluck Anisha's chessable courses at some point? Uh-huh. Are you saying because Magnus has played this year, like it's turned it into something too serious? Are you saying Not it's just... Magnus's fault? No, I'm saying it's your fault. Oh, uh, the, nah. the ice farm gets too got too big. The fields get too big. Like yeah, no, but that's the thing. Like, okay, first of all, the game is really exciting, but on, on that point, it's typical. Yeah, like you start off, you know, like the guy who is, you know, thrashing all the all the other guys, and then you turn into that same. It's the exactly. same, yeah. It's like in the rap and so on. You either yeah, I mean, die it, a hero or you live long enough to become the villain. Exactly. This all this all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like that with all tournament organizers. Like you know, Mike Van Z when he organized his first tournament. <laughs> Like he just did it for fun and they thought it would be a laugh and then it turned into something much bigger. Exactly. No, no, his name is Jeroen van den Berg. He started organizing. <laughs> <laughs> Shevchenko is better, by the way, no? Like apparently. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like at some point at this 94, he had to go queen e5 and sacrifice the exchange, according to the computer here. But this was not so obvious. He got greedy there. He. You yeah, yeah, he should have right. sacrificed the exchange. But it was not. He didn't want to give material, you know? It's understandable. So, yeah, the bishop maybe was half trapped there. But... Oof, F6. Oof. At the times, though, the clocks are um, almost even. So it's really unclear what's going to happen. Bishop E2 also not the best move. So position is getting, again, very unclear. King comes. Connect four. He's already winning. <laughs> it's always beautiful when you've got this bishop on C6 and pawn on D7. You've got like this kind of you're playing around. Feels nice, no? Yeah, yeah. It's the only reason to play the time off. You can have this bishop here and still a pawn here. It feels beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. And this far advanced deep pawn, like your all your pieces are going to be around. And at some point, there's going to be piece on e6 as well appearing, and it's going to be all nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the flex position plays itself. The Trent is Supi's friend as well. Yeah. 
Things are looking up. Are the other matches starting, by the way, or are they waiting? They're just starting. Pichot and Muratli, they're playing all right. Don't you left? What is going on here? <laughs> could be just He's a leaving break. in the middle of the Armageddon? Could be a bathroom break, could be something more. <laughs> <laughs> this could be. <laughs> could be anything. I shouldn't have said that about him selling out and no longer being in a better yeah, tournament. I think that he could, just, he he just, could just He could also <laughs> yeah. just go, have gone to PP. Yeah? I mean, you never know. It's just don't exaggerate. Don't know. Yeah. We'll keep track. H5 yeah. on the board. Yeah, Supi is cruising. Yeah. You just yeah. take and then you open stuff. Take yeah. and before yeah. is uh, okay. It's hard maybe to take because your knight is very pretty. Yeah, it's true. Didn't Queen A four is very cryptic. Uh, maybe once no, there's a three. Think you won. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. With the four. To go back. Gaining some time there on the queen. So no, this game is going to be. I mean, the Armageddon's there are always many twists and turns until it's decided. And I think this one it's gonna go to the wire, the time control, time scramble, and you know blunders. Bishop that. D two. Queen can go back. Bishop C three, Queen D two. Like it's white is stable enough, I think, to for it to be decided in time scramble. But he will have all the pretty pieces. Rook on E six, like you said. Bishop on C six. Yeah, Rook on E six. The king uh, is uh, still yeah. a little bit weak. The black king. Yeah, it's, the CH4 H4, is coming for him. Okay, it's coming okay, for the king. Okay. F3 no, B4. Oh, rook at 4. 4, okay, okay. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming for the king. Yeah, then just queen d2, the dark squares. You see the dark squares there on the right? Rook e1, f3, rook e7. I think white will win this game. Easier to play for white. Yeah, yeah. And he has 10 more seconds. Why are people saying I left? I didn't go anywhere. Huh? Somehow, yeah, so Queen A2, but there's nothing. Rookie one, there's no nothing. Queen A1, King to two. Queen two was too much. Now yeah, it's yeah. collapsing. The trend is now Kirill's friend. And you you called it early. This subtle change we were witnessing. Oof, that must be a heartbreak for Supi. Armageddon has a good position, but Kirill. But Kirill, you know, he's he's coming for that. Uh... For the picture, I mean, he's he's got his eyes on the he picture. He wants a picture. Eyes on the prize. Who can blame him? You could blunder this F three thing, yeah. F three G F G F Bishop F three. You can blunder that. He's he on his it? way. Blunder yep. it, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's super deep. Okay, but uh, black like, doesn't see it either. I mean, it's not easy, but. Uh, you have to see it, of course. If you, you know, if you want to be worthy of the picture, you have to see it. Are there in the regulations in the 55 page contract the players get? Is it specified um, in checkmate. what form they can get the picture? While it is checkmate, why is Kirill so upset? He won. Oh. Kirill. He's celebrating. Uh, or maybe it's he's just celebrating. Must be a big relief. It's just people, you know, when such big things happen in their life, sometimes they, the emotions, they just, it's all the same, you know, at the end of the day, when you get emotional, the happiness, the sadness, it's all blends in. Yeah. Novitsky was crying in the locker room after he won. It's what I mean. Championship. Yeah, it's what it's I mean. True. You just need a victory large enough. And uh, the emotions just flow in. Okay, guys, it's been a pleasure. Oh, I was also going to excuse myself. I need to run to the bathroom. So we leave Dodgy alone with the players. Oh, yeah, nice. Thank you. Fine. Thanks for that. That's Excellent good. timing. Nice. <laughs> okay, Anish, before you go, yeah? before you go, you. like, I know you do have a busy schedule. So, like, what are you up to next? Before you um, run away. Because I know you're actually playing some chess. Oh, chess yeah, yeah. I heard uh, you're playing, going to play some chess. Anyway, I got to... I'm going to play uh, Nihal Sarin in the Speech Championship. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to play in the Danjao tournament online. Okay, is that a super tournament? Or? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, it depends if I win it. If I win it, it's not going to be a super tournament anymore. But right now, they're still hopeful. And uh, otherwise, yeah, I think World Rapid and Blitz in the great city yep. of Almaty. Mm -hmm. And then, the, you know, this Vikan Zay. That is, I guess, we can, I think everyone agrees that is a super tournament. Yeah, but again, 
it, I, I still believe that one day it's not no longer going to be, but for now, yes. It's super tournament. <laughs> it's more super than usual, I think. Next year, it looks... It's a kind of a crazy field, I think. Yeah, I think the youngsters are still... Uh, yeah, you know that they're still very cheap, but already very strong. Mm -hmm. So it was possible to collect all of them. Yeah, which you usually know, is not like you cannot afford to have so many like fourteen top players. You would go bankrupt. But in this case, yeah, could you not have got the organizers to like you know give you a bit of a break? But they don't. No, I don't think side. I don't think they're helping you too much. That's the like... problem. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're they're not not on my team. Yeah, well, not like you, not like you anyway. So I'm always on your team. You you used to be, but this I year you know I smelled I smelled the something I smelled it like I felt that something is off. <laughs> I'm glad I jumped I jumped from this train that was crashing into into the abyss. Yeah, you have a much better sense of what's happening than I do. That's for sure. <laughs> no, but I like I have the sixth sense you know that tells me like sometimes you have to like you have to run. Nobody knows why, and I just run, and then I see like everybody sees why. <laughs> <laughs> Good sense of danger. That's that's fair enough. Okay, well, I don't have control over the mouse, so I don't some I game to... started. Alan Pichot played against Mohamed Muradli. Like, how is possible? Yeah, this More... is the next match. It started it's like at seven. Uh, it's flowing. Yeah, like it's beautiful. Your tournament is flowing. flowing. Yeah, we have no breaks. It's just nonstop chess. We've got Grishchuk in an hour, and then at nine thirty. We've got it's your friend. It's an incredible Fjord. tournament. Like Grishchuk, he lost to Dingliren yesterday, and yet he's still here. I mean, like, what more can you wish for? Because that was his warm-up match yesterday. He was yeah, just yeah. playing a training match against Ding and some some kind of speed chess championship. I don't know. I'm not but, familiar but with it. But that's the beauty of the Nisodoji Invitational. You can lose to Ding and still still compete in the knockout tournament. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you watch any of the of Muradley destroying the people in the preliminaries? Uh, he's crushed no, everyone. To be honest, I remember, like, I don't even know exactly him, but I he's one of these. There are a few young Azeri, like there used to be some Azeri accounts on chess.com that were very strong mm -hmm. playing Bullet. Maybe there are more than one. I like for it's blur, it's all a blur for me. Like there was some guy who played Hikaru, not so bad, even. I suspect mm -hmm. he was one of them or he was the one, I don't know. But I somehow never uh, never got to meet him or see him anywhere. But uh, he's uh, probably one of those uh, players who's, you know, learned so much from playing online. Yeah. It's crushing people now. Like you have also, for example, this player, uh, Petrosian. No, Petrosian is another one. Mm. There are many Petrosians. <laughs> there are many. There is the world champion, then there is the one from Reddit, and there is also <laughs> another one. <laughs> um, yeah, there's uh, Armenian players. Some of them are like also very strong. Yeah, there's a lot of Petrosians. Yeah. yeah. Very popular name. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of Azeri and uh, Armenian players uh, playing online. Some of them are very, very strong. The young generation, this... especially, I think, is uh, looking quite uh, quite promising. And the old generation. Okay, old generation also good, yeah. Uh, like Mamedov's, Mamedyarov's. Mamedov won yesterday against Lagarde. Lagarde is also living up to his name, yeah, slowly but surely. By losing or what? <laughs> no, I mean, he, he got there. He got this yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty close match. Coming out of the shadow of uh, Maxima Shilagraf. I think he would have to win this tournament to fully escape from the shadow, but yeah. He tries. Maybe next That's year. True. Yeah, but now already people, you know, they discover that he's a different guy than, than Maxima Shilagraf. And it's not just the, you know, that you forgot the the middle name. Ah, Jan's back. The jacket on. What did I miss? Yeah, I always dress up for the second match. Uh, Mr. Doji was like, you know, he, <laughs> he's like these kids, yeah, when the, who don't want to be left alone. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't have control of the mouse, so like so I can made do up, anything. He made up some question for me. Oh, this, by the way, checkmate. This is beautiful. Oops, it's this so looks pure. bad. This is very pure, I must say. How did it happen? Yeah, this uh, E3, 9G2, whenever you get D4, E4, that's always... And G, I mean G3 and E3, 9G2, that's kind of a shady combination. Hmm. And Queen C2, also not helpful to Suspect have. Suspect structure. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh wow, just it got just so brutally. Yeah, no, you can still see the youngsters, you know, the sometimes lacking some basic uh, you know, principles. Yeah, that was not a good game. It's 2 0 already. Pichot crushing it. Yeah, Alan Pichot, by the way, he is a very strong player. I think if he's confident, he's very strong. And he's probably confident against Mohamed Muradli. I remember he struggled in the Champions Tour because he was very, I think he was very impressed with his opponents. They broke him at some point, yeah, maybe it was. A yeah, yeah. Gunshot, but, but then I played player, him at some point uh, online and I was anonymous. He was a different man. Like, he was very fast and very strong. And, and I did okay, but like, he was a very different player than the one I played in, in the tour, let's say. Do you feel it's a thing if you're a a big name that people might play worse against you because they're not used to it, but some, if they yeah, have yeah. Some, some, some online some games and they don't know? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it works like even for me as well. I also play worse against big names sometimes. But it's definitely for some players, it's crucial. Like their level drops so much if they play someone they're afraid of. Yeah. But this was the same, I think, with Salem yesterday because Magnus said afterwards that he was losing to him online on a different account. And I guess Magnus was anonymous on the, the different account. Yeah, or it could also be that some sometimes with uh, like Magnus's and Salem's levels, they fluctuate a lot. And I think they're both very streaky. So I imagine that if Magnus tilts and Salem is on fire, then it's not going to be easy. But if Magnus is on fire and Salem tilts, it's also not going to be easy. So I think maybe they've had just a very different match. I'm not sure that I think Salem knew that he played Magnus the other day as well. But just okay. he was just, you know, okay, you win a game already, you feel much better. And he just never got going. Blitz is so much about runs for me. It's not that much about the opponent. Okay. Everybody's stronger than me, but uh, even if I play someone weak, if I just win games, I'll keep winning. But if I start losing a game or two, they catch some confidence and all of a sudden it's completely different. Yeah, yeah it, it also works both ways. Yeah, like you, you get weaker, they get stronger. Yeah. It's, it's like... Yeah, after this game, we don't get any more games. Yeah, this is the most... They this, both like, left, I, think yeah? the tournament <laughs> peaked, I think the tournament peaked. No. Like, this position is just the end. Yeah, they're having a sharp break already. <laughs> I don't know who asked for the break, but... It's too early to ask for the, the You know, you like in the NBA, yeah? There's this timeout. Like, yeah, yeah. Why, why is the coach the coach is like, okay, guys, timeout. 10 <laughs> seconds in. Like, like, you don't yeah. play G3 and E3 at once. <laughs> we learned nothing. Kim Sudoji, all the best, yeah? Uh, okay, thank you very same, much yeah? for joining us today, yeah, Anish. Yeah. Yeah, Hopefully you'll forward. be back to play next year. Yeah, I yeah. Don't think you don't think you because you skipped one year that I will stop like DMing you for the. No, it's all good. And the rest uh, you of know, the year, I, like... I just hope you won't forget about the uh, Amazon gift card because uh, <laughs> I don't see. <laughs> I don't I'll see. Send, I'll, I'll, I'll get them to send you a new AirThings device. No, no, no. I already have like three. It's fine. <laughs> stop, stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I have like everywhere, wherever I look, there is too much CO2. Like, stop. <laughs> it's, it's enough. Also, the Amazon yeah. gift card is much more valuable during Black Friday week. So, you should get it to Anish early. No, <laughs> no I'm pretty sure the Amazon gift card is worth a lot uh, somehow. Ah, Black Friday week is over now. So, we'll have to save it for next year. No, I bought an electric <laughs> toothbrush today for, for 39 <laughs> instead of 69. Bargain. <laughs> Imagine you buy electric brush for 69. That's really, really not a good idea. No, that was, <laughs> a, that was a cheap one. No, no, no. Like I paid like yeah, 200 yeah, for, for my 39 is one. much better. Yeah. Cheap <laughs> okay, guys. See you. Huh? Bye. Okay. Thanks yeah. for joining us, Anish. Bye. What now? More chess. It's just one one match? Yeah, we just have one match now. And then there or, are two at 9.30, but I can't do those. Do you have any no, commentators? No. no, no. We have one at eight. Oof. Gr Grishuk starts at eight. Okay. I can stick around for Grishuk, but not for any later action. Well, Peter is going to join at eight. Okay, excellent. Then I won't stick around for Grishuk. <laughs> you can stick around as long as you want, Bob. No, no, no. I have a lot of stuff to do. I have to, I have to learn this game called Tactics Ogre. I don't think you should be plugging your other sponsored content on this stream. I feel that's, that's fair. inappropriate. Unless <laughs> I have to eat dinner. Unless it's you know a very specific sponsor. Mm -hmm. Then you can talk about them as much as you want. Mm -hmm. I will we'll talk about them for like 12 minutes tomorrow. <laughs>
<laughs> should we get it's gonna Peter, be fun. Should we get Peter Heine to join for commentary at some point and we can only if he's willing to to tell us his progress. <laughs> mm. I had a very sad thing happening to me on my way back from Bundesliga. A drink spilled in my backpack. And I had my new Manscaped back in that same backpack. Oh, no. So it, so it got all messed up. And I had to clean it. But it's it's still alive. It's all good. The yeah. lawnmower 4.0 is still working fine. So It should be. It's it was an anxious moment. Exactly, exactly. But I wasn't bored. It was like all kinds of sticky substances. I'm what can you tell us about? Yeah, it was tough. About Mohamed Muratli. Um, he won. The, no, he came second in the Lee Chess qualifier. To in the preliminary, ahead of everybody else. A lot Let's of start with the basics. He's a young Azeri player. He's nineteen years old. Okay, that's young in my book. It's pretty young. He and played he's... in seat just last year. Mm-hmm. So we can talk about CHS. No. Um, yeah, I don't know him too well. I don't know too much about him. Me neither, but I heard he's a very strong blitz player. He's he's doing well in this game. White doesn't really have any initiative on the king's side. And the future is blacks on the queen's side. Even the end games look nice. Nope, no end games. He covers the eight square, goes king f7. Now he will go a6. And maybe he doesn't want to. I think he will go a6. Push b5, and if b4, there's knight c4. Looks very nice for black. Mm -hmm. But he is two games down, so he's he needs to win. <laughs> He needs to win this one. He played a6. He shot also slightly behind on the clock. Mm -hmm. I met Pete Schott in Madrid in whenever it was July, June. Nice guy. Why was he in Madrid? I'm not sure. There was the, the candidates happening. I'm not sure. I think he was just hanging out. Maybe he was doing commentary in Spanish or something. Possibly. 21. What else do you know about Alan Pichot? That's pretty much it. Seemed, seemed nice. I wasn't sure what he looked like, so I was in the in the flat of our friend David Martinez, where everybody hangs out in Madrid. And there was some guy lying on the couch, and I just walked by, and I didn't say hi, because I wasn't sure if it was a roommate or a chess player and so on. But then I found out it was a lumpy shot. But I said hi later. Mm -hmm. So you don't say hi to people unless they're a chess player? or Because I thought Is it might be a master? Uh, do they need the Grandmaster title? To no! To First of all, I'm awkward around people. And secondly, I thought it might just be a roommate who's living on that couch in the living room. And I didn't want to want to bother him. So I was just trying to be very quiet. But I learned, I learned later on that was him. Fair enough. I'm not sure that story adds a lot of insights into Pichot. He's from Argentina. He's good mm -hmm. at chess. That's pretty good? much my knowledge. Yeah, this is not the hmm, the match where we know the players too very too well. Unlike the other matches where we're just dropping fun facts left and right about Supi and Shevchenko. Or like Sam Sam broke the king. Mm. There we know. Vincent was German. I think he still is. Still German. Mm -hmm. He's not representing the USA yet. 
B4. Still looks nice for black. Why is it stupid bishop? Radley will keep the queens on the board, so he does it. Do we start doing more research for the players? Or are we okay now? Because half of them have been knocked out anyway. Yeah, I think if someone is likely to get knocked out, it uh, doesn't make sense to do any research. But if they're favorite, then we can use it in more than one round, then we, we should do some. Okay, so we should research Ralph. Yeah, but Ralph, Daniel. we know we know everything about Daniel as well. Jordan? Mm -hmm. Jordan, I know too much. Most of it I can't say on air. He did remember that he had a flight yesterday, um, very close to this, the time of the flight. Which Did he make the flight? I believe he made the flight, but he didn't make the match that he was supposed to play yesterday, which is okay. why he's playing at 9.30 tonight. But we still don't know from where to where he flew. We don't know where he lives. Oh, D5! Finally, Pichot Boom. breaks this light square blockade and looks like the black position might be falling apart. Queen d8, queen f6 is there. Queen can come around here. No, white is just winning now. Oof. That's, that's going to be a rough one to come back from. Mm -hmm. You were right about Vincent as well. Like I didn't want to call it then, but Vincent also didn't come back from this heartbreak. Elyanov and now Muratli. It's going to be 3-0 with hurt feelings. Mm -hmm. I would win this with 35 seconds. It's usually a good indicator. But when it's time to resign, and he does resign. That's it. 3 0. Wow. Pichot is drinking some yellow substance and Muratli looks upset, understandably. It's the first 3 0 since Magnus. <laughs> we see another 7 0. I doubt it. I doubt it. They're pretty close in ratings. Yeah. I think these are blitz ratings, so. Pichot's higher rated than that, isn't he? And classically, he should be 2600-ish. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, 2637. That's 2600-ish. Where's Muradley? Isn't that like your rating? Are you 2600-ish? <laughs> I'm getting very close to 2600-ish. <laughs> I hope I can be 2600-ish after one more toilet open. But yeah, yeah. That's that used to be my neighbor. Muratli is 2540 in standard. Should be pretty evenly matched, but nah, big shot. Should be a favorite. He's up 3 0 as well. It should help. What's the maths on a 3 0 lead? I would think. In the history of the Mr. Dodge Invitational, no one's ever come back from being down 3-0. So he has a 0% chance of coming back. I think that's true. Simple I don't know if it's true. Castled. I would I have castled here? Like before looks normal. Okay, takes, takes. Black as the bishops should compensate for the missing for the weak pawns. Six. I don't know. I guess you take white, b3, bishop b2. But probably the pawns are too vulnerable for it being anything special. Yeah, computer even says black is slightly better. Queen d7 plate. Who's the winner of this one facing in the quarterfinals? The winner of this one faces, well, I don't want to call it too early, but Grischuk. 
Grisha Kirk. <laughs> it can be under time. Stay tuned for the Grisha match later on. <laughs> no, against Andrew Tang, it might be fun. <laughs> Because Grishuk, I'm not sure if he's a time travel addict in Blitz, probably less so. But you don't want to get down to seconds consistently against Andrew Tang. No, I, I think it'll be a pretty close match. I think Andrew might even be underrated as a Blitz player. Yeah, because he's known as a bullet specialist, but I think that translates well to his Blitz game. And he's not weak in Blitz at all, you know? Especially with I, no increment. I just re found out something controversial. Oh. oh. Something controversial about Anish. Oh. Has he ever been in any controversy? Not that I know of. Um, actually. Yeah. No. I found out. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Anish is incredibly modest. Uh-huh. Because last year he won a match 7-0. And he didn't bring it up. Wow. He probably forgot, is my guess. I think he forgot. <laughs> Whom but did I'm going to say he was just too... He beat Pepe Cuenca 7 0. Oh, poor Pepe. But I think he was just too modest to say. No, I think he forgot. <laughs> well, I'm going to tweet about it and say that he was too modest. Yeah. There was also this... Because this is the only way to get him to play next year, maybe. <laughs> Accusing him of excessive modesty. That should work. Rook I think five. within five minutes, he'll reply and say, I completely forgot. Unless he's watching, and then he'll double bluff me. I don't think he's watching. and Maybe he's at dinner. I'm not sure. But yeah, who doesn't bring their phone and keep Twitter open during dinner? Yeah, I think that's a fair estimate. As for the game, like a stabilized, there was this one tactical chance here, apparently, where White could go e4. If Bishop takes you pin, and White is somewhat better. But after he missed that, Black now has a superior position. Snight is not coming back. These guys are weak. Won't be easy. No, this could be a quick match. Ooh. I need to make sure I type the right hashtag. Hashtags are very important on Twitter. Did you know that? I did hear that. I don't know why. They're not. Does anybody ever search a hashtag? <laughs> no. They're not important. Huh? I can't do chess advice, but I can do Twitter advice. You don't need hashtags. That's great advice. Do I need to tweet a lot? Like That's another term. You should tweet more. Uh. That doesn't have to be a lot. Just a bit more. Yeah, it's fair. When did you last tweet? I don't know. I don't tweet too much. Tonight is gone. And it has a hard time coming out now. trapped by the black pieces not sure how bad it is because if the rook ever moves then the knight can jump back and white construction i'm not sure why i played f5 that was a strange move now it looks sort of stable i wanted to stop e4 okay. wasn't that strange after all so this is this is not over mm. actually it feels easier to play for white Jump. Let me jump some more. Yeah, the time's not low enough for the horse to be better. 
Not yet. But the rook on g8 is also not the prettiest rook anybody's ever seen. Oh, e4? What's going on? Oh, rook d6. Does this work? Bishop takes. You didn't do it. Yeah, it's hard to calculate, but now. Now the rook has open files again. So it's definitely superior to the knight. Until he has less than 20 seconds. Even then. Hmm. But yeah, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on it. G4? Takes what he want, uh, King G5. Nah, Black's going to win this one. It's going to be four. Does feel like it. That be. That be a massive hole. Where are you rooting for? I'm going to root for Maradley now. Uh huh. Because we've got to root for the underdogs. And so you went, you went into it rooting for a pitch shot because we know you're never neutral, but now you're switching. Yeah, pretty much. That's fair. But here, things could still happen. 24 seconds. And the knight is still on the board. In two seconds, it should be stronger than the rook. Yep, there we go. Okay, why well, it's gonna hold this now? Here comes the knight. It's horsing around. Already took a pawn. It's just a better piece, I think. Oh, there we go. Could have taken the rock. It could have taken the rock. It didn't oh. do it. Oh, rook okay. This is clever. this is good flagging oh, clever. From, from black, but. That was solid, but uh, still not a lot of time. The problem is usually when you have more pieces, the pre-moving also gets easier. Mm -hmm. Not for me, but I heard usually. Because you can make the king guess yeah. where it has to go, and at some point you're going to fail. Solid flag technique. Mm -hmm. Keeping the queen far away, but taking some squares. From the king in that corner. Yeah. This was nice. Queen d3, so it can't go here. Queen c3, so it can't go here. That was very, very solid. The trick is a lot of the time you don't check. Yeah, but you should throw in some flag. checks, but usually, yeah, you don't check. Make them guess which square they can go to. Very professional flagging. Yep. Queen c3 Four was zero. Nice Wow. Oof. This might be over in two games. And Muratli, he looks shaken up. Okay, within three minutes of posting the tweet, Anish replied with a poll asking whether it's good manners or his bad memory. I think he has a good memory, though. Yeah, I agree. But I, know, I was going to say something ludicrous that maybe he doesn't consider that MDI win as big an achievement, so it's not high in his memory bank, but no, that sounds unlikely. Well, I mean, he has won two finals, so I... It, That's yeah. true. Maybe he only remembers the finals, not the way. Maybe he only remembers the feeling. Of yeah. Winning, not the details. It's more a vibe to him. Mm. As for the position, looks like Black is doing extremely well here. All his minor piece up plays nicely. Why does the e5 pawn and the dark squid bishop so it potentially blocks him? So black is somewhat better. But that doesn't mean anything just yet. Still, this is Muratli's game. I can feel it. 
This is the comeback. If this is not it, there will be no comeback. Also, he better make his comeback this game or the next. Maybe, maybe they just want to get this match finished so they can watch Gushchuk against Tank. Sounds likely. Maybe, maybe we should ask him that if he's the six zero. That would be a good interview. Might be short and full of explicit words, but those are often the best interviews. Mm-hmm. Rook F E one. Protecting the queen so that after knight b6, Ooh. he can move the rook. Rook a4. b5, blunders rook a4. Pichot is a sharp tactician. Could very well spot that. This just ends the game, picking up picking up the bishop. But you have to think of it. And he does think of it. And Muradley is not happy about this. Pichot with a little fist there. Gonna go up 5 0, feeling himself. It does feel like Muradley is a very streaky player as well. Because he crushed everyone in the preliminaries. I can't say much. Looks like a bad streak today for sure. He will continue the game by piece to piece. So did, did you already decide which players you want back? And more interestingly, which players you, you don't want back? Like, who never gets invited to the MDI again? That is a good question. Let me see. Let me go through the list. So Magnus, obviously, it depends, like, how he does. Yeah. I feel like if he wins, he's not going to come back. That's true. I think getting him to play for a second time, <laughs> if he wins, would be... Um, Maybe even beyond my powers. I don't know. He played a bunch of World Championship matches. Uh. Mm. So Daniel definitely comes back. Yeah. yeah. Daniel gets instant invite. Ralph, instant invite. Mm. I think Supi as well. Okay. I think Supi's been pretty impressive. Like he lost, but it was a very close match. So I think I would invite Supi again. Mm. Chris Chuck. Okay. He's Chris Chuck. Vincent. Yes. Jordan, hmm, this is where it gets tricky now. Yeah. Because he was very... He caused a lot of trouble. Caused some problems. He's making me stay up past my bedtime today, so he's <laughs> kind of on a yellow card. But he has played two editions now, so I think... I can still invite him back as long as his behavior is good. He's on a... Maybe we have him sit out a year to see, like, it's not a given he plays every year. Yeah, maybe. Pichot, teach Pichot, after this game, this match, you know, hard to not invite. I would look like the chicken of the week. Nah, you can still not invite him. Huh? Bader, okay, obviously. Instant invite. Hmm. Adiban, instant invite. Uh, those are you guys. Yep. Salgado, I don't know. He had a good start, but then he collapsed at the end. I should be too mean about people. <laughs> nah, it's fine. It's Maybe. The whole point of the question. Uh-huh. Camille looked up. I don't know if Camille gets to come back. He's peaked. He beat Magnus. Like, what else can he do? Yeah. He would have to win it next year. No, but for him, it's a it's a win win situation. Like, he's not expected to qualify if he picks up some big scalp. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Eric Rosen? Yeah, I think I would find him again. Hugo Ten Hertog, obviously, like someone who spends too much time on Twitter and replies instantly to stuff. All the respect in the world. I wasn't aware of that. That's how he qualified. He was the first Grandmaster to reply to my tweet. Wasn't Peter Heine the first Grandmaster to reply to your tweet? No, that was the first time I did it. 
and then I didn't count him because he mm-hmm. didn't want to play. <laughs> um, and then Romain Edouard was the first one to reply to that tweet, and but then he also couldn't play. Mm. So I did it again, and Hugo was the first one. And then Simon Williams had a pretty tough tournament, but I think he enjoyed himself, so I'd probably invite him back. I think I have to invite Lawrence back as well. Seems very hard not to get invited back. It's, it's a yeah, big old boys I don't want to be mean to people. All the same guys. <laughs> but then a lot of people say no as well. Like people have lives. Also, is yeah, in Bundesliga. Is Pichot messing this up? Nah, does it matter? So it hasn't looked very smooth. Okay, two. Lawrence did finish on two and a half points out of 15. But then after the tournament, he immediately messaged me to say, please invite me back next year. I respect that. He might. That, that's Lawrence in a nutshell. Things might not go well, but he will dust himself off and try again. Yep. Things probably, again, won't go well, but... It's never broken his spirit. Just think where you could be if you had that kind of optimism. <clears throat> I don't know. Vegas, baby. Pichot is losing this. With a piece up. Oof. See, this could turn it around now. This could be... This could be a tilter. Mm-hmm. It was a clean piece. The whole piece. He was celebrating already. Celebrate too early. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of biased towards people who are willing to play in these tournaments, but then also there's people from last year who didn't play this year. What about Nils? Like, did Nils did refuse get... an invite? He's playing Bundesliga. Other people play Bundesliga and they found ways to make it work. He was too busy. Mm-mm. I don't know. Sounds like he, he's not a friend of the tournament. Mm. It's hard to ban Nils. I don't think I could do it. I don't think he would protest that much. Seems easy to ban. This one is over. Okay, Ooh. back in it. That's, that's a tough one. Go all of a sudden for one, you need six and a half points. Like you still gotta play some good games. It's very different than six zero. Yeah. And especially the way it went. Oh Pichot must be feeling the heat a little bit. So they won't finish before the next game, the next match. Oof. They won't escape before Peter gets here. They don't have any chance. So we'll all see each other in in Sitges. It's going to be beautiful. We can like tweet at each other from the same hotel. (laughs) Are we in the same hotel? I don't know. I... I didn't get any information. I'm assuming I'm in whatever it is, the the hotel where stuff is, no? Oh, I've got a nicer hotel. Wow. No, I didn't really. <laughs> it's also a very nice hotel. But... Yeah, I think we'll all be in the same hotel. Hmm. Hopefully in different rooms, though. I haven't had that confirmed yet. <laughs> I'm fairly optimistic about that part. <clears throat> Not so optimistic about Pichot's position here. Takes B3. Knight C3. The structure is better for white. Okay, starts with rook D1. Does that allow any shenanigans? No. Structure is still better. Because this pawn has a grip on the center. Uh oh, imagine Alan lose this game. 
What happened to the cameras, by the way? Yeah, where's Alan gone? Is he disconnected from the Zoom call? Could be. Controversy. Ooh. Is that allowed? No. G5, maybe you can check me again. But there should be something like they're not allowed to press the opponent's clock if they're not invisible in the Zoom call. It's only fair. Hmm. Yeah. There so this this could be where where it goes wrong. You know, you you lose a game, piece up, then you start to have some tech problems. You know, you're trying to fix the Zoom call while you're playing. It gets you get distracted. You get annoyed. Oof. Morelli could be back in it. And he also looks cool, calm, and connected now, and collected. Just connected, connected to the Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. As yeah, so for the structure, yeah, Black got this A4, rook A5, which is nice because you're fixing this B2 pawn and thereby also makes C4 a bit of a weakness. So Pichot improved his position slightly. I can put the queen in the corner. Threaten I take C4, maybe. One day. Doesn't do it. It was 97. Ah, the text. Where is he going? Here? Ah, wow, we have a special guest. Another one today. Wow. Much Hi, Peter. So special. Hey, Jan. How are you doing? Hello. How are mm. you today? Mm. Very productive. Two dog walks in a, a gym. Nice. Yeah. I'm a very, uh, what's the word? Some kind of member of society. Functioning. High functioning, maybe even. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, probably not. Let's not let's not push it that early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I think you can only use high functioning if it's followed by something self. I don't speak English. <laughs> self mocking or yeah, deprecating. I don't know. Normally, you use high functioning for alcoholic. No, I use mm -hmm. high functioning yeah, yeah. alcoholic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was. I was going for the slight incongruity there, but it's a bit too early in the show for incongruities. Too early? The three well, hours it's in. Too late. It's too late. Yeah. We're watching the match between Mohamed Muratli and Alan Pichot. And yeah, we struggled but... a bit filling in the biographical details. So that's where you come in. What can you tell us about Mohamed Muratli? Not very much. I'm I'm aware of him. I uh I've been sort of uh, playing next to him in even online events. And he's also been, I think, part of the uh, Adlar Urdi uh, team that plays the European Club Cup uh, every now and again and doing well for them. But this this generation of, uh, of kids, I generally don't know that well, uh, apart from by reputation. He does seem to be very strong. He absolutely destroyed the group I was playing in. Uh, so I, I looked up, and the score seems to be very heavily in favor of uh, uh, Alain Pichot, which is, I mean, on on yesterday's form, or was it the day before yesterday? Feels slightly surprising, but I guess uh, these sort of heads up matches have their own dynamic. But the trend could be turning because look mm. at Pichot's position in the last game, around move twenty one. Oh, so he, he actually lost nice. this, and he then he went on position. to lose this. Yeah. Mm. So now he might be a little upset. Yeah, you would be. You would be generally a little bit upset if you lost this position. I would say. Yeah, it's. Uh, and he's unusual. probably losing this one, and then all yeah, of a sudden one. it's four two instead of five zero. Yeah, yeah, that could that could be a, an important turning point because yeah, if he wins that one, uh, the previous one, which he would normally do like ninety nine times out of the hundred, 
I'm assuming like this is move 22. He must have been like on two and a half minutes or whatever. Yeah, he had a lot of time. Uh, so yeah. It's difficult not to not to tilt at least a little bit when this happens. Exactly. But yeah, very much in control again. Uh, the, the pawn on h6 is is very annoying. The pawn on b5 is incredibly weak. So, well, not incredibly, but kind of weak combined with like threats along the long diagonal. Yeah. So this seems to be uh, going off the rails a little bit for Alan. Is it Alan or Alan? I keep on I keep on thinking it must be Alan for some reason, but I think it's Alan. Yeah, it's a. This is not a francophone country. I don't know why my mind defaults to our land. No, no, it's uh, very Spanish-speaking. Mm, yeah, just just some kind of a brain brain slug. As so, long as you apologize, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, mm. very important. Rook B seven. Yeah, it's not gonna go well. Well, I mean, they're down to not a lot of time. If black will, okay, but you can actually take, says the machine, because there's queen h4 in the end. But you have to be kind of brave, right, to take that rook. It's a nice bluff or whatever it is. It is a, it is a very normal play you're losing. Yeah. yeah, the problem is, yeah, you can do this, and then you probably win this queen ending reasonably comfortably, because you probably also pick up the d6 pawn if you wanted. Like, takes, takes, queen b7, queen d7 also wins the, the d pawn. Just queen d7 here, yeah. So yeah, that's unfortunate for for Alan. That uh, it, it was a nice practical bluff, but it's not gonna. We assume it's not gonna work too well. No, we've all learned that queen and b and a pawn is often a drop, but it's not queen and b and a and f and g pawn. Yeah, while while there's still stuff on the other side of the board, it yeah. generally isn't a draw. Yeah, it's not. So you need the king here. Yeah, and uh, oh, um, yeah, that probably oh, was last chance. That was probably on purpose, but. You think so? I'm not like against 50 seconds. I don't think these things are on purpose. I think he's nah, just. But it's not like you're winning with uh, non queen d5. <laughs> yeah. Here. Maybe, maybe. Maybe you take the one in a million chance. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I saw you discussing the, the, the interesting point. There was this. Uh, which match was that? One of the earlier ones where you were discussing uh, a completely drawn opposite color bishop ending in which black played f3 check and then did not play two. And I thought yeah. that was that was a that was a cool point to bring up. Yeah, considering it's considering the format. Chimer against seven, I think. It was. Yeah, I think yeah, that was. How did that end, by the way? Because I had to stop watching. Seven and one. Hmm. Yeah. Felt like an interesting little point, specifically in in this you know, in this format where. Although yeah, I'm not sure. Like thinking about it, I think is very. Valid, but the point itself, I'm not so sure because after f3 check and you just played king f3, maybe king e2 is also a likely pre move because you're mm -hmm. sort of expecting that. So I wasn't even sure what the more likely pre move was looking for the game, but I can't find it. It's a bit later, yeah. It's uh, here. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I was here. So yeah. here you go, f3, and I was saying, okay, now you expect king d2, so you pre move bishop c4, so black should try e2. But since you just move the king, sometimes also a reflex to just pre-move it, move mm -hmm. it back. Legal... How did this one? How did this one end? This one was a draw. Uh... Oh no, I mean, uh, no, Kirill, Kirill won in the end, right? Yeah, I, I can actually see it on my screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't Kirill. know why I'm the Armageddon. Mm. Uh, it went to the Armageddon. No? Yeah. Mm. I missed out on a lot of excitement. <sighs> yeah. The great news for you is there's a lot of excitement still to come. Absolutely, yeah, and I had some excitement on the walk as well. Mm. Because uh, Doggo decided to disobey, Ooh. which is always, you know, provides provides what you happened? with some. Did Doggo run off? Did Doggo yeah, he. Someone? I found him some playmates, uh, and then he found some more playmates like half a mile away. <laughs> well, not half Who's... a mile away. Um. Hmm? Who's your dog? Hugh Hefner? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he could be. He is, uh, I, I was going to say he's a very good looking dog, which is true, but then I realized Hugh Hefner not necessarily was a very good looking specimen. So. 
he had other he knew, he knew how to wear a rope <clears throat> yeah he had other other redeeming qualities here does your dog know how to wear a rope he wore a shawl today does it qualify it doesn't exactly qualify as a robe right but it's as close as dogs usually get yeah I, I think a shawl probably probably qualifies as a robe in his life mm. yeah we're we've been completely ignoring this game but yeah I'm, I'm not sure I I like what um, Muhammad has done, but he, I mean, he's still he's still positioned. Position is still completely fine, but it's it's become a lot simpler to play for white. Yeah. Yeah. You now you you absolutely know what you're doing. You're still probably not better, even after you've achieved all that Jan has indicated with arrows. But you probably will achieve that, and then yeah, a game starts of some sort. Feels like D four followed by five is. Even d4 followed by f5, I thought made more sense. Even even as late as then, like knight cb1, and just go, just go f5. Try to challenge yeah, that a looks little. Excellent. Yeah, five knight f6. Well, it still goes f3, I guess. But yeah, we have some squares, and um, felt like it was slightly more dynamic. And I mean, now we have a H5, reasonable more weaknesses. Mm, yeah, I'm I'm not sure I like where this is going for uh, for black. It's a key game. If Pichot wins it, he can say, okay, I stabilized 5 2. So cruising. But if he loses it, 3 4, lost three in a row on tilt, all of a sudden, Muratli might become the favorite. Hmm. Manage 5. Yeah, you kind of want to stop the rod there as, uh, as Alan. I have six knight take a queen g4 or even queen g6. Ah, queen six knight g5 just wins a lot of material. Yeah, and he sees it. This is it. Yeah, he sees it. Yeah, that's like an an exchange and a couple of pawns too. Yeah, I guess he goes queen e8 there, but queen h7 check. I mean, yeah, it's a bit is... unfortunate. Otherwise, queen e8 would have given you. Uh, you would still actually be completely lost because takes takes knight of three also wins very comfortably, but queen h7 wins on the spot. So yeah, too many options. Yeah, he's gone rookie seven. And now I assume we go like queen h7 and f4. <laughs> okay, no. Went out of three. I mean, also also completely fine. Hard to criticize a move like that here. Just completely and utterly winning. Yeah, f4 was for style points, but we want points. We don't care if they're style points or not. <clears throat> we care a little. f4 activates the rook and the bishop. Looks like it's a, bit, it's a bit faster. Yeah, I think f4 is a bit faster if we're looking for the way to conclude the game immediately. And probably f4 does a better job, but hard to imagine him not winning this either. Yeah, knight d6, knight of five, or whatever. Yeah, like any move. By the way, we have liftoff in ah. the game, the match of the tournament so far, question mark. Andrew Tang against Alexander Grishuk. Has just begun. Yeah. And I what's, think. What's happened here? Is it a minute down? Well, it's Krishuk. What, what are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> Very fair point. He's thought yeah. about what to play. <laughs> yeah. And he's been doing this thing quite a bit, actually. Yeah. The, the He does some kind of a really strange pawn sacrifice line in uh, he, like B5 and then like. White make makes a move here like queen two and he plays b5, yeah. B5 and then c6 and d5. I've seen him do this a bunch of times, and it looks like it cannot possibly work, but I think they, they played this like they had a whole match of this against Duda, I think, one time. No, no, not d5, e5. Yeah. Well, computer says black is better, right? <laughs> yeah, and the, the first time I've seen this, I thought, okay, but like what where is your compensation? Why is this supposed to be any good at all? Because you're not threatening anything. I will eventually develop. But yeah, the machine already says black is entirely fine. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Andrew shows that he's probably seen this before and ignores it altogether. Goes knight g three, to which Sasha. You mean, you mean b five is seen, yeah? mm. not b four. <laughs> yeah, knight a four c five. Seems like black is just fine, right? Because queen a five is coming in pretty quickly. He should probably knows. Yeah, he plays it here. He's playing this as if as if he knows and. This is definitely part of his blitz repertoire. It might even by this point be part of his actual repertoire because, as I said, he's been playing this quite seriously in in matches in short time controls, but against very strong players. So 
you, you have to assume you're doing this seriously if you're repeating it time and time again against players of the do this caliber, for instance. Um, yeah, I thought Rook Jivan was a solid uh, a solid option, but the engine really doesn't like this for why it already kind of prefers play. Which is interesting because it doesn't really look disastrous to me at all. Why are we why are we supposed to be worse here with white? Like Bishop B2, B3, Knight B2, I mean, really hates it. Amazing. Like, really, really hates it. Still doesn't look lost, but it's saying minus... Uh, yeah, minus, minus one and a half or something. Yeah, like, it's it's amazing just how, how much it hates this position for white. I guess, I guess the knight on G3 is Tactical issues here. Mm, and the knight on G3 is just completely abysmal. There's no squares. So um, we're headed towards something similar. B3, then black. Can take yeah, the question them. is whether you are taking or, or not on a4. Yeah. If you play bishop c6, I assume you do take because otherwise you could have just ignored the knight altogether. Also, white probably does this. Anyway, mm -hmm. we'll find out. Yeah. In the meantime, that game uh, Alan won, so he is at 5 2. And I assume they started game eight at some point, right? Yeah, it's running. <laughs> and once again, uh, Bishot is doing really well. So yeah, that one seems to be a bit of a blowout, and uh, you know the score could have been even worse considering the position he lost in game five. Could have happened, Mister Tournament Director. Shall we work on the transition of live chess viewer power towards Peter? Um, yeah, we might need to have a quick break so we can swap you guys over because I don't want to control the mouse. So that's fair. Although we would still need a break to swap it to me, so we might as well just give it to Peter. Hang on a second. Um, we we might be able to do it doing this way. Hang on. As a tactic, you can take can take on e4. Yeah, such a weird tactic. Just. Not sure what you guys are doing. I guess Peter needs the PGN. I'm uh, to go take it from there. <laughs> I'm doing this. Does this work? Says Peter Swidler starts screen sharing. You might be able to cut it out more nicely, but yeah. <laughs> so start or yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, a few a few like let me let me switch the all the engines so that we have bars available and everything. And uh, and that. I hope the same is true in Sitges. We have bars available and everything. Mm. Looking forward to seeing you guys there. I got. I got. Yeah, I, I got. The, I checked the weather today and was uh, kind of mildly disappointed because yeah. it's it's not plus twenty five somehow. No, it's. I understand it's. Good day. Yeah, I understand it's. It's going to be December by that point, but still, like I, after all the. The talk we've done about the the incredibly sunny weather. Okay, but what weather? What's the weather where you are right now? It's glorious. It's like minus five, and uh, you know, cool. sleet, sleet, and things. Yeah, you jump from minus five to fifteen. This. Yeah, but like, right. if I don't, if I don't complain, what am I even for? Well, I'll my... be, I'll be jumping from minus ten to plus fifteen. So. I mean, by, by by the time Lucy just starts, it will be colder here as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... here. It's beautiful. Minus two in rain. It's my my sweet spot. <laughs> mm. uh... Yeah, and in the meantime, I think Andrew kind of stabilized. I, I assume he goes e five and therefore here, which is like the bishop on g seven needs to be. You know, you you need to at least attempt to control it. Knight h five. Interesting. Very risky. We can finally see them. Yeah. Where's the lamp? Did we actually cut out the lamp? No. That would be a sacrilege. Silence of the lamp. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry. Bless you. Um, all right. Let me just test to see what if I happen if I switch this off. Yep. It's Peter's screen. Okay, guys. Then I'll run. It's been a great pleasure, and I can't wait for more action tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the show. Big match. It is, yep. a, it is a very big match, yeah. Two big matches.
Mm. And then you'll be back tomorrow, Jan. Boom. Magnus is going to play again. I can't wait. See you then. Hang on a second. Yeah. Do we have do we have one more after this or? Yep, we've got Jordan oh, yeah. against Corey. Oh yeah. Okay. Because I never know what I sign up for. Nope, you don't. <laughs> yeah. This one looks good for Sasha, but at some point it looked even better. And in the meantime, uh, looks like Mohammed was much better in his game, but is now kind of equalish. But considering where the whoa. Something happened there. Yeah, Black could have. Uh, I think Black were completely winning a move ago, right? Like you could have here, you could have played Knight of Four, and that would have collected everything. But that was missed somewhat surprisingly because it does look like a pretty comfortable move. Mm -hmm. And instead, we're playing this position, which is, huh? Okay, I mean, Bishop C three and. Uh, Andrew decided not to protect the g2 pawn and rookie seven knight of four. He is back to being completely lost. Bishop f6 wins a full exchange. I assume he chooses bishop f6. Yeah, there are other moves there which are also quite strong, but yeah, from a practical standpoint, you always pick up that rook on e7 and you go from there. Yeah, you get the queens off and he also has more time. Andrew is one of the more effective. Uh, we, we discussed it during the preliminaries that Andrew is you know, unbelievably good at specifically this. Mm -hmm. But he's also giving like a 30 second handicap here to Sasha. I don't think he saves this. Although, I mean, it, it will be an interesting kind of a king. If you just go, don't go king e5. King e5 would have been a bit of a mistake there. Uh, so he won about 10 seconds so far. Yeah, this could be kind of close. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it gets I think it gets very close, judging by. Okay, I mean now Sasha really is. Because it's, it's going to become difficult to pre-move for, for Andrew as well. Yeah, check and then h4, I guess. Oh, h4 here, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, huh. Rook d1, rook d7, and rook h7, yeah. Very clean. And uh, in, in the other game, yeah, uh, Alan is still much better, maybe even winning, even though it's difficult to assess positions like this because the opposite color bishops. But the king on f7 is weirdly quite safe, and maybe even safer than the king on g2, because we do have all of those uh, threats uh, coming up. Let me try and get the chat somewhere where I can see it. Someone's democracy is the scam says next dodgy event should be Magnus with handicaps versus you, Jan, and me. Like mm. I feel like we've already been handicapped quite significantly in that lineup. So like what <laughs> would we have to do to Magnus? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, my my result in the in the prestigious MDI three was enough to start me uh questioning whether I should be going to World Rapid and Blitz. I feel like <laughs> nah. I I have done enough handicapping for for the week. So what what happened in the in the preliminaries to you? Well, my Discord horrible people that they are convinced me I have to stream. Uh, and uh, well, Queen H five was made in one there for Oof. Alan, which he did not find, and he's on eighteen seconds. So yeah, I think I, I think that would have that would have been preferable to the game continuing but i mean he's still completely winning of course and uh yeah i think we might need to try and fix the names at some point as well because we have the chess.com oh. usernames uh, but yeah, kind of is white yeah we kind of know who who they are but yeah it's a good idea i don't know how we fix that well you can send me those uh, name dot scv files or whatever they are if you have them and that probably fixes the names but that would be my guess but what do i know uh this yeah. is game game two of uh in the meantime the other one is at six two if i remember correctly so we kind of assume uh hang on a second let me figure out where to save this Oh, she's here. 
and then I'll I'll I, I think I will need to restart the LCD for a second there. So hang on. Okay. Yeah. One yeah, sec. We should... We did okay. get a very good question from chat. Mm -hmm. Tell Who me. is the grandmaster with the worst online username? I don't know if he still has it, right? But there was a it's Nigel. Clear... Yeah, I know it's Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> there was a very clear contender at one point. Um... Um... I did like uh, Badder's username on Chess24, which was Grumpy Toddler. I thought that was that was that was good. Yeah, one. that was good. Okay, does this work? Hooray, we fixed it. Huzzah. Yeah, that, for, for those who don't know, Nigel's, I think it's still username on chess.com is Honest Girl, which is that's an, just that's an, an anagram. That's an anagram, yeah. Yeah. So it's not that bad. Yeah, it's, it's fine, an anagram. Yeah. It's... yeah, I mean, my my username on on a number of platforms is various anagrams of my name. I have some very funny screenshots of like group chats on WhatsApp where for some people I am being displayed as Peter Swindler and for some people as Pesto Drivel and there is no way of telling what triggers what. <laughs> so like in the same group chat, some people would see my messages as messages from Peter Swindler and some from, from Pester, which I thought was Quirky and nice. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, this was an A6, a G6 A6 Spanish, which looked kind of normal for a second, and then kind of very, okay. <laughs> very <laughs> rapidly stopped looking remotely normal. The engines. Hang on, I need to switch switch all the engines on. Yeah, the engine somehow suggests that. It is fairly balanced with white being maybe ever so slightly better, which is, I mean, it wouldn't have been my guess, but yeah, it's just a very messy position. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting feature of uh, Andrew's game, right? That uh, he is sort of consistently slower than almost any of his opponents in the first half of the game. Yeah, I noticed even when he plays against somebody extremely slow, such as myself, that mm -hmm. you know, in that one game I played against him in the group, I was sort of in control on the clock until actually it wasn't a very long game. But even even when I I screwed up my very small advantage and had to take a repetition, even at that point, move like thirty five, I was still ahead on the clock. Which you know, considering his prowess at you know hyper bullet and you know extra hyper bullet and things, you wouldn't expect that, but. It does seem yeah, to I, th I think he uses his time like very well because he knows that if he gets into time trouble, he's fine. So like he, yeah, yeah. he actually thinks. Yeah, it, maybe I mean, like, it, and I think a lot of like bullet players don't really do that. Like a lot of very good bullet players, they just kind of play quickly, and I don't think he's one of those people, which is mm. interesting. Yeah, no, I I don't think it's a mistake of any kind or anything. It's just yeah. I, I find it I find it somewhat interesting that you know for somebody who is. You know, <laughs> very objectively and measurably extremely quick mm -hmm. he takes a lot of time in the opening and in the early middle game and then speeds up when he has to yeah which which i think is yeah it's uh sort of slightly slightly not what you would expect and yeah now sasha now i can see why sasha is sort of in control because knight g3 followed by the knight f5 or knight h5 is is very annoying and we are doing a very good job of not letting the bishop on c8 get included in the game and that means that the rook on a8 is also kind of far away from from the action and all of that means that uh white has to be better sasha's been considering how natural knight g3 is this has been a very long tank and yeah i was i was kind of expecting eventually knight g3 not to happen because the longer you think i think the more the more you kind of gravitate away from the move that i think you make with your hand 
I'm guessing with the inclusion of rook d1 and c takes d5, I think what we're taking away is the option of queen d4. So maybe what he thought he mustn't allow is something like this, but the engine doesn't think it's any good. Okay. Yeah, I can see there are some proper old school people who remember my my ICC usernames. Those were the days. Tendulkar? Yeah. The footballer? The footballer, yeah. I actually I asked I actually asked for uh Vicious permission to do that. Because I, I absolutely knew what will happen if I if I choose it. And it it, it did of, of course happen. Because even even when I would flat out deny it in chat, people would still absolutely think it's vision <laughs> and would just like refuse to, to take no for an answer. <laughs> like, people would kind of address me as vicious, sir, and I would say no. And they would say, yeah, we understand you want to preserve your anonymity, but we like, I'm, I'm such a huge fan. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. It looks like the other match might be about to finish soon. Yeah. It does Six look like that. Two. Yeah, it's 6-2, and White needs a draw in this position, which, as long as he's in control on the clock, it should not really be a problem whatsoever. And the d5 pawn is not really weak, so we're not really struggling. Yeah, just go bishop c5 and d6, or bishop takes c7, even after rook a5, I know. Just very, very level. Yeah, and Pisha only needs the draw here, and then mm. that's the end. Yeah, we'll we'll bring it up when it finishes, just to kind of inform the viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, here, actually, Andrew kind of got away with it, and uh, well, now he is better. Uh, whoa! And now he is back to being lost to e six. Yeah, which is a very natural move and should not be allowed. What he was supposed to play here is queen c six, which suddenly actually creates a lot of counterplay, but it wasn't found, and now, yeah, e f wasn't the best. This is, whoa, and we missed mate in three, four, whatever. This has been a bit of a swinging, whoa. Still, whoa. Okay, every move is a whoa here, but he's on three seconds. Yeah, there's no time. Yeah. Still mate in, well. well he's going he, yeah. to take, no. take a draw? Or maybe not, no? Okay. Amazing, yeah. Wow. And in the meantime, by the way, uh, the pawn d5 got picked up, so black will now torture uh, here. And the other one is at 1 1, right? If I, if I understand correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a bit of a throw by Sasha because uh, after King e86, he, his position was absolutely winning if he just found one precise decision there. Yes, one. it looks like this is going to be a match. Oh, yeah, we, we knew this was going to be a match. Like, this is not going to be a surprise. I don't know. I'm always surprised when Grishchuk loses to anyone. So, yeah, like, I was but... kind of surprised he lost to Ding, to be honest, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, I spoke to him and he said that uh, he thought Ding played better, but also there was one game where he got a disconnect when he just about got back into the match. Like he got to minus one and then he got a disconnect in a very playable position. And uh, that basically. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 you rarely recover. Or from that kind of a swing. Yeah. Sasha is one of those people who actually has, you know, looked at this and will know the the precise move orders. I mean, so have I, but I don't remember. I think in this position I recommend C takes D4 very strongly. Like C D4, E D4, Knight C6, and then just D5 against anything. I think is what I give in this position uh in the course, but Sasha disagrees. I have seen him do this, though. Queen b6, queen b3, bishop b6, specifically. Uh, he won a very nice game against Kamsky, I think, in one of the Russian clubs ages ago, uh, doing that. Um, so it's also perfectly uh, perfectly okay. But I think my, my recommendation against this particular type of setup is cd4. We're quite happy with c takes d4 because then we go knight c6, bishop b6, and we have a sensible position. And if this happens, we just like play knight c six, and then we play e five most against most things. Like castles, I think e five, d five, knight h five is very plain. Oh no, no, here we have bishop g five. Maybe it's not in, in this exact position, but the general idea is to go for for those types of uh, counterplay. Queen b six made Andrew pause. 
yeah and in the meantime alan is maybe even a bit better in in the game he needs to uh, he needs just to draw in yeah okay so yeah. black removed away a full queen in that game so congratulations to alan pichot who progresses to the top eight with this win yep and he will play the winner of this match hmm So this should be fun. Yeah. These types of positions are... Uh, generally, you would feel that they they have to be pretty comfortable for Black, but it's still a London, so you kind of, you shuffle and you shuffle and you shuffle and... Okay, you this is not a shuffle because he takes d4 wins a pawn, which I assume Sasha will see because this is sort of why we played rook c8. Just cd4 and then knight takes d4 when it gets recaptured because this pin will... B. Yeah, this is a bit of a weird blunder. Yeah, it's a kind of an active blunder. I think uh, uh, in the qualification of... I think maybe what he thought is that he can do this and then take. But the engine suggests that after queen a6, the threat of d6, d5 is uh, extremely okay. strong. And this is probably what Sasha is calculating as well, because I'm pretty sure he sees that he takes d4, you know, on a surface level, just wins material. Yeah, there we go. So we'll find out what, what if anything, Andrew thought he had here. Otherwise, he's in trouble. Yeah, he's in trouble. Yeah, ninety six, as expected. Yeah, and now you have to choose because yeah, if you if you just recapture on d four and play bishop d three, this position is like very very poor. <clears throat> something like this. So yeah, you do go knight c4. The problem is even queen d8, and then we will like push this knight away and take on d4 anyway next move. <clears throat> even that is quite strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but queen a6 is much stronger. Queen a6 is borderline winning. But so yeah, Sasha goes queen d8. I think queen a6 is a kind of a move where you probably even see it and think it's probably quite strong, but you also feel that uh, it gives you a much higher likelihood of blundering something back mm -hmm. so you end up deciding against it and now both b5 and d5 give black a very good position <clears throat> yeah this is actually kind of an important choice because this doesn't win a pawn because now white can do this and the pawn actually gets preserved but black ends up with a huge positional advantage because the white pieces are very dis disconnected and yeah, 95 queen b7 and like the white pieces are nowhere. But d5 was an actual full pawn. So the choice here was uh, give white some nice squares for their pieces, such as, for instance, this. And, you know, maybe one day white stabilizes and gets a position with compensation or go for... For this, where you are not actually winning material, but you are going to have a very pleasant position to play. And it's an interesting stylistic choice, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people would have chosen differently here. Knight e3, deciding to not even try to win the b5, b5 pawn back. Interesting. So now he gets everything. Yeah. And the point here is that, yes, if white had to had time to play queen c1 d1 here, you would probably pick up the pawn on b5, and you are not even giving up your bishop pair to do it, but black still has the move, so you can even play something like b5 b4 here. Quite uh, quite safely. And uh, yeah, you are just much, much better. Uh, the engine suggests you can go rook takes c3 here, which is quite interesting. I mean, and then the knight h5. <laughs> yeah, you, you okay. never do that. Yeah, you never do that. Queen d7. It's interesting that it's not even all that poor for white now that we haven't. Like, rook c3 is very difficult to find, but you could maybe be expected to, to find and prefer this because now c3 is once again hanging and you get to trade some favorable pieces mm -hmm. 
Whereas what Sasha got in the game, I mean, he's still going to be a bit better, but because White got rid of all the poor pieces and there's still this weakness. And if you end up having to play 65, you're not even better very much because the bishop on g7 is just so horrible. So, yeah, yeah feels like maybe Andrew will get away with it. At least the, the trend is very much in his favor because the position... Yeah, and the uh, clock is mm, low. Yeah, and we're definitely entering the phase of the game where mechanically he will be just much stronger. Yeah, this could be a tough one, actually. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I I like rook c five. I like just saying uh, I'm probably not better anymore. So let's simplify, make life more understandable. Maybe even yeah, I thought maybe even rook e five, but rook e five is really kind of begging for a draw in a position where you're still a little bit better. And you know, a chess player of Sasha's you know culture and understanding will really dislike the idea of begging for a draw where. You're still arguably the somewhat stronger side. But yeah, you have to be careful because king e7, yeah. King e7 is the one most natural move, but then you have to calculate bishop d5. So it's all a little bit annoying. What you would like to do is to somehow get one pair of rooks off so that your e6 and d6 pawns cannot be attacked by a double rook formation. So like playing king e7 here and hoping white goes rookie one and then going rookie five mm -hmm. would be like well we actually gave up the pawn on h7 i don't really like that and we're also down to down 10 seconds on the clock so rookie six whoa okay yeah this has gone oh. this has yeah, gone this... off the rails a little bit yeah i think andrew is a heavy heavy favorite now to win this rookie five wins a piece there is no rookie one check. Yeah, Sasha actually ended up assuming rookie five happens, and it doesn't. Uh, yeah, I've, like after rookie five, you know, a position with very very little objective risk would have been lost in about five moves. That mm -hmm. now, yeah, he believed him. Yeah, now I think black isn't even really worse, and somewhat shockingly, black isn't behind on the clock again. Which is very, very strange. Somehow, once again, Sasha out, out blitzed Andrew in terms of speed. Mm, for now. For now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Sasha will. Yeah, Sasha knows who he's playing against here. He's not going to be trying to, you know, prove a four second advantage. That would be foolhardy. So that's still even at one and a half, one and a half. Previous game was this G6, A6 Spanish. I wonder if we... No, okay, we're swapping to a different Spanish now. Yeah, I get to learn something about repertoires. So this is not a Marshall player. Ah, it's, a, it's a Zaitsev. Another, another opening I have some idea about. Played a lot of that as a, as a kid on the black side. Is that a good opening? It's a very interesting opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will be interesting to see this discussion because yeah, like since the Karpov Kasparov matches, it's not like the line entirely kind of died and nobody knows anymore, but it has become much, much less fashionable. And uh I, for instance, wouldn't know the first thing about these positions, despite you know my sort of pedigree in the opening. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, quote unquote pedigree. But Sasha is actually one of those people who might have a concrete idea because he he works on chess and he is also like curious enough to have at some point looked at the sites of just because he would like to know are you not curious about chess anymore i am but not about openings as much as i used to be i still like the game i don't like you know, working on the game specifically all that, you know, nearly nearly as much as I used to. And I never really used to <laughs> like it anyway. It's kind of curious that the engines don't like... I mean, I would have assumed I'm better here with black, but apparently we're definitely not. And this looks extremely risky to my eyes, but somehow the, the, the point about these positions is that there is this bishop on b7, which is constantly out of the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, as long as the e4, d5 structure survives, 
you can take a lot of liberties simply because there's this bishop on b7 which is completely out of play and eventually black i don't know spends two empty playing bishop c8 bishop d7 or or something and it gives you time to to consolidate or they continue playing with the bishop still there and and you're playing sort of a you know a piece up yeah because generally speaking like black will have a knight on d3 in a second and uh you know the way to deal with it will probably be to give up an exchange eventually like if it just stays there uh, jake says what do you think about the bishop on f8 well that one actually gets out by g6 bishop g7 it's actually easier to get it out Mm -hmm. than the one on b7 uh, uh kind of an interesting interesting take there by irishman 2003 uh, it is rightly said that people who are good at bullet are always good at every format i honestly have not heard it said and i don't know if it's true uh it's not it's never been said and it's not true uh i mean it's true in the case of andrew yeah don't get don't get me wrong i'm a huge fan of andrews andrew is a very good chess player but I think it's a kind of a, I, I genuinely have not heard that particular generalization before, and I don't know if it's true. Um, but it definitely is true in his case. Like that, that is not, uh, you know, an attempt to dunk on Andy. Uh, he, is, he is definitely a, a, a good player. But yeah, I mean, but he's still, you know, probably what, comfortably top 10 in the world at Bullet. And mm -hmm. He's not top 10 in classical, like. There's definitely a gap in skill, I guess. Yeah. He's good at classical, but, you know, there's still... There's plenty of people who are better, and, like, a bullet is not the case. So. Yeah. And I it, actually kind of like he takes d3. Uh, it, it took him a long time to make this decision because of just how natural this looks. But he takes d3 does win you the e4 pawn. And as I said, like, mm -hmm. uh, if, if the chain collapses, you generally are completely fine in these types of positions as black. Uh, because the bishop on b7 uh, comes comes back into uh, into the game, and then you are rarely in any kind of serious trouble. I'm actually even surprised that the, the engine suggests you could be in trouble here as black, because it looks it looks very very healthy. Yeah. It seems fine. Yeah. He is once again down. I mean, now a minute and a half. It was two minutes at one point. But we were seeing it every game. So no longer really much of a surprise. It's a, it's a good strategy. Give yourself an extra few minutes during the game to think. Mm -hmm. Then be disgustingly fast. Yeah. I can do the first part. <laughs> Not and then the just set. just flag. Yeah, yeah and, that, and then just a lot of people on. can do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's my approach. These days, in particular, my approach is be extremely slow, pretend you're thinking, get a bad position, lose on time. I did that a bunch in the in the pool. Tried and tested formula. Hmm. Yeah. Now it's time for, for, for Sasha to take a long pause, which is really not surprising because the engine, I mean, it's all fairly similar. I mean, the evaluation is not dramatically different, but the move the engine likes the best is D B3, B4, mm -hmm. which I think is extremely difficult to make. Because <laughs> like, why is it supposed to be any good? Yeah, he does go, does go BA, which is fine, I guess, but... Yeah, I, I saw the engines move, and I just couldn't make any yeah. sense of it. Yeah. I think eventually I figured it out, but, you know, very approximately. It's very, very difficult to, to even, you know, convince yourself to try to calculate what's happening there, because at first, you like, it has to occur to you, and then you have to not immediately dismiss it from your mind for being very stupid. Yeah, rook a6, and uh, you kind of have to start being careful here with white, but uh, the main line does appear to be the force draw. Um, in a way where only black can be better. Rook a3 is a bit surprising because now after knight c5, we can take on c5. I guess he just wants to take on d5, but the uh, queen b5 exists here. I assume he has actually seen the move rook e5, which I wouldn't have seen. <laughs> like, 
I I think I would either either blunder queen b5 or c queen b5 and dismiss the entire line because yeah like why why are we allowing this kind of a double attack if we can avoid it but yeah he just he just sees this stuff very impressive yeah, he's got time <laughs> yeah but also also sort of just just a tactical awareness to to not stop calculating once your spot queen b5 exists mm -hmm. this is uh quite impressive rookie three and it's weird just, you know, how little your pieces actually work here because the best two moves both appear to be blunders of, of a piece in one move. The best move in the position is knight c3, intending to go bishop takes f3 and then rook b5 would be a threat. And weirdly, the second best is rook h5, where once again, it looks like you blundered a full piece, but then, but then you win it back anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of a disgusting position where, you know, there's all these small tactics. And also, you kind of have to ask yourself, does white even have a threat? Because knight 5 is still not threatened because of queen f2. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing maybe you can even just make some kind of a waiting move. I don't know, bishop a8 or whatever. But then queen b8, I guess, is a bit annoying. g5. Oh, yeah, something like g5, g6, whatever. Bishop b6 has been played. Yeah. Yeah. Queen b8. Yeah, the pieces are a little bit stuck now. And uh, this apparently is a huge blunder because b3, whoa. Yeah, Sasha didn't spot that b4 was connected. And now 96 wins, like, everything. Oh. Yeah, mistakes are creeping in. Yeah, this is, yeah, Sasha is not missing 96 here and just resigns. Sasha goes to plus one. Yeah, okay. the last, the last like, four ply of this game weren't ideal. So will we see a pure King's Indian again? Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, Sasha got a very, very good position, but this is a bit different because uh whoa. Mouse I mean, slip? if I didn't know, I would yeah, I would suggest this is just a mouse slip, but I guess he yeah, he wants to go knight a sixty five, knight c five. I don't like it though. It feels like uh you're you're giving white a lot of a lot of liberties here. But I mean, Sasha is an actual King's Indian player, and uh, I'm a fake King's Indian player, so I will always trust him to uh, know what he's doing in these spots and uh, dismiss whatever my first reaction is. <laughs> yeah, if, if the knight was on d2 here and not g3, you would always pick this for white very, very happily. But with the knight on g3, I guess it's not that clear. It really isn't where it's supposed to be, and why generally will eventually at some time in the future we'll have to like spend quite a serious amount of time getting it back to those good squares. Why the F1 square, I would assume. Which sometimes even even is an argument not to castle just yet, but your pawn on E4 is hanging, so like, I wouldn't hate knight of one knight e three, but you, you have to start with F3, I guess. Queen e8 is very normal because we very often will want to play knight h7, so unpinning that knight is very logical. Yeah, and this is a kind of a weird position because, yeah, black already had the option of playing knight h7, and after, let's say, bishop p3, you can drive the knight to h1. But the point is, it's actually not doing that poorly on h1 because it comes out very normally. It just looks very, very strange for like a move or two. And then it comes back to sort of exactly the squares where it belongs. Uh, so black doesn't even do that, even though like it looks very attractive to put your opponent's knight in the corner. No. This looks nope. tricky now. Yeah, nobody puts horsey in the corner. Horses don't like corners. Mm. Never corner a horse. Right unless there. you have a, unless you have a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. If you have a plastic bag, maybe you can afford to corner a horse. Still sounds dangerous. Yeah. There is a a reasonably large horse breeding concern right next to our dacha, mm -hmm. where they breed. Arabians. Reasonably, reasonably Ar large horses? 
yeah, Arabians of all things. So there was a like a, a herd of Arabians grazing uh, like 500 meters away from our from our house. And we used to go and feed, the, feed them apples. And they surround you from every side. Mm -hmm. And they, they eat your apples and they definitely don't want to harm you. But uh, it does get kind of close. And, uh, you know, when they're, when they're eating apples out of your hand, you do realize just how large of an animal a horse is. Yeah, they're like dinosaurs. <laughs> they are. Like, people don't realize how big horses it can get. They're basically dinosaurs. Also, moose, 100% dinosaurs. Yeah, I mean, they are. I, I, I've seen that article. I, I think I maybe even shared that article, yeah, about moose being maybe the last remnant of the... Uh, protofauna or some sort of giant fauna i don't know if i trust it though definitely megafauna mega yeah well, like megafauna yeah yeah they're huge <laughs> they are large yeah they are very large i don't know if you could drive under one with a car but sometimes no. you drive towards one and it feels like you could just drive between its legs they're incredibly large animals yeah, the, the European, especially, because uh, when we were in uh, St. Louis last year with uh, one of my kids, uh, Alejandro took us to, uh, to an elk trail. Mm -hmm. And we actually, like after two hours of seeing, I think we saw one red deer and maybe some birds and definitely no elk. And we, we were always... We, we, we were almost giving up. And, and then on sort of the very, very last trail, we met a runner running in the opposite direction. And she said, like, 200 yards ahead, around the bend, elk. And we thought, she's probably lying, just trying to, you know, keep our spirits up. And then we rounded the bend, and there were elk. But they are smaller, I think, than the European one. Yeah. Yeah, the European moose are kind of mm. bigger, I think. Yeah. They were still very, very nice. And uh, the, we only saw, I think, one buck from a very large, from a distance. But we saw a lot of does. And they're like, they just don't care. They see people every day. Like you, you walk two meters away from them. They continue just, you know, lying on the grass and chewing. Mm-hmm. Like a like a very kind of a elaborate looking cow. Yeah, that's uh, that's what reindeer are like here. Like reindeer just don't care about humans. They mm. you're not allowed to hunt them, so then and they seem to be aware of that. <laughs> yeah, so, like they just relax. They wander around. They won't move out of the way of your car or anything. Yeah. I don't know if they're particularly intelligent animals or just incredibly confident. Yeah, I think I think that it's probably the second. Yeah. In the meantime, Andrew is uh yeah, this probably should not have been allowed. You probably are expected at some point to play B6 just so that you recapture with this pawn and you don't allow white to get this very, very beautiful pawn center. You can still try to challenge it, but then you maybe run into E5, E6 problems. This looks suboptimal for, for Sasha. He's also for a change way behind on the clock. Yeah. Yeah, on the topic of not being allowed to hunt stuff, I I played many, many years ago, I played that show match against Magnus on Svalbard. And we were told a lot of very, you know, I mean funny is maybe not the right word to describe it, but you know, funny if you are of a certain frame of mind, stories about rules regarding polar bears. Mm-hmm. Uh, which basically come to the following. You can shoot a polar bear in self-defense, but you have to be able to prove it was self-defense. And if you can prove it was self-defense, you're probably dead. Uh, and if you do it in any, other, in, in any other way, meaning that you, I guess, like when it starts attacking you, you, you shoot it from some distance where you haven't been mauled yet, 
mm-hmm. you pay a fine of I think 50 grand Oof. and you never allowed to return uh and uh if you're on Svalbard you're probably working as a miner mine er er not or mm-hmm. just for, cl- for clarity <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh it is probably important for you not to get expelled because yeah. you probably also they probably also dock your wages and uh, like it's it's not a good thing to be expelled from from there for a worker and uh we were on the norwegian side first and then we went to the russian side and uh, on the norwegian side there is like a reddison and there was a dinner with the local authorities and uh they gave us a uh like, I think there were five courses and they were appropriate changes of wine as well. Like they they gave us a dessert wine at the end and there were like a, a, a white and a red and it's just like... And on the Russian side, it wasn't as, as great in terms of advances of civilization. And uh, the, the, the Russian workers told us stories about like the fridge is not very large. So like if you cook a lot of food for the, for the week, some of it doesn't fit in the fridge. So let's say you uh, you make a large, you know, bowl of borscht. And uh, what you do with it in, in, in that weather very often is you pack it in a plastic bag. You, you know, you make a tight knot and you put it outside. Let's say on the outside the windowsill or... In some kind of setting like that, yeah, which is fine in terms of keeping the f- the food fresh, but sometimes the bear comes and eats it, mm. <laughs> which is which presents its own you know challenges. Yeah, that seems like a risky <laughs> strategy to try and attract bears like that. Yeah, yeah. Pumpkin the cat says, "I think I'd probably be okay with not returning to Svalbard. It is stunningly beautiful. Like I would very much recommend." visiting as a visitor mm-hmm. working in a mine is probably not for everybody but it is a stunningly stunningly beautiful place to to just wander around for a day or two as long as you don't bump into any polar yeah. bears yeah if you keeping keeping far away from polar bears and on one of the days they gave us a like a boat ride and we saw some seals. And then at some point, the, the boat captain very excitedly started hanging out binoculars and saying, look, there is a bear on, on the shore somewhere. Like if, if, you, if you magnify as much as you, as much as you can, you can sort of see it. It's like, I don't know, two and a half kilometers away. And we, you know, very excitedly started saying, can we please come any closer? And he said, no, 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 we have very strict rules about not coming anywhere near the bears. We're basically forbidden to come anywhere near the bears because we are told that a bear might get very frightened and die of heart attack. (laughs) And that would be very bad. So, no, we're not coming any closer. And uh, as a a theory, it seemed a bit far-fetched, I have to say. I, I yeah, don't... I don't think they're they're that scared. Yeah, I think they don't get scared when they see food. <laughs> exactly. Like I, even even a boat full of people would still be. I think they would approach it as a kind of a very difficult to open tin can with food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't think I don't think a bear would really mind all that much. But the captain was very insistent that we're not coming anywhere near. Uh, which yeah. I, which I thought was. That makes sense. Are they playing the same thing over again? Uh, asks uh, Boris, Boris Braski. Yeah, the, it's the same position. And interestingly, Andrew is once again tanking about what to take with, which I think is kind of funny because he already spent like two minutes, uh, two, two minutes in the previous game deciding whether to take with the knight and with or with the pawn. He did lose the game, but he was completely fine. So okay, and so we we have a we have a change here. Yeah, the interesting position here is. I guess the point is, if you take on C1, White pretty much always takes on C4 first, because I don't think we want this. Even this is maybe playable, but I actually this is just much better for White specifically because of A5, and then the bottom before might fall. Yeah, this is an 
a very intricate position. The engine likes basically queen g6 or knight c5. Once again, you know, very, very strongly indicating that you have to fight against the uh, the pawn chain. And the engine does not like this move. For some tactical reasons, but even if you just think about this position, which is maybe not the best for white, uh -huh. but like if if you end up getting the bishop to c3 and not losing the e4 pawn in the process, those types of positions very often will just be winning for white. The big question, of course, is whether you will be in time after something like pin g6, because there's a lot of pressure against your center. But... Yeah. Yeah, and Sasha goes a b5, which is the best move, provided he goes rook a7 here, which is supposedly very strong. Uh, have you been to Pyramiden? I think, yeah, we were uh, we were in Longyearbyen and then in Pyramiden. Um, it was a kind of an interesting event because uh, we were marking the 100th anniversary of the local chess club. And uh, uh, it is definitely 100 years old, but it's not extremely popular. So I think for that particular event, the Grandmasters for the time that we were there, the grandmasters outnumbered the club members. Because <laughs> I, I I played Magnus and uh, uh, Nick de Fermin played against uh, Simon Agdestein. Uh, and the participants were chosen to sort of represent the countries which have the largest claim. Because Svalbard, I'm not going to be able to say exactly what its status is, but it's basically some kind of a uh, international holding with uh, uh, Norway, of course, uh, Russia, the US, and Sweden at some point. But I think Sweden mostly withdrew from there by this point. For now. Yeah. We might take it back. Mm. We've got plans. I don't know if we have plans. Mm. Nobody, nobody ever knows if Swedes have any plans. Okay, seven looks very logical. Sasha's been... Uh, thinking you can still include bc bc and then play bishop g2 i guess removing the a pawns make like if we talk about this position i'm assuming this is a decent amount better for white than the one with the pawns on a4 and a6 because we always have rook a7 and black always has to kind of worry about rook a7 o opening up the a file is pretty much invariably an improvement that takes b5 is uh not the best because it does allow this yeah it allows black to to break free i'm guessing he like b takes c4 is strong here i mean for for a given value as usual but well he actually goes for it very interesting because like rook takes c4 for the time being we're down a piece yeah and e4 is hanging so for you to realize you are actually playing for an advantage after knight c3, you have to be, you have to have a lot of imagination. Yeah, and... this is very strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a kind of a difficult decision to understand because uh, it, it doesn't really look like it will work, and where there were also kind of logical other continuations available. If this was the only thing that was available, yeah, you can maybe continue calculating. Um, how many world champions have you played? Uh, I haven't counted, but... All of them. Well, I mean, starting from Karpov, all of them. And before Karpov, I played Smyslov. And so that's... That's the list. How many is that? That's what he was asking. Well, depending on you know how do you count the you know sort of the the competing cycles of the uh, the messy years. Yeah, now black is just completely fine. White had this really weird option there after knight a two of uh, taking with the rook, seemingly blundering again, and then playing e five. You're not better here with white, but this would actually have given him a chance at least. Whereas this position, you have to be very careful not to be worse. I think if you imagine this bishop coming out and like g6, bishop g7 happening, you're going to be struggling. 
So yeah, you 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 kind of need to be playing very forcefully here to make sure you're not worse. Yeah, the computer one's rookie too here. Yeah, also fun. Lloyd asks, how many World Champions has Mr. Dodgy played? If Lady Big Ben says less than one, probably 0 0.5. That's not true. <laughs> I've played at least one. Mm. Yeah, I'm I've trying to... I've played Kostenyuk as give well. Give him some air time. There's two. i played Magnus, Kostenyuk. I think that's it. Hmm. Yeah, this is the, yeah, this is the kind of position where you, you you have to start being worried, I think, with white, because yeah, the, the the longer you've you've not traded anything off, the 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 more the sort of the, the worse your position becomes, and eventually you might really hate it. But uh, yeah, every time I say something like this, the position turns and yeah, Andrew missing this is not great. I think I am actually playing bishop takes d5 here every single time. We're not allowing, yeah, we're, we're never allowing queen e7 dc. Because this kind of has to be a draw if played precisely. But... Do you play this precisely with 11 seconds? Well, yeah, I don't know. This has been a very strange game. Very, very strange game. Yeah, look, I mean, he's completely recovered. He's not even remotely worse anymore, but I guess he still loses, right? Even even against Queen of Fate, yeah. 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 Nicely done by Sasha, kept it in control. I mean, he... It got a bit close, but uh, the, whatever, 15-second advantage ended up being... Okay, there's going to be a very short break now. Mm -hmm. So the score is... Maybe not that sharp. Three to five minutes, we've been mm -hmm. told. The score is... Plus is. one again for Sasha, right? Yes. Three and a half to two and a half. So he needs three points to win the match. Mm -hmm. Still a long way to go. We've got 30 minutes until the next match starts. There'll be an overlap. Mm-hmm. Who does who's your pick in the other match? Uh so that's uh Corey against Jordan. Jordan. I think Jordan probably starts as a favorite, but really should be, should be quite think? close. Yeah. I think, I think Corey might be higher red. No. I don't I've, I mean they're both very good, but you know, once again, I've I don't have enough volume these days of online blitz to you know have any kind of personal experience i don't know where where they stand on you know, i might very... be wrong i might have made that up as well i don't think Paris. i think jordan is high red and younger mm. but yeah I, I rate i rate jordan very highly and i think um yeah in, like in my mind he he he's I, i'm not expecting it to to be one sided at all but if i have to pick i'm i'm picking jordan you think Jordan will play serious openings? Well, more serious than the ones he played in a group. For sure. But uh, yeah, whether he will play, you know, he will try hard properly. Who knows? I think he'll try hard. I think he has to now. He's in the knockout stage. He can't mess around. That's what Magnus did yesterday. Very mm. serious openings yesterday. <laughs> Was it, were they? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, because I, I I I saw the results, but but I did not see the games yet. Yeah, it was all Spanishes and mm. boring D four stuff. Very serious. Well, I mean, he clearly wanted to. No shenanigans. To make an effort to just win it as efficiently and as convincingly as possible, and he definitely did that. 
Oh, you think that was his plan? He wanted to spend as little time as possible playing in the tournament. So he realized the only way to do that was to win all the games. That's a I think that's a solid plan, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he formulated it as sort of clearly as that, but it's a pretty solid plan in general. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, we should do ads and stuff. Absolutely. How's your chessable course doing? Does it still exist? Is it still on sale? I don't know about the the sale bit, but it definitely still exists. I believe chessable.com has a Cyber Monday sale. I, mm. I should know stuff, but I don't. Yeah. I think we're still up to 60% off. Lots mm. of courses, including the Grunfeld Lifetime Repertoire. Mm. It is still on sale. It is of the highest quality. Recommended in the best houses of London and Paris. Is it the best Grunfeld course on Chessable? <laughs> Who knows? You have plenty. You could just say, yeah. It's the best Grunfeld course by Peter Swidler available on Chessable. I think. Fair enough. Fair. Reasonable. Also, I think Chess 24 still has a deal on for premium. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah. Like usually someone sends me a message that says, sell some stuff. And then I sell the stuff, but we haven't had that today. So I don't even know mm. where any of the deals are. Yeah. What I do good. when I'm looking for a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Is I go to chess24.com slash deals. Ah. Which is currently Black Friday up to 60% off via Chessable. Aim chess. Fair enough. For four dollars. Aim chess for four dollars. Three months of aim chess for four four dollars. I might get that. I don't think I that have. actually sounds like something I might get, you know? Like I mean, come on. And chess my four is still on pre on sale. Forty nine dollars for a year. Wait a bit, forty nine euros. I've been telling people dollars. Because we were given a, a we were given a thing with dollars in it. It might be both. Mm. Yeah, everything's the same nowadays. Inflation or deflation or whatever. Mm. Or $119 or euros for three years. Yes. Use the code BF1 or BF3, which stands for best friend one. Best mm -hmm. friend three. Yes. Which kind of, uh, you, you know, assumes things not in evidence, right? This assumes somebody has three friends. Mm -hmm. Like, who has three friends? Not me. It's just you and Jan. Mm. So let yeah. go. I used to have a niche. He left me. That is uh, a very sad story. I don't particularly like what Sasha's doing here because it feels <laughs> I like... you're going to say you don't particularly like a niche. That was very harsh. <laughs> Why would I say something like that? It just sounded like that's where you were going. I don't know. Context and stuff. Yeah. Are there even three people living near Mr. Dodgy? No. But my friends don't live near me anyway, so it's fine. Hmm. Say what you like about Liz Truss, but she did make currency conversion a lot simpler, says Joey, because, yeah, it's a fair comment. It's interesting that... At some point, the engine was really liking the idea of playing a four as quickly as possible, but it doesn't seem to be in love with it anymore. I would still, I think, play a four in a heartbeat in this position. Mm -hmm. More than really any other move. But. How do you yeah. decide when to play f4 or d5? I don't particularly even like the idea of playing d5 because I think, yeah, we get hit with. Uh, I thought even h4 or f5 is not horrible, but the engine says bishop f6, bishop g5, uh, which I very much believe. Just get those bishops off, which you do achieve in this position fairly reliably, and then you play knight c5, you play b6, and mm -hmm. you're very solid on the queen side, and eventually on the king side you will play h4 and f5. And uh, if you do that, having gotten the dark square bishops off the board, I think you very often 
just do extremely well with black. Let's see what Sasha decides though, because there's a bunch of things you can. I mean, including as I mentioned, like you can you can just do this, but then I guess you have to assess whether this is any good. <clears throat> and once again, you are kind of justifying White's previous play by allowing all of this because the knight comes out. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Sasha shows that he understands the the, the proper way. And if you if you try avoiding uh, the trade, then you really kind of look stupid. And this, I think, is the issue because normally bishop f6 doesn't guarantee you the bishop's coming off because you white would have a three bishop of two, but not when you always are under threat of your knight being pushed into the corner. So you badly need the f2 square free. So you kind of have to shrug and allow the bishops the, the bishops to come off. Mm -hmm. Ask him which chat we're reading. I'm reading both chats, but I'm also trying to look at the board at the same time. So not can... me. But I'm not reading YouTube chat. I'll never go back there. Mm. I'm a I'm a Twitch chat person. I'm reading Twitch chat, chest twenty four chat, never YouTube. Some offense to the people watching on YouTube. I feel like. Once again, I, I, I do not want to interrupt our glorious moderators when they're doing their job. But it feels like people getting banned for a comment I praised on air <laughs> is uh, uh, it's sending kind of mixed messages. And I would like to kind of go into bat for, for that person. I would like I, to kind of... Yeah, I feel like you're... Do you want to fight with the moderators? That's up to Not you. fight. So, I would like to very politely kind of... If you want to physically fight one of the moderators, you can call them out and, you know, we can set up some kind of chess boxing match between... Like, that's okay. That's fine. <laughs> Personally, I, I, I like the moderation team on Chess24, and I hope they don't attack and sabotage me. Yeah, as I said, I, I, I respect... <laughs> I respect our moderation team and uh, do not want to tell them how to do their job, but I did read it out on air and said, fair point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Speaking of moderators, where is CP Kao? I've not seen him for a long time. Mm. Where is he? Is he okay? We do not know. And we worry. Mm. Somewhat. Nicholas on YouTube says he feels attacked by me not reading YouTube chat. Because mm. I was lying and I was trying to bait people. So... Very solid. General now go back policy. to ignoring YouTube chat. Mm. Yeah, Sasha did... Uh... Hang on. My other screen decided to die. Oh, okay, now it's back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Sasha did spend, which I thought was not necessary. He spent three moves trading those knights off and then went back to the previous plan. But yeah, this is this is sort of the point I was making earlier. White appears to have made a lot of progress on the queen side. But now in particular that there is no knight on a6, it got traded for the knight on c3, and there is this really horrible knight on h1, and these bishops are about to be traded. You're just always doing really well here with black. You're not really worried about the, the advances white made on the queen side. The one thing that maybe slightly worries you here as, why, as black is maybe allowing c6 in some kind of an advantageous setting. Because you're not very happy about playing bishop c8, and you're not very happy about this change of structure. But you're achieving enough on the other side of the board, I think, that you don't have to be all that obsessed about it. And yeah. Sasha, Sasha doesn't seem to be. Yeah, rook c3. Yeah, you can start trading. Um, I would have played this sequence a little bit differently, and I think I would be even saying that even if I didn't see that the engine did not like this sequence at all. But it feels like abandoning control, because we were basically in control of the A-file here as black. 
And after rook c3, let's say the engine very much liked very simply keeping that control by playing rook a4 and continuing to play like that. And eventually we want to take on e3, we want to play queen g5, I want to go rook f8 and just get full control over the a-file. Uh, instead, we have this position where, you know, this knight is about to rejoin the action. You can still go rook a8, but maybe white will be in time eventually to play rook a1 and trade more pieces. Mm -hmm. You're still doing very well, of course, but it feels like we could have been enjoying ourselves even more as black here. Yeah. Chess maybe says it's are opening debates. I think that's the interesting thing about matches, that you can try the same opening a few different times and try different ways. Yeah, people, people approach it very differently. You know, I, I tend to, you know, in those rare cases where I actually qualify for the knockout stage, I tend to jump around and not really repeat the same stuff very often. But yeah, this one seems to be a very principled, you know, Zaitsev with, Zaitsev with white, uh, King's Indian with black type uh, type deals. Yeah, I li I like it when they try to keep going with the mm -hmm. same things. Yeah, and it's interesting here that C6 has been played, and it's apparently a huge mistake because Knight H5 is very strong here. But if you don't, whoa, Sasha's on point today. This is very good. So you get to win a lot of time here by uh, creating this unbelievably strong threat of uh, of night before. But then I guess something went wrong because yeah, we're, not, we're, not, we're not really giving mate. Mind. Yeah, we're not really giving mate anymore. And white did get... Well, and not, white was just winning here. Ah, you could play b6, rook b6, queen b6. So he played rook b2 specifically, specifically to defend against b6. And in fact, it was doing absolutely nothing to that threat. Uh, so for a second there, Andrew was just winning. And now he is losing to rook takes b5, which is uh, an 96 played. Yeah. So the, the very, very last seconds of uh, uh, of pretty much every single game so far are, you wouldn't call them clean necessarily, but you do wow. sort of expect it. <laughs> yeah, now white gets mated. Sasha kind of evaluated this sequence much cleaner than assuming he wins from here, which I guess he does because he's ahead on the clock. Yep. So that's plus two. That's plus two. That's going to be that's plus two after to. seven or eight. Uh, it is. I don't know. It's four and a half, two and a half. So seven. Mm. Seven, yeah. Uh, Chess Weep says Grisha gave an interview that he gave, uh, saying that he gave up on being a perfectionist and for perfectionist, and maybe it helps. Yeah, I think eventually uh, he sort of had to, uh, because uh, uh, the the type of chess he played for the vast majority of his early career, and maybe even you know well into his uh, you know later years. Back to knight d3. It's I really think c takes d3 is just a better move. It's very, very curious that I mean he got a very good position taking with the pawn in game three or whichever whichever game that was, mm -hmm. and is now very insistent on not repeating it, which is very curious to me. Um but yeah, like the the the, the type of chess, specifically the approach to chess, not not the moves, not the openings, but the the, the approach to chess where he, he definitely was very much always searching for for the best move in the position uh for as long as he still had time on the clock pretty much um that at some point had to be if not completely abandoned at the very least toned down because uh it's it's much harder to maintain that type of concentration and then to be able to play on a minute you know, when you're 40 and not 19. Is Grichuk 40 now? I think he's 39. Yeah, you think everyone's 40. Well, I mean, 39 is them that them, them near 40. You know, in as much yeah, as anything. He's, he's yeah. only just turned 39. Yeah. He's not even 39 and a month. Yeah, it's 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 a very recent thing. Yeah, we were discussing it. 
we're discussing it with friends recently, and uh, I think more I, importantly, Grischuk's birthday is on Halloween. How did I not know this? Hmm. Yeah. Massive mistake on your part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now Black, yeah, Rook A7 is the move we're recommending. And now just BC, BC, Bishop D2, and Black is in a lot of trouble. Because White generally is very, very close to establishing sort of exactly the type of a setup which basically wins in these types of positions. Like if the Bishop gets to C3 and the Bishop is still stuck on A8, there is very little you can do about those things. Yeah. So, yeah. Finally, we're, we're like, we're maybe seeing a proper punish to to this setup yeah <laughs> i wonder what peter was discussing with friends yeah i well, wonder how my yeah. dub says <laughs> ghost joke fits well with the dodgy brand he's a funny guy he memes a lot and is generally likable yep fair yeah. point well made do you remember the grishuk origin story mm, no i wasn't there when he was uh <laughs> yeah, the point was that it's not like I forgot, but it's not something that is in my, I don't know, active active memory. But he sort of burst onto the scene when he got to the semifinals of the Daily Tehran uh, World Cup. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was, I think, 17 at the time. Uh, ended up, I think, losing to Shirov in the semis in a really crazy match, which he could have won. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a very, very close match. So he almost played oh, basically a world championship finals at age 17. And for a time, he was being used as an example of how horrible the knockout system is because, look, absolute randoms getting to the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> you know like look at this it's a circus like look at look at this i mean this is a nobody who somehow almost played the match against vision <laughs> and uh yeah then people got corrected life sort of corrected them on this point yeah that's pretty cool yeah. yeah i don't think the the knockout system is bad necessarily like it's it really but, isn't. But there just wasn't, and there's never any randoms that win the World Cup. It's just, I don't, no. I, I think it's, my main problem with it is for World Championship is you don't, you lose the head-to-head -head thing and you lose that connection to the past that like, you know, Magnus effectively beat Karpov because he beat the guy who beat the guy who beat the guy. And mm -hmm. like, other than people retiring or people dying, like we have that connection all the way through history. And I think that's the part that's worth preserving. But the World Cup is like a fantastic event on its own yeah, yeah. no i have i have I've, I've always been sort of loyal to it and in in recent years i've, I've become a huge fan actually and uh, i have absolutely no problem with it and you're yeah the point about randoms is like if you take the the whole history of fide knockouts event knockout events and you look at like the top fours are unbelievably stacked but even if you look at like the top eights there will be so few people there who are not very, very well-established household names. And we have, by this point, a reasonably large sample. Yeah. So, yeah, that argument has is completely dead in the water by this point. Like, it's it's just not, it does not favor randomness. You, no, you, you no know, I mean, it, it just doesn't. But yeah, I yeah, mean, I okay, it, Magnus can't win them, but other than that. Mm, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really is nothing of the sort. And you know, by this point, we basically have data to, to prove it. Yep. When is the next World Cup? Um, next year, I assume. They've not announced any. Not that I know of, but I also have not really been following anything. <laughs> what was your opinion on the world champion competing in the World Cup with the candidate's place on the line? Not a huge fan, uh, even though I understand that his participation makes the whole tournament a lot more attractive for everybody. So, like, if not for that, it would just be straight up wrong. But it is definitely a fact. So it has to be somehow, you know, factored into the equation. But mm -hmm. generally not a fan because I think uh, the competitive integrity uh, definitely suffers a little bit. 
uh, because this whole dynamic exists where you know he knocks out some people and then maybe doesn't knock out some others and you know spots might become available which aren't normally available this whole thing is all in all is it's it's not great for for the cycle but it is very very good for the world cup because mm -hmm. you know whatever he decides to play he immediately brings you know a level of magnitude bigger you know more level attention. of magnitude yeah of you know the attention you get to tournaments where Magnus is playing compared to the tournaments where he is not. Is, Tell me about it. Mm, such as the MDI, <laughs> says CK Watt. Correct. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, still, I, I think it's pretty clear that in an ideal world, we would have enough attention to the World Cup so that... You know. I, I kind of agree, but I also think that... I think the World Cup should be a much bigger event on its own. I, I don't think it need, necessarily needs the candidate spots, to be honest. Like, I think that's, that's I would be also okay fair. with just having a, a knockout world champion. Like, we could have a classical world champion and a knockout world champion, and then it gets the same kind of interest, I think. Mm. Because I think it's a unique enough, and, you know, it's obviously a tremendously expensive event, because to have a knockout event where you've got 128 players, you know, flights, hotels, all this stuff, Mm -hmm. huge prize money like and it's a spectacle as well it should it's very easy to understand for the general public as well I think yeah it's this, is, this is one of the one of the best ones. things about it exactly is exactly that that you know round robins in particular round robins in our game where you get draws and you get like these extremely arcane tie breaks at the end of it and you know sometimes you like you the tournament finishes and then you know somebody has to sit down with a you know pen and paper and, and do some some cal calculations in the meantime yeah sasha was more or less winning and then he played this move queen e1 and now he is back to being a bit worse the match was almost like if he wins this one he goes plus three with four to go mm -hmm. but the clock and yeah i mean yes he might still win this or by by flagging but yeah the pawn d5 was not supposed to be gone and and now he is just straight up lost but once again he had nine seconds so who knows I would not have been allowing rookie six. Interesting that he doesn't take, but he takes now. I would have taken on the previous move as well. Yeah. Um, but Andrew hasn't used it. She's like three seconds, last 10 moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's unbelievably quick. Yeah. And now he is winning, but I don't think four seconds is enough, honestly, in this position because, you know, there is enough. White should be able to, you know, continue playing for long enough that you. Yeah, knight c5, and then whatever. Yeah, just jump. One second is not going to be. And it's it's going to be close, actually, yeah? yeah. Whoa. But yeah, still. I mean, it's kind of heartbreaking, but then again, you know, this is very much part of the game. This you know, this is a 5-0 event, so. Yeah, very professional. Mm. Okay. And in three minutes, the other match will begin. Mm-hmm. So we've got a, a possible end of this match. If Sasha wins, that's the end. Yeah, so this is plus three with four to go, which is what? Five and a half, two and a half. Yeah, so he, he only needs one point out of the last four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like... No, we shouldn't jinx it. No, yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely... Seems like it could go either way. Yeah, could still like you. You lose a couple here, and yep. it, very, it very much becomes uh, becomes anybody's. I mean, on current evidence, and it, this is really not how I expected this to go because you know the chess part is reasonably close, but Sasha has won what definitely two, maybe even three games just straight up on the clock, including you know the previous one where he was a rook down at one point and. Mm -hmm. The previous one, I think, was the position was just drawn, right? But I don't remember exactly. But yeah, this yeah, is not this is this different. is not the storyline. This is not the storyline I expected, where he would just be, you know, by far the more efficient one in the very very late stages. Yeah, I'm just getting a little bit lo too low on the clock. I think mm. he's not like usually he can play reasonably well. I think in time trouble, but he's 
I think he yeah, he's leaving himself a little bit too much to. He is still yeah. like he he outplayed Sasha in that game we just finished watching mm-hmm. from a position where he had 30 seconds against a minute and a half. But he is leaving himself very, very little time and uh gets gets punished for it. Anyone play bullet with a graphics tablet because it's quicker than a mouse? I don't understand it. Also, I do. want to, I like, I want to find out, but I'm not interested enough to Google. So, what is an OSU exclamation mark, which appears to be the exactly the exact way to spell it, because it's been spelled with an exclamation mark twice in the chat. I've never heard of it. Ah, uh. it's a click game. Oh, okay. Nah, I don't know how people can move quickly on a tablet or a mm. phone. Mouse is hard enough. It's like hard somebody have to click fast and there are no cards. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sounds like an improvement. <laughs> Absolutely. And the other one did start, and we have a kind of a London in game one. So can we just make Sasha and uh, the Penguin play a 24-game match instead? Who plays the London? Like, what the? Didn't Andrew play the London in the first game? More than once, actually. But yeah, I'm still going to be, you know, pretending I'm very upset. Jordan's taking it serious. Mm. No 93. Yeah, just a straight up, straight up. Uh... Uh, London will switch to it, but, but for, for the time being, I want to finish. And also, it's no okay. I was I was a bit worried there because Sasha took about two minutes to take on before there, which before was actually a very interesting move there by by Andrew. Uh, not an obvious one, but you know, kind of logs down that bishop because we we're, we're not allowing b five before, and we're going to have a hard knight on that square. But yeah, his reaction does seem very logical. Just get his knight to c five. Put pressure on the e4 pawn, ask the question. I would pay to see Swiddler play also. How much? Yeah. Give us a number. I'll make it up. Yeah. Let's assign a numerical value to this statement. And I will still not do it because, yeah, like me playing click games is. No. I have to download it. Mm. Yeah. I watched a video today of, which appears to be the real uh, a real, real video, even though you, you you never exactly know these days. But it appears to be a real video of Mr. Beast stopping random people in the street and offering them. I think his initial offer was a hundred bucks, and mm-hmm. he found he found a taker at three hundred. So basically, he stopped a dude in the street and said, "Would he go to Paris and bring me a baguette for a hundred bucks?" And that was not met with approval and mm-hmm. then he found somebody to do it for 300 uh obviously flight and hotel included okay which i think is you know i mean it feels maybe slightly demeaning but also like you get a couple of nights in paris everything covered oh yeah if you get two nights 100 percent, i'm doing that one night mm, but two nights for sure yeah I'm yeah fine. like really Came didn't into see... the airport yeah I mean, I guess it's a longer flight from where they are to from where I am, but mm-hmm. still. Yeah, it's a, it's a transatlantic, so. <laughs> He'll dress up as a meerkat, but click games are a step <laughs> too far. Exactly, Laws. What's your price to fly to Paris as a meerkat? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That costume has been retired. But we still have it. We I know you still it, have it. We can it, make but... it happen. They yeah. will be waiting for you in the seat, Jess. Oh, Is it not the channel description of Mr. Beast's channel slightly demeaning? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a subscriber. Uh... Two nights, free holiday, 300 spend the money. Yeah, it sounds great. Like, Yeah, yeah. No, I've... The, the whole inclusion of 
like boy bring me a baguette makes it into a question otherwise yeah i really don't see why why you shouldn't yeah yeah i'll I'll buy the baguette as soon as i get there it'll be stale by the time we get back <laughs> he loses out yeah yeah and the dude actually bought 12 for some reason he decided to make sure and bought 12 baguettes got like a golf bag of baguettes and uh uh proudly brought them back Yeah, I'd do it. Mm. Yeah, I think I might as well. Yeah, haven't been to Paris in a while. I guess it depends where you have to go as well. Like, you know, there's some places maybe you wouldn't want to go. Yeah, you know, it definitely depends on exactly where you're being sent, for sure. Yeah, this is a really weird position, right? Because uh, I assume our viewers can also see it. It looks like. White has this wonderful light square control. The bishop has access to the d5 square and all that. Mm -hmm. And the bar keeps on insisting black is borderline winning, which I think is an interesting kind of a teachable moment about, you know, just how uh, important peace coordination is because the knight on b3 is horrible. The rook on a1 is horrible. Black has sort of full control over the b file. The knight on a4 continues threatening to jump either to c3 or c5, both of which are very strong. But you could be like if you didn't really think about any of those things very hard, you you could be very easily excused for thinking that maybe white is fighting for for advantage here. Yep. Look at that! Look at that d five square. Mm -hmm. Really doesn't matter. White is d five square active bishop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pawn. White, white is fighting for survival here because yeah, you like knight b six and then your bishop is gone and and like stuff just starts collapsing. Mm -hmm. But. You you do have to have some experience with let's say some neither positions where this particular setup might might occur actually like e five knight b three type neidorfs. That's a huge huge relief actually for for Andrew uh, because not, knight b six was just winning instead of knight c five there. Does customs actually allow you to bring a get from France to the US? Yeah, I was wondering, but there didn't seem to be an issue. Could just buy it at the airport. He never said it had to be a French baguette. I mean, yeah, but yeah. No, you you have to bring him a French. Yeah, baguette. yeah, you have to. Yeah, like for your own kind of self-respect. Mm, exactly. Very important. Very. This very is important. going to be a real time scramble, and this time Andrew's not down on the clock. Yeah. And there's no way you force a draw here. No, no. This will be played out and uh No, Andrew's yeah. winning this one. Yeah, Andrew's probably winning this one, yeah. That that's how it feels. That's how it feels. Yeah, you can actually take on F2, and that maybe does will force a draw, but it's gonna get him. Mm. Yeah. Really does feel that way. Just very solid, yeah. Position is now, yeah, it actually isn't, but I was going to say position might be lost now, but doesn't matter. So that's yeah. uh, that's down to minus two. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, so still, still, wins still only the, game. the first game, yeah. Still only the first game in the Jordan uh, versus uh, Corey. This King only seven looks very funky, but apparently Black is somehow completely fine because this one is not that safe either. But yeah, Sasha still needs a point, and they continue discussing this uh, uh, this line. I'm just gonna vanish for one or two minutes while I sure re restock on coffee, and I'll be right back. Sure. Yeah, it's it's very very strange to me that he continues that he continues taking with the night. It's very unclear to me why this is happening. This is one of the main lines, but yeah, he is going to be a bit worse here because yeah, he never gets time to play 6a5. Basically, you might even play 4a5 here straight away, separating the b4 pawn from the rest of the uh the rest of the pieces, and then it becomes very, very weak for the rest of the game. Yeah. 
It's interesting, though, that like he really has not had any success apart from that first game where he took with the pawn on d3. Um, and he continues playing this, including this game, which is basically a must-win game for him. Because if he if he draws this with black, he needs to win the last two. So you would you would assume he realizes that he wants to play sort of as sharply as possible and he wants to play as double-edged positions as possible. And this really doesn't look very double-edged. Maybe he wants to prove it can work. But I mean, in order to do that, you just like you finish this match and then you, you know, you fire up your engine and you ask it. I don't think this setting which is a, a you know a must win game with black pretty much i don't think this is the setting where you want to continue beating your head against the wall but yeah he clearly disagrees i'm not going to argue uh Jorge, in the meantime talking about who is the favorite uh, i mean Jorge is on 7 seconds though let's watch let's watch the genre in this match he's doing it very very professionally yeah and uh, we just watched something very instructive there because Jordan, yeah, Jordan continues declining to win a full rook there because he knows that a rook trade makes it much much easier for Jorge to to make sure. Yeah, now the rooks will come off. Yeah, rook e six and uh, yeah, Jorge. Yeah, that's very very nicely done by Jorge. He, he he managed to find a situation where Jordan couldn't keep the material on the board. Yeah. In the meantime, Andrew is going to be, uh, you know, fighting for equality here. It's kind of very important for him that he has queen d8. Otherwise, the pawn before is just gone. But he has queen d8 attacking the a5 pawn. The issue, though, is that uh, some kind of a position like this is still going to be worse for him because of that thing that we described earlier, where the bishop on b7 is just not great. And it is now very nicely controlled by a slightly different pawn chain. It used to be this pawn chain. Now it's this one, but the problems persist. Yeah, Savian Keimer is uh, is done. All the previous matches have finished. This is the very, very back end of the Grishuk uh, Tang match and the very beginning of the uh, Quarry uh, Fanfare's game uh, match. And we're done with the top 16. Kind of a longish tank here for uh, for Andrew. He basically needs to find the Queen D8 idea either immediately or after the capture, and he does, yeah. And he does. Okay, I'm back. What did I miss? Good stuff? Not, not very much. No, everything is... The other match appears to be an actual straight-up London mirror. Oh. Which is... Wow. Yeah, which is just tremendous. This is fun. that's an attack that's to do this at this time of night. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we discussed who would be invited back next year earlier, mm. and I'm kind of on the fence about Yordu because he was supposed to play yesterday. Now I'm up past my bedtime, now he's playing in London with both colors. Hmm. Very suspicious. Yeah, very, very questionable ethics there by by the young Dutchman. On the yeah, Sasha's the not airport. Sasha's not that much better, but he is definitely a bit better here. And once again, this is you know it might seem strange to claim that white is better because black has seemingly an outside passer and a couple of bishops. I don't like bishop takes e five though. I wouldn't have made that move. I think it makes Black's life a lot simpler to play this knight versus bishop position. Yeah, like bishop c8, bishop d7. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made that choice. Invite Jordan's sister and not him. That is a solid piece of advice, actually. Machtel yeah, we is. definitely need to invite some female players. Mm. This is definitely something that needs to be improved. But I can't convince Judith to play. Mm. Okay, I didn't ask, but 
She's she's quite aggressively retired. I don't think she's played anything at all. Yeah. Yeah, she is she is a very uh uh sincerely retired because there was at some point an idea was mooted of her coming back to play against Hoi Fan. Mm -hmm. And uh um the people who were arguing for that to happen were definitely serious and had access to to funding. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have been for peanuts. Yeah. She just wasn't interested. Yeah, I think she's one of the very few people that's just kind of cut it off completely. Although she's still like obviously around chess and interested in chess. She doesn't want to Yeah, no, she is, she's not removed from the game. She runs festivals and she's yeah, very yeah. much she's very much involved in promoting the game and does a very, very good job of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she's just not interested in returning to competitive competitive play. And uh, you can you can definitely understand. But she did beat Magnus in a park, so maybe that's how mm. we have, we can do it. We the next Mister Dodge Invitational is going to have to be in a park, so we can mm. get Judith to play. Okay, I think that's probably a good policy. Actually, if you just say I only play chess in parks, yeah, you this can't go too far wrong. This is kind of coming off the rails a little bit for for Sasha. Bishop Bishop B seven Bishop B four is very strong here, for instance. Mm -hmm. Six is also not bad at all, but Bishop B seven seems like it's going to hurt. Um, yeah, I really, really dislike this idea of giving up the second bishop. You could just like keep it on c3 for the rest of the game and be, I think, entirely fine. A very rare case, I think, of, of Sasha making like a very questionable positional decision. Very, yeah. very questionable. Oops. What happened there? Well, we got slightly pardoned. I I used to use I used to use the word amnestied, and then I realized that's not actually a word. Nah, it could be a word. Hmm. It's so you know close to being a word, but it's not a word. If you say it enough times, it becomes a word. Hmm. Yeah. Or if you misuse a word enough times, then people that, that will well. accept it. Like prestigious. Hmm. Magnus said this is a prestigious tournament yesterday, which I think I've at this point I've effectively brainwashed everyone in the chess world that there's only one prestigious tournament, and <laughs> it's one of my greatest achievements. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, Black is somehow completely lost now, which is a bit surprising. But I guess yeah, Rook D five and things start coming off. Uh, twenty seven seconds against twenty nine. Yeah, now ninety four is just straight up winning for White. Um, because you're kind of getting mated, rook d8 coming in with if the rook goes to some decent squares. Yeah, like this is also good, but knight e4 was just it's interesting that he didn't play knight e4. Yeah, queen e5. Oh, okay, now we're winning after knight e4. Whoa, what are we doing? I mean, yes, but you will get flagged here. This is not great. No, you you will, doesn't. yeah, you will get aggressively flagged here. Mm, maybe. Yeah, I guess he is getting flagged. Yeah. Actually, I don't know. I'm not sure. He sticks with the white squares. He can pre move as. No, not as good as anyone. <laughs> Let's be real. But... Yeah, yeah. No, that was a that was a very strange one because he was just straight up winning with a move that you would. He okay, but he gets just... the pawns now. No, no, nah. no, it doesn't. No. Nah. Yeah, close, but close, but no cigar. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, minus one. That's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, if it gets to minus one, it really becomes anybody's. And it's a. I think at that point, like when we had this position, I think he had twenty seconds. And if you play ninety four here, you are. I think your favorite with his with his skill set, your favorite to actually win this because the rook mm -hmm. can't really go anywhere because you just straight up get mated. And uh, yeah, the, the way not to get mated immediately is something like rook f5, after which, you know, if all else fails, you can do something like this. And then, like, the c pawn will cost you a, a bishop, and then you probably are in time to just collect every single pawn and at least not lose. Uh, Jordan is better, not winning, but better. 
but we're watching we're watching the conclusion of this so we, we yeah. have two games to go Sasha's leading by one point Sasha not happy, yeah, I mean, clearly. Very, very obviously not happy and uh, with good reason. He did all the hard work in that game because he was in trouble, like objectively in trouble over the board, on the board. Mm -hmm. And he solved all of those problems and uh, wasn't even behind on the clock at that point. Like the one, the, the point we were just discussing, I don't think he was behind on the clock. Even. So yeah, that's... Uh, no, that's a tough one to lose. And... Mm. But I think I don't think he'll get tilted. He doesn't tilt very much, but no. he I mean nobody's entirely untiltable, but he, he is as close as as they get, you know, among the people I know. Who's the least tiltable top player? You know, I'm 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 tempted to actually nominate him as as that person, because uh, he has that record over over more than one discipline, uh -huh. and and that's uh, you know an important distinction. You think Ding? I don't know. I think he, like Madrid, is I think very very good evidence in favor of that theory. But I think I've seen him. Uh, uh, get affected by by results, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean Madrid obviously is just like I just I don't recall him losing in like one of these on online events and then like maybe losing like three in a row or something like that. I don't. Mm. Know. Wesley, I don't know Wesley. You know he's tilled, and once again, since I you know on a like a minuscule scale. In every single regard, compared to Sasha, I I, I used to be a poker player as well. Mm -hmm. Me tilting uh, always uh, had this exact kind of uh, like I wouldn't like I would start feeling this kind of cold disinterest. Yeah, it's like the apathy thing. Yeah, it's rather than rage. It's apathy. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there, you feel kind of flushed, and you no longer really care. Mm -hmm. And that impacts your play. Uh, and like Wesley, if you remember, let's say the Berlin candidates, mm -hmm. it's a kind of a chess version of that, right? It wasn't going yeah. well, so he just mentally checked out. He continued playing. He didn't finish minus five or anything, but he wasn't there. He was very much prepared for for the event to be over. Yeah, yeah, that, and that's definitely a kind of a, a, a genre of tilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, one one of the answers might be the current world number ten. So maybe we should just talk about something else now. <laughs> He's not very tiltable, but mm. this board looks like an interesting position. <laughs> Sasha's doing something really weird. Like he's in trouble here, and he was doing completely fine against the Londons, and then Andrew played the the uh, the Torre, and Sasha's doing something really, really funky against the Torre in this game. I don't like what he's doing at all. Uh, Andrew Bishop G four basically after ninety seven. I think Andrew uh, was sitting there trying to figure out if he's already winning or not. Mm -hmm. And if he just takes on d7, let's say queen d7, and you just like play rook f1, bishop f3, you are so much better here. It's one of those like Magnus would instantly call it like a reverse Carlsbad, but like it's the absolute horrendous version of it for black. Everything is in the wrong spot. Like you have problems defending even the d5 pawn. Like you have no calm to play. You 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 really are stuck. And instead, Andrew tried winning the game on the spot with bishop g4. And now black is kind of okay-ish. Uh, because d2 is hanging and you can play like bc6, bishop c6, rook b8. And uh, you get... This is a very, very typical type counterplay where like your pieces are all misplaced. You get positions like there are specific Karakan, ed5, cd5, c3 lines where you get this exact structure. 
Mm -hmm. And black very often is just worse. Sorry, just better, despite seemingly being a pawn down for for not very much because of just how much play uh, you get on the queen side with all of this. I think here it's important. Yeah, this wasn't the best move, but black is still fine. The interesting thing about this position was you could have played these six. The point being that after knight b3, this bishop on c6 is just in trouble. It has no squares because it comes to like it comes to grief. Mm -hmm. But Sasha didn't see it, and he went for something that is also extremely logical, blowing the center up immediately. And yeah, these types of positions are extremely dangerous for white. Like you do something like yeah, rook fc8 is fine. He's trying to equalize. There were moves here which were stronger in terms of playing for advantage. And Andrew is kind of forcing him to make them, like putting the bishop on f4 and then just playing for positional compensation. Like including this check is always useful. But basically just putting the bishop on f4 and then playing a5 and playing for like a5, a4 counterplay, d5, d4 counterplay. White is just very, very stuck. White really doesn't have anything going for him apart from being seemingly a healthy pawn up. You also kind of have to play faster. I think he is trying to find a way to make a force draw here, uh, which I think is kind of counterproductive. Just play. You're not worse. Yeah. In the meantime, Jordan is... I think he won game one or game two, potentially, whatever that was. He won game two and he... And is completely winning in game three. Yeah. yeah. Bishop h1, bishop f2, bishop f4 was slightly stronger, but this is still fine. This is the kind of a setup I was talking about where the bishops on f4 and e4 are just so strong that uh, you you have tremendous amounts of counterplay just based on those two bishops and like the rook on the eighth, queen f6, and you play on the king side. And you always have an additional like idea of a4 takes b2 somewhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're you're just despite being a pawn down, you're just completely safe. You're not worse, remotely worse here. But yeah. It's still going to get down to to seconds, and and then they will play. But yeah, this could make a very interesting Armageddon game because, mm. yeah, Andrew gets black in the Armageddon. Yeah, now Bishop of three actually wins the pawn back, but it also kind of you, you cash in where you don't necessarily have to cash in. But yes, Asha decides to 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 do it and. Uh, yeah, Just I don't like this end game. This is well. Too... I mean, his his <laughs> rook no. d two though. Yeah, rook d two is pretty. pretty oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But still, okay. Yes, he's thirty seconds. I mean, he's half. He's yeah. He's half a minute ahead. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be losing this. In fact, he might be winning this. But like, I don't know. Maybe that might be a stretch, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they're going to, actually going to play this one out. I think they're both mm -hmm. too quick. Well, I mean, if, if they do play it out, something happens. But yeah, they kind of respect each other a little too much. So Sasha is on six points. He needs a draw here, right? Yep. And Andrew remarkably seemingly goes, what is he supposed to, like, what happens if Sasha goes 9g5 here? Like, d4, rook8, what happens if you go 9g5? Yeah. I mean... Hello? Ah, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. This move exists. I think I even played it in this particular position. It's just not great. The issue with it is that it's just not very good. But Chris Chuck knows, have... knows this. He's been here before. He's he terrorized Anish famously. Mm. Yeah. And this is a question you you like experienced sites of sites of players will all have. Uh, you know, a reply to this particular question, because obviously, you know, every now and again, you will find yourself in a situation where you're playing your beloved Zaitsev in, a, in an absolutely must-win situation where you just mm -hmm. cannot continue repeating. So people do have... Jordan is losing that game now. Whoa. Well, I mean, he might not lose, but he is lost on the board. We'll we'll still only watch this until it finishes, obviously. This is way too... Yeah, we've got yeah. lots of time for the other one. Yeah, this move exists, and yeah, it's an attempt to, you know, make the position more understandable. It's not the best move in the position. E5 was very strong, but Sasha decides to, to go for something which, you know, allows him to simplify to some extent. I don't disagree. 
Mm-hmm. So it's a decent practical choice. But yeah, if five was, as I'm sure our viewers have seen from the bar, the five was giving a large advantage. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan is back to being okay. Yeah, this is apparently not a very good move, but once again, the, the reason it's not very good is not immediately obvious. Like you you start with bishop g5. I think it's possible to realize how strong bishop g5 is often is in these types of positions because we obviously want to be playing knight e3, but if you stop to think, I think it's possible to realize just how much better all of these positions look if you get to play ninety three with a bishop already on a good square, because you have locked it down. Uh, Jordan, Jordan's won his game now? Jordan has even won that game. Wow. Okay, we have a, an important question. Why aren't you wearing unicorn ears? Hmm. Somebody provided me with unicorn ears. That's a very poor excuse. Yeah, I know. Okay, Jordan is doing something very, very funky. Yeah, because I'm aware of uh, of this line. Like this, this line I know a little bit about because this mm -hmm. is some really old theory which isn't supposed to be any good, but, you know, kind of famous. But he started with 94, and here you, you kind of have to wonder if d6 is any good, but apparently not. So we will actually get what I was just talking about. Because the oh, okay, yeah, you have to play bishop f1 here, and he hasn't. So Jordan's gamble is going to to pay off very, very well. Interesting. In the meantime, bishop b6 has been played, and apparently queen d3 is borderline winning now because knight g4 is a huge threat. But I don't know how obvious the move queen d3 even is. But there are other choices. It's not the only move in the position. You can it's also play. Only move I would look at. You can also start with a4, and if, if black plays b4, exactly. If, you, if black plays b4, then we can play queen d3, uh, queen d3, and uh, uh, in connection with those threats, we will also be threatening the pawn on a6. I mean, for the time being, Sasha is very much in control. He's slightly below on the clock, but he has a very good position and a very safe position as well, which is extremely important in the context of, of the game. And it won't be that easy for Andrew even to you know, make this into a mess. You kind of have to wonder, I, you know, I, I see on my screen that this is impossible, but you have to ask yourself exactly why. Mm -hmm. It's because I blundered knight d3 and then a b, and we lose. Bishop b4 has been played, so Sasha probably, like, you need to see knight d3 there to play bishop d2 here. Rook moves are not horrible, but bishop d2, of course, he would like to play bishop d2 here. Or maybe a takes b5, actually, because bishop e1, queen e1, followed by ba6 is going to be pretty good. Yeah, looks like he's got it all under control. Yeah. Andrew, for the, you know, for the last couple of games, Andrew's clearly made an effort to speed up in the opening. Mm -hmm. And is sort of winning the clog battle for the first 20 moves. Yeah, Bishop D2 played. I mean, to be fair, he has played this opening six times. So, like, he should. Well, not this line. This, this is actually a very. <laughs> I fresh, know, I know, I know. Very fresh position for them. <laughs> they haven't seen this one. Just humor me. <sighs> humor. What is that? <laughs> Takes on b4 now. Yeah, bishop b4, 93 pretty much wins. I mean, not wins, wins, but yeah, he hasn't found it. Yeah, he played knight of three and a b5, and he's actually worse now. As I said, 93 is not an obvious move. It's not, it's not very easy to spot. Mm -hmm. And I guess maybe he thought he can take on a5 with the rook here, and now he is realizing that the bishop on a5 doesn't survive. So, huh. Yeah, he not now he needs to he needs to find a way to to continue like takes takes queen d4 I think is your default but then knight c6 is very strong yellow for a second there I thought this just equalizes but I think knight c6 is extremely strong so he's gone rook c1 yeah he's just going to struggle to equalize now it's just a pawn down after a bunch of natural looking moves yeah queen d6 is pretty good. 
takes takes. Yeah, now knight c2 have bishop h7, but knight c4 is quite strong. Knight c4 is really the only move the machine likes here that, in machine's opinion, gives black anything at all. Everything else we've equalized with white, but I think it's findable. And the point being that after you play knight c4, c7, c5 becomes a very strong threat. Hmm. Yeah, this looks very tricky now. Yeah, yeah. Knight c4 it. played. Knight c4 played, and uh, yeah, this is going to be difficult for Sasha. And then we get an Armageddon. Yeah, if this is yeah, one. if Andrew wins this game, then we have Armageddon. This is a must-win mm. game for Andrew. Um, and then we get our second Armageddon. We before today we didn't have any mm -hmm. in the previous two editions. In the previous two editions, even. Mm -hmm. Well, that's remarkable. Yeah, this is now sort of okay-ish for for white because we we get to spoil the structure. Just take stakes, and you have to play like rook somewhere. B one, D one doesn't really matter all that much. But it will still come down to clock management. And uh, yeah, this this was a a bit too long of a tank, but now yeah, now he's fine. If he, you still have to play precisely because you have to take one c five, and you have not to be scared of rook takes f two because bishop four just equalizes here apparently, and he probably sees it in the end because there's really not very much choice. If you don't take on c five, you're much much worse. Okay, yeah, I was worried about that. He's gone rook f one, and now he is genuinely in trouble. Whatever black does. Yeah, knight f4 is very strong. I think the point is queen c5 just loses to queen b7. Oh no, queen b7 doesn't win. So maybe you can take on c5 in practical terms because what actually does win after queen c5 is not that easy. It's knight e2. Full. Yeah, yeah, he played queen b7. I kind of held, had a feeling that this is what you assume is winning, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. And now white actually stabilized. Yeah, you're not... I mean, you're worse because knight on f4 is extremely annoying, but it will come down to who is faster. And there's like a 15 second difference. So yeah, Knight G2 is working now, I think. Oof. Yeah. So yeah, that was, you know, considering considering how good his position was out of the opening, this will be very annoying for Sasha. Queen G3 or Queen G1 forces the Queens off. But you just lose that endgame on 16 seconds against 30 against uh, Andrew. No yeah, way you don't. We are going to see Armageddon. Mm. We have an important question from chat. From Bielsa Dub Chess, it says, is Dodgy playing in Sunway this December? I am going to be playing in Sunway Seat Chess with Chessable Sunway Seat Chess Open, along with lots of other people. Yeah. Lots of strong grandmasters. And as we as we announced even before the match started, that this will be a match, and it has been a match. Yeah. Andrew came back from three down with four to go, which is incredibly impressive. Three, and a half. three 307 players in the open section mm. of CHS. While they're preparing for the Armageddon, this is... 42 Grandmasters of Chess. Oh, it's 42 now. Mm -hmm. Should we stop taking entries? Probably, yeah. Jordan is 2-0 up? No. No, no, no. Jordan is 2 and a half, half. Yep. Doing a half half up with this one. Let me just check we're not gonna have a break before Armageddon. It might take them a couple of minutes to set it up. I think there was a slight delay before the last one. I do have a yellow filter on my camera. It's for branding purposes, because it's the same color as my logo. I think at some point I should probably get rid of the filler. But mm. not this tournament. Maybe when I go to see Jess, I'll just walk around in technical. Mm. What is the Armageddon format? Is it four against five? Well, okay. Yes. Uh, Jordan blundered a full rook, which is suboptimal. Uh, no, it's five against four. Yeah. What did I say? Four against five. Okay. That would be fun too. Yeah, and... Uh... We continue debating the sides of it, which is kind of funny. <laughs> I 
They just they really want to play this position. Yeah. But I mean, come on, just take with the pawn on d3. Like, what are you like? Why are you why are you doing this to yourself? It's just so difficult for me to understand. Yeah, why? Why exactly? This isn't actually an improvement according to the engine, as far as I can see on my screen. Uh, Sasha played a five immediately without trading on e four in a couple of moves, mm -hmm. a couple of games ago, but it's a surprise. So he's winning some time on the clock. The point being that black can play bishop c8 now. You have this double attack with queen e1, but then knight c3 followed by queen g6 is sort of annoying enough with this counter play against the h3 pawn that you don't get to win uh, the, the pawn so comfortably. Like, I don't know why king h2. I, yeah, because the queen gets to d3 and then your advantage dissipates. But if you haven't. Like it feels like Sasha is somehow also getting little snippets of preparation in between games, whereas Andrew doesn't really feel like he has checked anything. Maybe he has checked that before in ninety five or something, but once again, our screen was saying something else. So nah, he they've been playing too quickly. They haven't. I don't think he's checked anything in between games. I mean, Sasha's Sasha's played. Bit, like between some of these sites of definitely like he either figured it out after the game or if he found a way to just very briefly uh very briefly check somewhere although yeah they, they the next game starts more or less instantaneously so i don't know how you even do that it's probably just very nah his brain just keeps working he just keeps thinking yeah i can't relate him <clears throat> okay so this one Already like a minute and a half. Uh, this decision to include rookie 494 and then play 4A5. This has already cost Andrew close to two minutes, maybe perhaps even just straight up two minutes. And he's giving a, a minute odds anyway. This seems weird. Do we yeah. sure there's no connection problems? No. No, I think he's there. I think he is there. I mean the camera work camera is working, so. You're okay. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big thing. Hmm. He's got ninety three straight away. Uh, which isn't great according to to engines because queen d three bishop b two or bishop d two is quite strong. The difference being, I guess, that you have abandoned control over the g six square, which. Uh, could have been useful in some scenarios. Yeah, rook c8, and now we go takes, takes. I mean, bishop d2 or bishop b2, then we take on g6, we take on c3, and rook b1 at the end there is extremely annoying because once again, play very much revolves around the fact that the bishop on b7 is just very, very poor. And also, I think Sasha will be forced into all of those moves because he really doesn't have any choice. Allowing queen g6 here without attacking the knight on c3 would just lose you the c4 pawn, basically. So, yeah, the assumption has to be like, yeah, queen e7 may have been stronger, but you have to assume that this is what you plan. And now knight f5 somehow is very strong according to the engines, or stronger, but even that endgame after queen g6, I think, is difficult to hold. And also, it's three and a half against a minute, basically. No, not not exactly a minute, but close to a minute. Jordan, in the meantime, is trying to do like the the, the full on Botvinnik masterpiece in the in the Nimzo, giving mate on the king side, and these types of structures should should be very very good for him. Uh, time for Sasha to finally uh, tank in this game as well. I think he is considering knight of five. Otherwise, he would have already gone for that end game. Yeah. And this is going to be an unpleasant surprise for Andrew because I think you it's very easy to just not realize the move even exists. And now somehow rookie one is very strong. I don't know how easy that is to see. The point being that you are forcing this trade and then your queen is protected. So if you play bishop c8, we can just go back to d4 and this is not hanging. In these end games, actually, you just lose the b4 pawn and you are, you know, wow, and he sees it and plays it instantly. 
Yeah, now we take with a knight. Well, he took with a bishop. Whoa, okay. Yeah, this is wrong because like how do you how do you unpin yourself? And queen f6, you should not have like voluntarily unpinning those pieces is doesn't feel right, but now bishop takes a five white is supposedly even maybe slightly worse. 50 seconds for Andrew. This is gonna be tense. It's gonna be very tense, yeah. Like I don't know, I don't know who I like here, but I mean the position is good for black simply. If you take on a five here, eventually the bishop will come out and pick up the a5 pawn. Your c pawn will be gone. But you will have won the a5 pawn in the meantime. But yeah, it's interesting that Sasha played rookie one so quickly and then took with the bishop instead of taking with the knight. I was playing really well up to that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're you're just not better. You're you know, if if anything, you're slightly worse here as white. Uh, which is a kind of a yeah, unpleasant situation to find yourself in considering where the match is. Yeah, but 28 seconds, this is going to be very... Yeah, you just have to start making moves. Yeah, you have to commit to something and just start making moves. G6 wasn't the best. It's still fine, but it wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't the best. Yeah. Maybe he thought he can go knight before knight a6 here, but then actually the c-pawn becomes a queen, so you, you, you can't actually do that. You can go for these pawn endings because I think, yeah, I think, whoa, this loses. This wow. pawn ending is lost for black. Andrew has miscalculated something horribly. Just king a5, king a6, you're winning. Wow. Yeah, kind of a loss of nerve at the very, very last moment there by Andrew. It's a kind of a like a very strange miscalculation. Maybe he thought he is in time here to win the c4 pawn. But now the c pawn is just a queen, basically. You play c5, you queen the pawn. Yep. Wow. And he just resigns. Okay, congratulations to Sasha. This became a lot closer than it felt like it had any any right to. Yeah, Andrew came back incredibly well. Mm. Yeah, very exciting match. In the meantime, I think Jordan is plus one up, right? As far uh, plus as two, plus two, yeah, okay. I yeah. lost track a little bit. Three and a half to one and a half. Mm -hmm. So, if Jordan wins the next three games, we can go to sleep. Yeah, I can go to sleep. You'll probably go play card games. Yeah, very likely. Very, very likely. Although it is kind of late here as well, so I don't know. Mm. I might decide I'm a sensible person. And just you know, listen to cricket podcasts. And... I think we're going to be joined by at least one of the players. Mm. Hello, hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. congratulations. Yeah. Well played. Yes, thank you. That was a close match. Yeah, I'm very upset with how it went. I have. I don't know. It was ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, it didn't didn't seem like you you needed to 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 make it to make it this close. Although some of the games you won in the middle, where you were just basically faster and you were winning, you know, all kinds of positions because you were faster, also looked. Like yes, but every game I had like three minutes against one, and better position. Terrible, terrible. I mean, no, but I, I don't understand the game I lost when I had rook against bishop because I know it's much easier to remove with the rook. I I lost so many times on chess with bishop against rook. You lose even like you have huge time advantage. You lose 10 seconds against two uh, with bishop against rook. And uh, we had almost the same time and I lost with the rook. Uh, I'm ex no, but I'm extremely upset with how it went. Out. I'm actually more upset than when I lost yesterday to Dink. Yeah, I I don't know how to react to that. No, I just I don't understand. I, I mean, he's like not. I mean, I understand when it's 
two times someone is twice faster than you. I mean, Sarah is, but when the guy is like, I don't know, 15 times faster than the mouse, I mean, why does he play chess? I mean, there are <laughs> much more money and other activities when you are so great with the mouse. I'm very upset. No, I mean, of course, he's talented in chess too, but with the mouse, he's just outstanding. And with chess, okay, there are many talents. Yeah. 10 out of 10, no notes. <laughs> like, <laughs> what can you say to that? Hi, Andrew. Thanks for playing. Uh, thanks for having me. It was a, an interesting match. For sure. Yeah. That last game, I just played too slow, I guess. But taking on D4 is, is just ridiculous. I think I should get flagged even, even if I'm faster, though. So just play. Even too slow. you, maybe we will get flagged. Yeah. Situation. <laughs> it's a bit hard. With yeah, well, you, I, I understand that nobody really is interested in this, but I am, so I will ask. You got an absolutely fine position the first time you had this when you took on d3 with the pawn. And then, like, the next five times you took with the knight and you had a collection of worse positions and you continued taking with the knight until the bitter end. And this yeah. is just, like, mystifying to me. Why? Well, during the bathroom break, I looked at it for, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> but I didn't have time to... I probably should have tried taking with the pawn again. That was not not a good practical decision. Yeah. It was actually my preparation for the game against Peter um, from uh, Novosibirsk uh, Russian Championship, but he played Marshall instead. And then, yeah, I was very proud of this idea. But then nobody played Zaitsev against me for yeah. like five years. And so, and then finally Wesley played it, but uh, I found it long time ago, long mm. before Wesley played it. Mm. I mean, okay, if like if you analyze deeply, you can survive with black, but it's uh, an, an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also like from a practical viewpoint, it seemed like taking. I, I don't want to take too much time on this, but. Just the character of the position, if you take with the pawn and you take only four in most lines, feels like you shouldn't be suffering all that much. And if you take with the knight, it becomes a very kind of an all-in situation. You, you have to find something immediate or you will be worse. So, yeah, we were very much confused. But at least I was, uh, you know, commentating on it time and time again when, when you continued debating this one point and it continued going this way. But obviously, it's not it's not very important. I wonder, Andrew, if you were listening to Sasha's interview while you were getting mic'd up. Oh, I only caught like the last yeah twenty seconds or so. Yeah, the suggestion basically is if you're if you're so gifted at, <laughs> at mechanical stuff, why is why is chess your first choice when you can be I don't know a StarCraft pro or what have you? For some reason, I just never got into those games when I was younger. Like only now I've started started playing more more video games. But when I was young, I don't know. No, but it's not but purely mechanical. Best. It's actually much more complicated because it's like how to say when you manage to make sensible movements with the mark, not just make fast movements. It's uh -huh. one thing, but to make fast and sensible, this is amazing. I mean, what Andrew does. In this regard, I mean, she's just maybe number one in the world, at least in chess. Thanks. I guess in some um, uh, counter strike, maybe there are similar level guys. But, I mean, it's just uh, unbelievable. I mean, uh, Andrew, uh, because when you flagged me with the bishop against rook, I know that <laughs> rook is yeah. much faster normally sure. than the bishop. Usually, you cannot be flagged with the rook against bishop. Uh, it was just, I could not believe. I see, I, I lost on time, and you have four seconds, and we started with the same time. I don't know, it was shock. I mean, um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. 
Yeah, I, I enjoyed watching your games in the qualifier, Andrew. I commented on some of them and hey. watched even the Lee Chess qualifier, and it, it was just... Yeah, watching you get to end games where, you know, I think, okay, you're definitely going to win almost every drawn end game was very enjoyable for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for playing, guys. Um, Sasha, you play Alan Peugeot tomorrow. Is the mm -hmm. same time okay for you? Yes, yes. Perfect. It's the awesome. perfect time for me because I already managed to put kids to the bed and it's also not too late, so it's, it's fantastic. Uh, I really appreciate that you put me on that time slot. No, no problem. I'm both. I'm very glad that both of you were able to play. I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, well played. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, so we have... Yeah, the, the, the chat saying that uh, Andrew looked happier than, than Sasha, I think that's that's very much on point. Yeah. Yes, that was... I mean, I, 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 I've known him and, you know, loved him as a brother for the last, I don't know, 25 years, it seems like, slightly less. But I, you know, I, I still really don't know how he will react to things. And it's, mm -hmm. it's always... It's always very impressive the way the way he views the world and you know just yeah. his yeah. attitudes attitudes towards things are a constant sort of you know the best kind the best kind of amazement. <laughs> yeah, definitely always is good for interviews. Mm. So he'll Sasha will play Alan Pichot tomorrow. And the other ones we have so far are Daniel Dubov against Ralph, which I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Magnus against Kirill Shevchenko. Mm -hmm. And Sam Savian against the winner of this one. Yep. Uh, which is getting very close, actually. Uh, Jorge won a couple uh, with White, so it's only plus one now for, mm -hmm. for Jordan. And this one is... I mean, he's doing well. He's a pawn up, but it's still a kind of a mess uh, with the White King, more or less entirely devoid of devoid of cover. And the only thing Sasha is happy about is that the kids have already been put to bed. Yeah, <laughs> he is a you know. I'm pretty sure. Like I, I haven't actually seen him do any of that stuff, but in my head, he's a very, very good father. And I'm pretty like I'm pretty confident in that assessment. Mm -hmm. I can believe that. Yeah. So we still have a bunch of games in this match. This has been a very long stream. <laughs> yeah, well, more so for you. But so mentioning bed or we might lose dodgy. Exactly. Like this is way past my bedtime. I've been here since five PM. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a long stream. Yeah, you're you you you're on air for five and a half hours by this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm I have it easy. I only joined for the very very later stages. I feel like you must feel in after why can't say with these long. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, that's a full rook, by the way. Oof. That is a full rook. Yeah. And that's plus two. Just like that, it's plus two with uh, how many to go? This was game. Yeah. So it's four and a half, two and a half. Yeah. Jordan needs two more points out of the last five. And he goes for the Petro. Who are these people? Very serious. Yeah. Very, very serious. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with the world with the word serious. It really isn't on this kinds of repertoires for, for Blitz tournaments. I don't know. Elianov did play the Berlin yesterday. Oof. Which I forgot to ban from the tournament this year, so he <laughs> got away with it. But yeah. Yeah, I need to make sure it's in the regulations again. Yeah. Then again, we know the chess players never read the regulations. So mm, it's fine. I can, I can find them either way. It's... Mm. 
Yeah, that's fair. Is it more tiring commenting like... or playing for five hours? I have no yeah. idea. I wouldn't know what it's like to play for five hours. So. Yeah. When I began playing in Linares tournaments, which was late 90s, I think that was sort of just the beginning of the era when uh, uh, Senor Entero started at least semi-seriously threatening to fine and potentially ban people for short draws. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there were some interesting discussions there because people would still occasionally make what amounted to a short draw and then would try to, you know, argue that this was a perfectly played game and, you know, it should ex escape censure. So, yeah, I, I feel like you banning the Berlin would lead to similar type conversations. No, I banned it last year. Oh, you actually did ban it? Yeah, it was in the regulations. I made a video and everything. Huh. Ah. This is, by the way, not a blunder because he wants knight of three, queen e3, and he wants to take on a7. Mm -hmm. The engine says there is no mate, and you should actually accept the sacrifice, but it's interesting to see whether Jordan believes that uh, because you do have to make some rather uncomfortable moves because, yeah, like here, your bishop is also hanging, so you will have to give it up, and you most likely also have to give it up the b7 pawn to create the square for the, uh, for the queen. Mm -hmm. But you are doing quite well. Uh, because you have won quite a lot of material on the other side of the board, of course. Uh, so it is playable and advisable to do that. But as you can see from the pause, Jordan is now realizing that, you know, instead of that, he can, for instance, play like rook h e8 and be, you know, entirely safe without needing to calculate anything at all. Mm -hmm. So he is kind of weighing the necessity of playing a somewhat sharp position, considering he is two up uh, in the match. Interesting, yeah, interesting decision by by Jorge. You have to wonder whether he has already seen it when he was playing rook h1, because like here he is actually quite significantly better if he goes h3. Uh, mm -hmm. But he played bishop d3 quite quickly, and after the knight d5, uh, these things are kind of coming. And well, c5. Uh, ah, but that's because Jorge did not play rook d1. Jorge took on a7 straight away, which is actually slightly weaker, I think, than the other one. But rook h8, the engine doesn't like very much and says now after b4, there's a lot of compensation. Uh, hey, Mr. Doji, what about a tournament where the players can ban each other's openings at every game? I've, you know, this has been floated more than once, I think, in chess circles, the, this idea that it very much exists in video games mm -hmm. of uh, like people being allowed at least one ban prior to the match starting. Yeah, I guess like the problem is where do you put the ban? Yeah, is it move, move one, move two, move? Yeah, six? I think like, unfortunately, unfortunately for us, yeah, we we don't have you know such a clear cut way uh, of of banning things as some some other video games do, where you can ban a class or a hero or mm. something like I, that. I like the idea. Um, yeah, yeah, I would very much like it attempted at least once. Yeah, in a in a tournament of some kind, I think. I'm, I'm, you know, very much in favor of various, you know. I mean, pro probably you can do it is that white gets to ban black's first move. Mm. That's probably the most straightforward way to do it. Yeah. I, I, once again, this has this this can be discussed, and I'm sure some kind of a uh, reasonably equitable solution can be found. And I'm I'm very much in favor of trying out every kind of you know weirdness that exists because uh, you know by this point i think all of us have seen enough uh you know round robins where nothing new is being attempted and uh nobody really wants to continue seeing only that so i was always like the idea which i think uh uh, Alejandro was very much at the forefront of pushing the idea of finally introducing uh, the double elimination tournaments into chess. I thought was a very good idea, and I'm happy that it's now happening. And I would also like all kinds of other things, at least trialed once, and then maybe discard yeah. it if it doesn't work. But why not? Why not give it a try once? Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways you can play around with formats in chess, and it's one mm -hmm. of the 
Yeah, there's a lot of really unexplored things which we we haven't seen yet. This is five and a half, two and a half. Uh, so plus three with. Uh, I'm not. I'm not writing against Corey. Yeah, that would be unfair because he is the underdog now. He's three points down, but I am somewhat rooting for a quick end to this match. Mm -hmm. so then I can go to sleep, which would be delightful. Twenty five check B four. This apparently exists. Yeah. This apparently exists. I think I've seen it. And then 92 rupee one, yeah. All kinds of gambits like this, which I think would have been, I mean, maybe unthinkable is a bit strong, but would not have been, you know, immediately accepted in the previous generations are now very seriously being played. And it's it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun to watch. It's also good that Jordan does this because obviously, you know, he only really needs a couple of draws, but he is also, you know, not making, you know, not allowing this to influence his decision making. He's just playing kind of straight up proper openings, asking questions. Yep, he's pretty good. Yeah. Hair match, Richard versus who? I mean, Livio, Livio Di Tornisipano just beats Richard. Hands down, mm -hmm. in terms of like if, if we're only talking, you know, simple, you know, length and you know, luxuriousness of of main, so to speak. I think Dieter is a very clear number one in the chess world, but I don't know. I think Hans has the the volume. Yeah, but that's a, that's a different different style though. Mm -hmm. Korobov, yeah, Korobov as well. Speaking of Korobov. Mm -hmm. I did notice that he recently entered the chessable side. He did only just get added to the, the list, I think, two days ago. Mm. Where there are 42 grandmasters of chess, and you guys should all come and see Peter. Absolutely. He promised me he will dance in C chess. Possibly yeah. with Jan, or maybe separately. Yeah. Of all the things that didn't happen, that one didn't happen the most, yeah. <laughs> How are you going to spend your days in CGS when your work day only starts at 4.30 p.m. when the round starts? Yeah, I've been thinking of getting back into poker. Fair enough. <laughs> it probably won't happen because it really is like that game has not really been good to me. Uh Probably because I have never read a book, but maybe for some other reasons as well. But what about you spend the first few days reading poker books and, and then, then take up poker? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to be said for that plan of action. How much of this tournament is being played today? This is the last match of today. Tomorrow we will have four more matches. And this is also the last match of the top 16. So tomorrow we'll have the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we've got four quarterfinals, probably starting at 5 p.m. CET or CETT, which is Central European Dodgy Time, <laughs> which exists wherever I am. I don't know exactly when each match will be. I know Grishuk against Alan Pichot is going to be at 8 p.m. CET. I'm mm -hmm. not sure about the other three. We need to confirm with the players. But Magnus will play tomorrow against Kirill Shevchenko, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, should be should be a very interesting match to watch. Uh, very good to see Kirill doing well. Very happy mm -hmm. about that. It was a very close match today, the first Armageddon game. Mm -hmm. Kirill has made history by winning the first ever Armageddon game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was the Dutch invitation. Yes. Sasha was too slow. That is what he will be remembered for. When the history books are written 50 years from now. Did you see any of Daniel's interview yesterday? No. He said his the favorite tournament that he's won recently was the Halloween tournament. He said it made him happier than winning the Russian Super Final. Yeah, I can believe that.
there's there's definitely imagine how happy he'll be if he wins this tournament would Peter trade in his eight Russian championships victories for one MDI? Probably not, sadly. Like, maybe some, but not all eight. Yeah, maybe like six. Yeah. We have to establish the going rate, but yeah, not, not all eight. All eight are too precious. No, you, you, can't, you can't be a zero-time Russian champion. Yeah, that would, be, that would be wrong, yeah. That, that, doesn't, feel, that doesn't feel correct. To be Very fair, it was also about 3 a.m. for him, and he was completely delirious. Are we talking about the uh, yesterday match or the the conclusion of the Halloween thingy, Joey? Uh, yeah, possibly both. Well, three, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I think I, I think the Halloween thingy he finished past, like it was later than three. Mm. I think he himself claimed it's like five, which I think was an overstatement, but. Then again, like maybe he knows better what time it is where he is than, than we do. Just a thought. Maybe. He could play yeah. in the mask mm. for the rest of the tournament. In some other less important thing, MVL bodied Jan. Yeah, I was kind of planning to watch and then didn't. Who, who are these people? I'm not familiar. Hmm. Is this some kind of second string, Maxime? Yeah, exactly. A poor man's Maxime Lagarde. Mm. A less prestigious tournament. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is a very weird game because uh, at some point the engine was flat out saying that uh, uh, Jordan is winning and then he wasn't even better and then he was winning again and now he is worse because Black somehow managed to finish development. Castle has an outside passer and the king side is entirely safe. Uh and if Jordan would have won this, the match would have ended. Mm -hmm. But this, this now could... looks yeah this could be another yellow card for Jordan. Hmm. Dubov could be the strongest chess player in the world at 5 a.m. Yeah, yeah that, no. that sounds like Magnus is going to be strong at 5 a.m. You don't think? I mean, I mean, sort of yes, but also your your fanboying needs to needs to be toned down. I don't think that's fanboying. I think he's just he's up all night. Is he? I think so. He might be. Yeah, he, he might plays be. these bullet matches at like at five a.m. or whatever. He has done that definitely over. It's really. I didn't, like... I didn't mean it because Magnus is the strongest chess player. I meant. Like that wasn't what I was basing it on. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've I now realize that it's kind of funny because yeah, like uh, apparently after losing both the f7 and the e6 pawn, rook fb8 in this position is completely winning because of just how strong this passer is. It costs white a rook. Instead, uh, Jorge went for this, thinking that he will still queen. The A pawn, but this is kind of a well known. Yeah, E six is a very strange choice. I guess he already decided that it's important not to lose, but he was actually better mm -hmm. because this is kind of an impressive setup where you can put, like you can you can play knight C three and A two, but then this bishop never gets to the B two square because like it has no path towards the B two square. So you can just go mm -hmm. like King H two, King G three, and take on G four, and like this pawn never ever gets to A one. Mm -hmm. Instead, Jordan just made sure he is not losing. And, you know, as long as he doesn't... I mean, he actually maybe is lose, winning this because of 50 against 20, right? As long as he doesn't offer a draw, and drawfers are explicitly forbidden, I think, in this tournament anyway. Yeah, I think so, but... Yeah. It doesn't always stop people. Yeah, as long as this it's... continues... As long as this continues being a game, I guess Jordan just wins. Maybe the question is who's the strongest player at 5 a.m. in classical chess? Who could get up at who could play a proper classical game at 5 a.m.? That might not be Magnus. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be struggling. I guess it depends which end you come at 5 a.m. from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like that famous story uh, that I think was told many a time by um, a number of people about, I think that was the the VB tournament, yeah. Uh, Jordan wins, and that actually is the end of the match. 
Very and the final, position, the final position actually is winning for him, so he, he can maybe even claim he won on the board. Um, not that it matters very much. Um, yeah, six nice and a half, that. two and a half. That's pretty... yeah, very convincing victory for for Jordan. So yeah, the, the the story I think about the the VB tournament in Amsterdam in '95, where towards the end of the tournament, Vichy for the first time in the entire tournament met Vladimir Kramnik at breakfast, mm-hmm. and he said, "Vladi, I'm so impressed. Who are you playing tomorrow? You finally decided to get up for breakfast." <laughs> and Vlad just looked at him absolutely like flabbergasted and said, what do you mean, got up? I haven't gone to bed yet. <laughs> uh, yep. So, yeah. Maybe, like, the young Vlad would be a, a good candidate. I don't know if we're going to have a quick interview. I wonder what Peter was discussing with his friends two hours ago. I actually got that into the into the stream. We were discussing exactly that you know the the, the young Grishuk and uh, the daily Tehran and how he was you know considered to be a a fluke. So we are going to have a quick interview with the winner, and then I'm going to go to bed because it's so late. Hi, Arden! Congratulations! Hi. Well played. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm uh, I'm quite uh, I'm quite uh, tired and uh, quite happy as well. So uh, yeah. It's been a good match, I think, uh, from my side. So feeling good. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty clean win. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess I was always in control. I mean, there were some moments where um, well, I lost one game. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was a dead draw, and I blundered my rook. Then I lost one more game where I got completely crushed by some amazing tactics, but otherwise I think I played quite all right. Yeah, yeah, it felt like you were you were more or less in control uh, throughout. Yeah, I, I guess not playing one night a three helps. But... <laughs> yeah, I, I probably. Uh, I mean, actually, the both times I played night a three, uh, it worked out well. But yeah, no more of that nonsense here. I guess uh, it wouldn't have worked as well. Probably not as much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't think like night a three probably what like is much better, but it's still better than uh, g four. Or... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, in, in both my games, when I played it in the preliminary, preliminaries, my knight kind of went, you know, it found quite a useful square on c4 rather early on. So um, maybe I should analyze it a little bit more. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, no, not what I expected to hear. But okay. <laughs> I've, I've been a bit inspired um, seeing, you know, Magnus play all these crazy moves on the first turn and nobody else tries anything themselves. So um sometimes people even resign after you play crazy move on move one so ah so this is uh as uh i i'm still trying to track down that video because it's uh it's a, like an absolutely legendary video but yeah uh, yeah, yeah, there yeah, yeah there were there were there were a series of poker videos uh recorded by the guy called in those days he was called magic ninja okay and he introduced the term enemy death equity where basically you make a decision, which is probably a wrong decision, but like ten percent of the time you are correct, and it leads to your opponent just kind of collapsing on the spot. Okay, yeah, well, and, and, and the... maybe never playing you again or playing extremely poorly against you for 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 the rest of his life. So you like, uh huh. So <laughs> I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing I'm guessing everybody now after the after the game between Ralph and Magnus, everybody now thinks that you know. Like one night a three has some enemy death equity. Perhaps, yeah, it didn't really work. Um, but uh, you know, it, it was worth it was worth by ten percent. And I, I mean, the the good thing was that after night a three, um, um, you still have a chance, you know, to play the game. Maybe that's yeah, the difference sure. from the you know for sure from the poker analogy. But yeah, maybe I'll try one g five once, but I doubt it. <laughs> Actually, uh, my it's already played... been done. I think it's 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 only interesting if it's fresh. Like it, now, it's, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. The, the joke is no longer valid. But actually, we played a rapid tournament recently with my brother in Romania, and uh, he was playing with Black against Mamadov. So, so shortly before the game, um, Ralph decided to quickly check G five just in case uh, on his <laughs> telephone. Uh, but I, I told my brother he would, uh, you know, uh, be a living legend if he played G five. But instead, yeah. he played E five, and uh, well, things didn't really go his way. In, in that game, but uh, it was a it was a funny uh, funny story. Absolutely. Nice. All right, we'll we'll let you go. Well played, and uh, good luck tomorrow.
Yeah, thanks. Yep. So Good you play time. Sam Seven tomorrow. So that should be okay. Okay. Fun yeah. match. Yeah, looking forward. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay. Thank Bye. you very much for playing. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Okay. That's enough chess for one day. Probably, yeah. Unless we find something else to no. No, 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 no. No such thing. No more chess. No more chess. Okay. Thanks everybody for watching. Both of you who are still here. Um Come back tomorrow. Watch Magnus against Shevchenko. Seven against Jordan. I'm going to get the first and last names different for each one. Dubov against Ralph. And Chris Chuck against Alan. Mm. You can work out the parents from that. More or less. Okay. Exactly. Thanks, yeah. everybody. See you all tomorrow. Yep. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Hello everyone. Hi everyone. Hi and welcome. Hello everyone. Enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable Sunway Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in the spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Isipenko, Ariban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses, World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Siege's website, visit chessable.com slash sunway. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses.
Welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolgar. You know what? I learned a lot. Trust me when I say this, I won that f***ing picture. <laughs>